All right, guys. Uh, so we got some viewers joining now. Shared the shared the post to a few groups. So this is uh, the American Legion Fairboat Minnesota Seco Verani Eight Ball event today. Players are just practicing right now. Player auction just got done with, and they are drawing up the brackets right now. Brackets will be on CompuSport. You'll see a link to the Seco Verani tournaments on the description of this video post I created on Midwest Q Sports. This is not being streamed on any other platform other than Facebook. So feel free to share this, get the word out. A lot of good players here today. I'll show you the, the flyers here, the player list for the eight ball and the nine ball. Eight ball is today and nine ball starts tomorrow, same time. You can see the payouts based on the 32 players for each event. A lot of good players on the players list from the Midwest area. So matches are starting to be called here. Got a good match here to start off today. Michael Perrin Jr. versus Jamie Pluta on the streaming table. So you might have picked up the uh, voice of the tournament director, Rich Arntz, on his microphone. Uh, my goal here for the microphone on the table is just to pick up the balls and uh, not the music in the background. So if anyone wants to chat, and, and go in the chat room, let me know if they can hear the music at all in the background. I, and I'll need to turn that down so Facebook doesn't uh, mute, mute us. I appreciate it. Okay. 
Oh, I didn't even get him, did I? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's a player auction that happened before this. Uh, pick of the litter, number one, was Danny Olson was bought for $1,200. And pick of the litter, two, was TJ Steinholz for tw also $1,200. Chuck, I'm on the streaming table. Just doesn't happen to have any pockets on it. And I didn't bring my cue either, so I'm just gonna watch these uh, semi-professionals play here today. Thanks for the comments on the no music. I think as the day goes on, he turns the speakers up, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Should be a fun day. I'm going to have some people join me periodically to help me commentate. I will take brief uh, breaks myself here. I don't want, I'm not a person to sit here and uh, ramble on forever by myself. So I apologize if you like commentary on every shot. Uh, I'm not really going to be the guy for that, but I will have some people joining me throughout the weekend to help out. So these are two of Minnesota's finest players. They've been around for a long time. They each have won many tournaments over the years. You can check out a post that I did before I went live here. I took some pictures of the uh, past champions plaques they have here. It's kind of cool to uh, see how far this went back and the names throughout the years that have won this very prestigious event. Here's a shot on the screen of the past winners. A lot of the same names you'll see over the years. Back in the day, like back in the 1980s, you'll see guys like Greg Fix and Jimmy Wetch, who played on the Pro Tour back then, which I believe was the Camel, Camel Tour. All times have changed. Or there was smoking allowed on the camel tour. But anyways, yeah, there's a lot of good names here. Rory Henriksen, Bo Ronigan. Well. Here's the player list again today. And it looks like they're doing the leg for the break. That's how every match is going to begin. A pretty good first break for Jamie. 
Everything looks pretty open. Chuck, I am helping out a little bit with uh, throughout the day. I'll, I'm sure Rich will ask me uh, if he has a couple of matches that he's thinking about playing on the stream table. I might help him out randomly, but this was uh, Rich's pick for the first one, which is a good one. Jamie's making quick work of this one. We'll take that break all day long. I don't have yours turned on, but you can listen. Unless you want to talk. that score. Have a tough opening shot here for Michael. Yeah, I think he's gonna play safe. And freeze him up in that one bump. Or just bring it down ways, I guess. Definitely isn't giving him a, a good option here. Looks like Jamie's gonna try and Give them the same choice. This is where I think their one pocket knowledge comes into play. He has nowhere to position the cue ball to just kind of stick you in a tough situation. And they just did it like three times in a row. Kind of 
Kind of a chess match here to start off this game. Shot by Jamie. Tough position here for Jamie. I don't know if he's going to... Yeah, it looks like he might... Uh, I don't know, he's weighing his options here. Go around go around the table, a few rails. Try and come in between that 12 and 1, or... I'm not sure if he can kill that uh, 11 ball with uh, inside English off that end rail. Almost looks like too much of a cut. Oh, Miss Q. Pretty ugly, ugly table for Michael. See if he can come up with a safety here. Yeah, taking his chances with running into that 15 and see what's hap what's going to happen. If he hits it at decent speed, uh, 
15 should clear clear out of there. Oh, missed it. Hurt him on that six ball a little, but see if he can uh, work his way through this. Might be looking at another safety here. Junior is a very intelligent player when it comes to games like this. Very good at positioning the cue ball where it needs to be safe for safeties. Just like that. So to go through some of these players, I went for high dollar amounts in um, the player auction. Um, going down the list, we got Jesse Engel, went pretty high. J.D. Prestigard, Tim Tunjum, Rory Hendrickson, John Fields, Rob Matson, Mario Pereno, T.J. Steinhaus, Danny Olson, Michael Perrin Jr., Jamie Pluta, Troy Liebel. Those are some of the bigger dollar amounts right there. So it's kind of interesting. You, you figure in this tournament everyone's just going to be running out, but every once in a while you come across a game like this where it's a chess match and you've got two uh, great players with uh, great minds of the game here to know how to position balls well, play some one pocket themselves. And it's kind of interesting to see what they do in these situations. Michael, the open bid. Pick of the litter. Number one was Danny Olson for 1200 Number two was TJ Steinhaus for 1200 Jesse Engel also went for 1200 Rory went for 1000 Michael Perrin Jr. for 1000 Rob Matson 1000 
Looks like he's got a little alleyway for the three ball. He's calling the three. He's not calling a ref over, so let's not be too close. That was a good hit. Now the table opens up for, for one of them. John Fields went for seven hundred dollars. Mario Perino went for nine hundred. CR Sports Bar, Coon Rapids, Minnesota, does a lot of streaming themselves. Very nice, high quality stream that Jerry runs there. Shooters also has started streaming. I help help them out get set up with their live stream. They've been streaming a lot of events too. CRs and shooters, both excellent uh, rooms up in the Twin Cities metro area. Hopefully Jerry Johnson's coming down today or tomorrow to help do a little commentary with me. I do have four cameras on today, so this is the straight on shot, and you got the top view, which I think is probably the most favorite. Um, I got a corner shot here. And then I also got a shot of the room here, which I will go to this every once in a while. If we don't have a match up on this table, I'll see if I can zoom in to one of the other tables for you guys. You can see the room here, pretty nice venue, American Legion, Fairbolt, Minnesota. A lot of good matches going on out there. I would su suggest coming down if you want to watch multiple matches at once.
Tough combo there by Junior. Michael, no, I don't believe the that they're posting that Calcutta list anywhere online for anybody to look at. I did ramble off some of it. Pick of the litter was Danny Olson, number one for 1,200. TJ Steinhaus, 1,200 for pick of the litter two. Wow, a great shot. I come with another one here. Yeah, and if anyone can pick up music in the background, let me know. One thing starting out I'm a little worried about, just so we don't get uh, muted here later on by Facebook. Software seems to tell me that we are picking up a little bit of it. But. I can turn down the microphone that's above the table if I need to, so you'll just end up hearing... Just the balls when they're hit a little harder, though. Thanks, Ryan. 
Oh my, look at that. Wow, that was amazing out there. I don't think anyone looking at the where he was stuck there with those two balls frozen on each other probably would bet against him getting out there. Bank cut shot and cross corner bank to end it. Wow, very impressive. That's what you're in for today. Bunch of big dogs making outs like that. Fun to watch. Looks like his opener is a backwards bank on that six ball. Hate to state the obvious, but unless he's got that seven in the corner. Or the side. Tough to tell on the camera angles. It's one thing I've learned doing this. Definitely not like being down on the table, seeing exactly where the balls go. Need about 10 more cameras on the table, then maybe I can uh, get it down. We got four camera, camera guys working today. This is not matchroom sport, that's for sure. I think he wanted just a little more angle so he could come over to that side, right side rail, but still might be able to get there. Oh yeah, slow down a little. It ended up perfect. Good out by Jamie. Takes the lead, 3-1. Two Twin City Metro players that have played each other many, many times over the years.
Brian, this is an uh, invitational tournament. Uh, this is the first time, I believe, he had to open it up. A lot of COVID-related uh, issues with players, including, uh, I believe, four or five uh, Canadian players that couldn't make it due to their uh, uh, COVID restrictions, travel restrictions. This year, they did. A, he did have to open it up for, I think, the final nine players or so. But typically, this is invite only. I believe there is a waiting list also. This year, there was a few people that had to drop out last minute. Dean Albrecht is usually a staple in this tournament, uh, but he had to back out due to health issues. Just to name one of them, I had to back out. Looks like Danny Olson is turning in a score sheet. Let's see a bracket here. Looks like he must have beat Danny or he must have beat Nick Hansen. Again, the bracket is, uh, uh, the link to the bracket is uh, on the description of this post. It's on CompuSport. You can search Seiko Verani. Invitational. Appreciate all the viewers. Go ahead and share, like the page. This page was created to stream this uh, tournament every year. I also have started streaming local tournament Mankato, which you'll see if you scroll down on the Midwest Q Sports page. Oh, Danny Olson was the first one to win the, on the first round. Some good matches out there. Charlie Garza, Nick Marsala, Greg Fix, Jesse Engels playing. Tim Tungem, Tyler, TJ Steinhaus. That's a very good match. We'll see if I can look out and get some of these scores. There is balls above the uh, lights that uh, they're sliding over, so I can see. Try and figure out who's winning some of these matches and let you know. Like Danny beats Nick Hansen five to zero. This is winner breaks. Makes me wonder if he ran the set. Maybe want to get a little farther there, I believe. Let's see, we have a shot on it yet. A little tricky to bump bump it off the rail there. If he's got a shot. Hit that rail without bumping that four in the way, preferably. Have a touchy shot here. Again, I will be doing some commentary throughout the day. I am planning on getting some people to join me. Um, I'll have some players, some other people possibly showing up that I'll grab from the peanut gallery. Jim, uh, you're saying your stream is choppy. It must be on your end because uh, I do have it running on my setup and it uh, seems pretty smooth. That turned out just about 
perfect. Like from this angle, he's got the option on the side or the corner. Looks like he's going corner. Well, perfect there. Thanks, guys, for the feedback. A lot of times it's your download speed on your end, which can produce a choppy feed. It's like Jamie goes up on the hill, four to one. So as you can see, the Seco Verona Invitational established 1982. I believe this is the longest running singles tournament in Minnesota. I could be wrong there, but I'll go with it for now. So he's contemplating that combo right now. I wouldn't think he'll go with that. Again, sometimes my camera angles aren't good for me to make the proper call. I would have thought the 14 would have been a better shot, but he might have had just too much of a thin cut on that. Still, uh, ah, came out a little too far. Now oh, he's going to have to risk just running into that 12 ball full or. Pretty good, does not that's gonna hold up for him. Good. 
Pretty good speed there. See how he cheated that to the left side so he could uh, pull it back a little more like he did. Good match by Jamie. Takes the victory, five to one. Moves on to the winner side, second round. We'll see who they call up next year. Um, Gary, there is no filter. I uh, have a microphone hanging above the table. Um, and I have the option to turn it up or down. I guess I also do have like four filters on on my software. But uh, audio is a difficult thing to get, get right. Facebook picks up any tiny little bit of music in the background, even if you can, even if you cannot tell what the heck is being said, Facebook bot picks it up. Yes, this has always been winter's br winter breaks ever since I've seen it. Winter breaks, eight ball and winter breaks, nine ball. So these guys are definitely capable of running the set. Waiting for him to call a match on table one. Go through some of the matches that are over. Taylor Broughton beat Mark Weaver 5-0. to zero. I don't know if he's... Yeah. I was say, is everyone winning 5-0? No. Guess not. Um, Sean Mitchell beat Jared Bailey. Jared Bailey was uh, a late entry for Gene. Um... Jed Lampy beat Johnny Meyer. A lot of good matches going on up there. You see, and on the right side of the screen, uh, Mark Kukluck and Rory Henriksen are about to start. Rory, uh, North Dakota. Mark Ku Klux, I think, is from St. Cloud area, Minnesota. Other updates, Nick Marsalek beat Charlie Garza 5-1.
while we're while we're waiting here, I'll see if I can zoom into one of these tables here with this camera. Bear with me here. Got this on a tripod up by me in the booth. It's not the most stable thing in the world while I'm walking around up here. Just to get a little bit of an idea what's going on on that table with Rory and Mark. Sixty-four man. I don't know about that one. This this tournament uh, doesn't get over with probably till midnight or one with thirty-two players. So my guess is double that. Uh, probably would not get over with in one day. They do have a nine-ball tournament that starts tomorrow morning. I still haven't called a match up here in table one. Okay. All right, I was just told they had something going on with the CompuSport. I was messing up uh, how he was setting up tables for the next round, so that's kind of what the delay was here to get a match on table one. But at least I got Roars here for you to, to watch. I always enjoy watching Rory play. He picks apart racks very well. I remember him playing Shane Van Boning in the U.S. bar table. That was fun to watch years ago. I don't remember how long ago it was, but he was uh, excellent. Shane, I think, ended up beating him, of course, but uh, that was fun to watch. Thanks, Josh. Um, I'll definitely uh, would like to have some help here, but uh, throughout the day, I do have some guys lined up that should be showing up, but we'll see how it plays out. I don't like to ramble on the whole day, uh, and I got to run the stream here and advertising and stuff like that, but I'll com commentate a little bit for you guys. I typically don't enjoy listening to my voice later on when I watch these videos.
Yeah, Chuck, Nick, uh, Nick beat Charlie 5-1, like David said. There's Mr. Liebel on the screen. He uh, won the eight, eight ball last year. Rory with his North Dakota State shirt on. Typically, he's a little more decked out in that year as they're playing for the some kind of national championship or something today. Seems like they're in that championship game every Seacoast event. <laughs> North Dakota fighting Sioux, I believe. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Roy wouldn't like to hear that. That's South Dakota, I think. North, North Dakota Bison, I believe, is their mascot. Like Rory did not get out there. Wasn't sure what he was shooting at. Somebody was in the way. Bit of table called here. Number one. We'll switch back to my main cameras. Hopefully shortly here. Like Rob Matson won five to two over Abraham. Hey, Mario Perino was just walking up with a score sheet. Must have beat Mike Pankoff. Johnny Meyer and Michael Perrin Jr. on the loser side just got called. Johnny Meyer is also a staple in this tournament. Been here for years. Has won it, I believe, multiple times. Eight ball or nine ball, I believe. Uh, could be wrong, but.
believe that's the first game over there. They don't have the, uh, the balls above the light shifted right now, but uh, see what Mark does here after this. But uh, I believe that's 1 0 Mark. Mark Kukluck is from St. Cloud area, Minnesota. Table number five, Mario Prino. Table number five, your opponent is waiting for you. Thank you. All right, I've just been informed that uh, we're waiting for a match here for table one, but uh, Danny Olson will be playing either Tim Tungem or TJ Steinhaus here coming up. I believe is what we're uh, waiting for. See if I, not sure what table Tim Tungem and TJ are on. See if I can track it down here and see where they're at. Okay, they're all the way down. Looks like someone's up four to three. A pretty close match. TJ's at the table. And TJ wins the last game, and uh, TJ Steinhaus beats Tim Tungem five to three. It looks like, and he will be playing Danny Olson on table one here. Another great matchup. I'll wait to switch to that table once until they get called up here. You're watching Rory Henriksen shoot versus Mark Kukluk. Mr. Johnny Meyer in the background watching. He's playing Michael Perrin Jr., which is he's shooting there.
Oh, maybe I was wrong. Huh. I guess I couldn't see what, what was going on down in that match where I said TJ won, but uh, looks like it was the other way around. Tim Tunjum beat TJ 5-3. to three. I'll update the uh, names here. My bad guys, Tim Tunjum won that match, 5-3. Like Rory's going to have a tough shot here, let's see. Can you do a jump shot with a bridge? I don't think I've ever tried this, this is... Uh, Good shot of it, that's for sure. Oh. That would have been cool if he would have made it on camera. Yes, Dan Ryder. Uh, this is not Danny and Tim. Uh, we're waiting for that match. Uh, table one here. Just waiting for the players to show up. This is just uh, one of my cameras I got set up here to shoot across the room, see if I can pick up some other matches while I'm waiting for the this match on table one between Danny and Tim. We'll be switching to it here shortly. This is uh, Mark Kukluk and uh, Rory Henderson match. Mark's up 1-0. Doesn't look like he should have any problems with this one. Waiting for Danny Olson to show up here for the table one.
So Mark Kukuk up 2-0 on Rory Hendrickson. We got Tim Tundrum here warming up on table one. Just waiting for Danny Olson to show up. Not sure where he's at. Dan Ryder, you are correct. This is Gunner. How have you been? Timmy's running out like it's his job here. All right, guys, I'll be right back. This is just Tim uh, Tundra practicing right now. Uh, looks like Danny is walking in the building now. Um, I'll be right back.
All right, here we go. Lagging for the break. Second round on the winner's side. Nice shot of Tim's Q there. It's pretty nice. Uh, I can't tell if that's a Jacoby. We'll get Tim in the booth here today at some point. A lot of balls thread the pocket there, but nothing. Tim shoots with the Revo. That would be the shaft, correct? Uh, not sure what his uh, the butt is, if that's Kobe or Predator. Just look kind of nice. That's all I thought. If I'm mistaken, I don't know if he does shoot with the Revo anymore. Uh, I thought he was shooting with the Odin Billiard Shaft, unless he switched back. We'll get him in the booth here and chat about it. Definitely a good looking breakout shot there. Uh, rearrange the table for sure. He's got some options too with this 10 ball. Nice angle on it. Not sure if that 12 goes in the corner. That camera shot, it kind of looks like it does. Might have been trying to get on the other side of that 12. Still got good options here. Jacked up over that ball isn't going to help him too much, but see what he can do with it. Thanks, Abraham. I thought he had switched to a... Odin Billiards, but maybe he switched back to the Revo.
Nice touch shot there for Danny. Yes, Ryan, it is winter break.
Excellent shot by Danny there. Um, Chris, yes, there is a link to the brackets on, on this post for the video. Just look at the description on the post. Click the link, it'll take you to CompuSport, the Seco Verani Invitational. We're up to 206 viewers. Um, this is the Seco Verani Invitational in Fairboat, Minnesota at uh, American Legion. A lot of high caliber players from the Midwest in this. Um, here's a shot of the player list for eight ball is today and nine ball starts tomorrow, both one day events. A lot of strong players. back and hit his tip. You don't see that happen very often. Tim's looking at uh, bumping that eight out in the open on this first shot. Good. You're watching Danny Olson, uh, who I believe is from uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, or South somewhere in South Dakota. Tim Tunjum here shooting now. He's uh, from Faribault, Minnesota. This Fargo rate app here, so I can relay who Fargo rates are throughout the day. Uh, Tim makes quick work of a crucial mistake by Danny uh, breaking and uh, letting the cue ball hit his tip on the way back from the rack. Looks like Danny's from Brookings, South Dakota. He's got a 738 Fargo rate. Tim Tunjum, 699 Fargo rate. Uh, 
Oh, just some updates. Uh, looks like JD Prestigard beat Contran five to four. Um, Jamie Pluta had beat uh, Michael Perrin Jr. in round one, five to one. Michael Perrin Jr. then on the loser side beat Johnny Meyer five to two. Troy Liebel beat Kevin Moriarty five to one, first round. Rob Matson won his second round winner side match five to zero <laughs> over Jim Coffey. Pick of the litter in the player auction. Number one went to Danny Olson. Number two was uh, TJ Steinhaus. And just an update on that uh, Rory Hendrickson and Mark Kukluk match that I had it on prior to this match. Uh, looks like it, Rory came back and tied it up. It's two to two. Appreciate it, Doug. Could be a full day of uh, very good matches here. He's got a pretty good opportunity here to uh, mess with that 8 and 11 ball there. Got to choose which ball he wants to hit here. I think he's got an option to play it into the 8 or into the 11. I'm assuming the 8 would be a little better shot, but uh, sometimes these camera angles do mess with you. We don't see it the best up here in the booth. If that 11 goes in the top left corner, the other camera angle didn't look like it does. Definitely doesn't look like it goes on that angle. I'm not sure what he's what he's doing here. He's gonna try and bump in at eight, or yeah, he tried to just nudge the eight out of the way and take 
take that shot in 11 in the bottom right corner. Didn't come out well, obviously. Wow. Got to come with another one here. Excellent kick. I'm just going to play that carom off the seven into this bottom right corner. Not sure what else he's got here. Right from this camera angle, does not look like an easy option to carry that all the way down there. Trying to carry him it off the six ball instead. I, I don't know. It's tough to play safe here. He's going to leave him something. Yeah, he's calling it. Looked like he was lining up for the carry him off the six. Might be easier to do than off that seven. Nothing easy about it. I didn't think that went that direction. It's tough to tell if he's got a an alleyway to carry him off the six in that upper side, but it definitely doesn't look like it from his camera angle. Yeah, he is. Must be enough gap there to get it. Yeah, that was tough. Started heading for that bottom right corner. I don't know. I kind of like his original option. Either way, it was very difficult. Issues here, Danny is going to make quick work of this. Is uh, capitalized on that uh, air by Tim trying to nudge that eight out of the way for the eleven ball.
Pretty solid looking break here for Danny. Spread him out pretty good. Just making sure on this position here for this first shot. Kind of, we'll get him going for the rest of the rack. Looking pretty good here. I'm not seeing any issues. Not for a guy of this caliber, 738 Fargo rate. Came back a little too far, but uh, he's still uh, he's still got a pretty uh, pretty easy shot here to get shape on that 14 or 12 ball. Oh, I came up a little long on that one. Wow. That's surprising. I believe he's still got a cut on that 12. He's looking at his angle here. He's going to come off the rail. This will be a little touchy shot here. if he can get under that four ball. That looks like he can. Oh, wow. Huh. Commentator's curse, maybe. I was thinking he would uh, easily get out on that one, but a little off on that two-reel shape coming off the table. It is shot inside a little too full. Oop, sorry about that. Not too happy with all these buttons here. Switch them to the wrong table. Tough opener here for uh, Tim. Oh, that was a good shot.
Always tough when you're jacking up like that, but. Didn't leave Danny a gimme here. Uh, might be a safety play. See what he does. Appreciate all the viewers. Feel free to share this. Spread the word. Got some good players playing in the Midwest. Got players from South Dakota, North Dakota, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Typically we have at least three or four guys from Canada, but uh, there are restrictions on their travel or our restrictions, I guess, maybe is stopping them from coming down, which was a bummer due to COVID. So we are missing some top top players. Ooh, sorry about that. Uh, tried to cut it up in the corner. Definitely a tough shot. Here's a screenshot of uh, some pictures I just took of the champions plaques from past past years. You can see it goes back 1982. A lot of big names here. Some way back in the day, Greg Fix, Jimmy Wetch were on the Pro Tour. A lot of big names from the Midwest here in Wisconsin, Minnesota. Very prestigious tournament here. This is the 40th annual.
All right, guys, I'm back. Sorry. Yeah. Talking to the Rich Arns here for a little bit. Uh, I've kind of missed what's going on here, but oh well. Ball almost curled around in that spot. Kind of funny. Still all right here. Danny's on the hill, 4-2. Yeah, pretty tough, tough looking table here. Just from the camera angle, I got uh, yeah, it's best bet to get that seven out of the way is get this fifteen and roll up a little bit. We'll leave an angle for a top left English off that top rail. So that's what he's looking at first. He's got a ten ball here that can help him get out, get that twelve out of there. Like he might be punching this a little bit. 
Let it drift to the left and forward maybe a few inches, if possible. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like punching it almost. Tough to say. See what he chooses. Center ball might just be rolling. Oh, he's going into him. Wow. So I was way off on that one. Looks like he's pretty good there. We gotta take a quick break here, guys. I'll be right back.
All right, folks, I'm back. Looks like we got a good battle going on on this table. Um, you have the seven ball, huh? Update, uh, Jamie Pluta beat Jed Lampy 5-1. to one. Right now, him and Rob Matson are the only ones that are on the third round of the winner's side, waiting. Table number four, Jeff Hatzickle, Rory Hendrickson. Table four. Looks like Rory Hendrickson had beaten Mark Kuklock. Next match on this table is going to be the winner of Greg Fix and Jesse Engel versus the winner of John Fields and Kevin McGrath. Right now it looks like Greg Fix and Jesse Engel are tied 3-3. Three to three. Greg Fix is on the eight ball. Looks like a tough cut. And Fix makes that eight ball, so now he is up four to three on Jesse Ingle. See if I can find uh, John Fields, Kevin McGrath match here. Uh, All right, sorry. That wow. Like Kevin McGrath is at the table. Somebody's up three to two over there. Kevin McGrath versus John Fields. Evans from Minnesota somewhere, I believe, and John Fields is from Wisconsin. TJ is bringing his score sheet up. Must have beaten Nick Hansen. Danny Olson comes out to victor. Table number 
Okay, so now we're waiting for match here. Uh, a couple matches. Greg Fix is at the table. He's up for three on Jesse Angle. Like quite a few balls left. Uh, Kevin McGrath must be up four to two on John Fields. He is racking right now. He was just at the table. Here's a shot of the room. See if I can move the camera a little bit. There you can see some matches down the row here. You can see Greg Fix with that hat on back there. That's the Jesse Engel Greg Fix match we're waiting on. See Nick Marsalek back there racking. Taylor Broughton beat Mario Perino 5-3. So we got a winner side match that just got called up. Table 5, Taylor Broughton versus Jamie Pluta. So I don't know the history of Greg Fix that well, but uh, I believe he played on the Pro Tour many, many years ago. I want to say it was back when it was called the Camel Tour Pros. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anybody out there that knows Greg well? Kudos to him for still playing and uh, still shoots pretty well. Look, they're calling a ref on that table. That Greg's got the shot on here. Uh, Jesse just walked by to grab Rich Arns, the tournament director. Now 
be shooting that 15 in the corner or what? Yep. Must be pretty tight with that three ball there. Very good hit from about 70 feet away that I am. <clears throat> yeah, it is Bob Garza in the background. Richard, no, this is uh, Chris Brinke. if this was Tony Z, uh, you are incorrect. If he shows up today, I might grab him and see if he wants to do a little commentary. Z-Man, if you're watching, and if you're going to show up, feel free to join me for a little bit. Starting to get lonely up here. I'm not a talker. I don't like to talk all day long on a stream. Helps to have somebody join me, though. I'll see if I can get some players here. Tim Tundum uh, just got called up. Otherwise, I was hoping he was going to join me. I get Rob Matson here at some point today. I don't know where Jerry is. I haven't texted him to see if he was coming down. Uh, I know last I had talked to him, he, uh, he said he'd try and make it down sit with me for a little while he'd be a good one to join <clears throat> join in the commentary no surprises rich that i sound like tony z I don't know if that's a compliment or not is it let me know JD on the winner side. Let's see here. Uh, he is. He's playing uh, Nick Marsala, as you can see in the background there. That's the second round of the winner side. And I haven't noticed, who, noticed who's been moving the balls up there, but someone's up three to two. A lot of good matches here. Obviously, it's better to come down and witness a lot of them at the same time in person. But uh, I'm here to help you folks that can't make it. I guess maybe it's a little deeper right now. I don't know. I got a little bit of a scratchy voice, but uh, I tested negative, so don't worry. Uh, I don't feel any symptoms just for some reason. I'm a little groggy in the throat region. Jeff Maurer, thanks for the text. Uh, a little update on Greg Fix. He played the tour in the 80s, I believe. Um, he was uh, ranked as high as fifth in the world at one time. Top 10 for sure. I believe Jimmy Wetch, Jimmy Wetch was ranked up there too. kind of wish Jimmy would come down and play in this event. I'm sure he can uh, still bring the pain. <clears throat> uh, 
Thomas, what is it? Uh, Hill Hill, I guess. The angle fix match. Kevin Morardi's walking around here. How'd you do, Kevin? Okay. Nice. Kevin Morardi beat Jared B Bailey on the loser side, five to two. Good, good match for Kevin. Jesse broke, made something. See Jamie Pluto there uh, breaking against uh, Taylor Brott. Michael Perrin Jr. and Tim Tungum are playing. That's a tough match on the loser side. Just started. Rob Matson's walking around. I grab him, but is he talking to Seiko? Well, if I zoom out here a little bit, maybe we can pick up a couple matches. A little, little harder to see the tables that far away, but maybe now you can see a few more tables. Waiting for a couple matches here to get done. To, Call a match on the main table, mainstream table here. Uh, uh, it does look like Kevin McGrath beat John Fields five to two. I believe John is a pretty uh, high-rated player from Wisconsin. 
So let's see, on, on paper that might be a pretty good upset. Let me check his uh, Fargo rate out. John Fields is a 709 for Fargo rate from Wisconsin. Kevin McGrath is a 662. So I guess on paper that is an upset. Everybody here is pretty capable of winning a race to five though on a bar table. Wouldn't say it's the longest race. Anybody can get hot here. Everyone's uh, pretty solid. Like Jesse's sitting okay. Might have a little bit of the wrong angle on that seven ball in the corner for the eight in the right bottom right corner. But uh, should be okay. From what I can see, 70 feet away. Whoop! Bumped the camera. Sorry. Let's see if I can pan over, get that other table more full in the picture. Yes, he's on the eight here, cutting it up in that corner. See what happens. Justin, yes, John Fields lost his first round match to Kevin McGrath. Jesse gets out. So we'll have. Jesse Engel versus Kevin McGrath on the mainstream table here. Jesse has won this event multiple times. Not sure how many times Kevin has played in this, maybe uh I want to say he played in the last one. Might be his second time ever playing in this one. Hey, Rob, eventually you get up here, but we can wait. But whatever you want. All right. Finally got a match up on the number one stream table. 
Kevin McGrath and Jesse Engel. This is uh, second round on the winner side. Tough match on the loser side because of these two. Uh, Greg Fix is now going to be playing John Fields. Just ends up being a lot of tough matches in this event because there's so many good players. Jesse is then to uh, run to the restroom. Giving Kevin a little uh, practice on his uh, leg here. How many times do you practice a leg at home? Trying to zoom into that uh, Jamie included Taylor Broughton match a little more on this uh, camera number four. Struggling here. I might have to fire the camera, man. Might have to throw this tripod in the garbage after this tournament. Get a different one. Kind of hard to control. There's that, there's that table there, it looks a little better. Still waiting for Jesse on the stream table. Somebody's up 1-0 on the Cluda taylor Broughton match. All right, guys, ready to leg for the break. Updates: uh, We got Nick Marsalek beat JD Prestigard five to two. That was the second round match on the winner side. So. Nick Marsalek will be playing Danny Olsen on the third round of the winner's side. Pretty good, pretty good leg, both guys.
All right, I got my fourth camera zoomed out a little bit so you can see the Buda Braden match and Greg Fix John Fields match for the next two tables down from the stream table. All right, Kevin's ready to break now. They called uh, Rich to go watch a shot that Jamie was going to shoot. It's Taylor. Good break by Kevin there. Looks like Jamie did make a good hit on that. Good hit? I didn't see it. Yeah. You got the right guy for the job, huh? All right. Jamie made a good hit, so uh, looks like he's hooked, though, and he's uh, jumping for the eight ball. Well, Kevin's uh, deciding here. We can his jump shot by Jamie on the eight. And this angle looks like he's jumping two balls. Might be just one. Ooh, hit it square. Back to Kevin here. Looks like he's going to play that combo. Good shot. Table's pretty open here. A little bit of work to do. Again, if anybody's hearing music in the background, please let me know. Facebook doesn't like that. Uh, trying to have it low enough to where you hear me well, hear the balls hitting. Don't want to hear any music in the background, even a little bit. Facebook will uh, mute, mute us later. I know I've asked before, but sometimes we tend to keep rising uh, the level of the music here, which is fine, but I may not have to tweak my microphone as it rises.
Yes, that is correct. Uh, Kevin McGrath here is playing this match. He beat John Fields first round. John Fields is now right there, one table over, playing Greg Fix. Try and keep you guys uh, updated. Scores are other tables as well as I can. Good breakout shot there. Opens up the whole table. Couple good position shots and we should be pretty good here. I shouldn't say that. Always looks easier on camera, right? Speed shot there. but I think he wanted to punch it forward like an inch or two, but there's no problem with this shot, though. Uh, one one John Fields break fix match. Same score with the Pluto of Rot match. John 
Fields uh, came over from Wisconsin. Appreciate him coming over.
Nice shot there, bumping into that 10 full. Hit it pretty, uh, pretty uh, hard there. It could have went, went the wrong way, but came out good. Evens it up. Greg Fix is up two to one on John Fields. John Fields right there, his cue down uh, is on the table. Not sure who's up on the Brat Pluto match. TJ Steinhaus's match is all the way down at the end there. Um, somebody's up four to three. Tim Tundrum is up three to two on Michael Perrin Jr. Troy Liebel won his match against Sean Mitchell five to two. He is now going to play Rob Matson in the third round of the winner's side. Looks like he lost the cue ball. I gotta take a short break, guys. We'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Sorry, what did I miss? Looks like Jesse uh, must have won that last one. Two to one, I think that's the right score. And run an errand and uh, take some pictures. Do a little paparazzi. Well, um, and on a little bit of an upset uh, on the loser side, uh, Jed Lampy takes down Tyler TJ Steinhaus five to three. So TJ is out of the tournament, and he was uh, the second pick of the litter for the player auction. And a weird stuff like this can happen at this tournament. Short race to five, and uh, everybody's capable of running a few racks.
All right, so I finally got somebody to join me here, Kevin Morardi. Hello. How's it going, Kevin? Good. Can you hear me well? Should be all right. You can move move that a uh, little closer to your mouth there. Okay. I but, just don't want people to hear me breathe. That's yeah, I know. It's, it's all right. A little closer. Yeah, you're good. So you got uh, the loser of this match, huh? Yeah, I either have uh, Mr. Engel or Kevin Graff. Just the <laughs> goal is just to keep uh, my head above water here. That's all yeah. it is. So you lost your first match 5-1 to one to Troy Liebel? Yep. He must have shot pretty good, huh? Uh, yeah, he ran three racks. I mean, there's not much you can do about yeah. that, but I had my opportunities. Yeah, that's tough. You almost got to do it back at him. Exactly. I had you got a, a good, good second match, though, huh? Yeah, um, I got 5-2 on Jared Bailey. That's a big win for me, too, because he's a strong shooter. Yeah. Just happy that I'm in the tournament. That's all I care about. Yeah. Win or lose. Fun event to play in. Yeah. I mean, I just lucked out by getting a spot in this, you know. Well, you're still in it. You can make some noise yet. Yeah. Plug your way through the loser side. Yeah, do the best that I can. You know, that's all I ask for, really. But it is a tough, tough tournament, so very difficult. A lot of high uh, Fargo rate rated players. Yep. You were saying you're probably going to get bumped up maybe a little bit. So is that what, uh, is he doing it Fargo rate based he, now? He, I, guess I just asked him. He, he does submit it, all okay. his tournaments. So, so I'll, I'll probably be. Hopefully not, but I'll probably be in the 600s. What, uh, what is Jared? Let me look him up. Jared's a 630, I believe. 631. I'm a 586, so that'll probably bump me up just a little bit. You're a 686 now? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> 586. I definitely don't shoot like a 686. 586. Well, I don't know. I've seen you run sets pretty good. I think you've beaten me. The CNN sales tournament. Yeah, well, you played me 15,000 times. <laughs> I got I to beat you sooner or later. Well, not necessarily. Yeah, that's true. Good <laughs> <laughs> out. You made that look pretty simple. Yeah. Switch to the, what we got here, the great fix. Looks like uh, tied there, three to three. Yep. Great fix, John Fields. It's like Buddha Brat match. Somebody's up three to two.
Oh, yeah. go ahead. Oh, uh, just going to ask. Uh, so going into the tournament, since obviously you you know it's a tough tournament. You come in in the morning, kind of feeling a ner little nervous, some jitters, or you're more anxious just to get it going. I think anxiousness is the key for me. Yeah. I don't get a lot of nerves. I mean, when I was playing both players, it didn't really change anything for my nerves. It's just I just miss shots. Yeah. The key for me is just to keep an even keel, level head, you know. Yeah. Because once I get frustrated, then it just for anyone, you can tell, you know. Yeah. What uh, type of cue are you shooting with these days? I am shooting with a peach hour cue okay. and a rogue shaft. Um, I'm kind of a big peach hour fan. I love all. Uh, Is the rogue of, shaft a, a peach hour shaft? Yeah, that's oh, okay. the um, carbon fiber shaft. Yep. Um, I think it plays very good, but I mean, I think it's just you make it your own, really. Um, for me, I, I thoroughly like all peach hour shafts, they all, they're beautifully made very well um, made together even if the wooden shafts that they come with the stock they still play really well i've kind of become a collector of that too which is i don't know if it's a good thing or bad but the no, just shafts kind of, or uh, cues all together both <laughs> all, all peach or yeah so you kind of switch every once in a while or uh yeah i do once in a while um i'm kind of just all the same weight kind of feel yeah um just and, different look yeah they're all very similar styles, though. I mean, I don't really know how to describe it. Just because probably I'm not using the same shaft, though, probably yeah. at all. So it doesn't change that much. No, it doesn't. Shaft is a bigger difference than the shaft, bud. Yeah, shaft and the tip is what really matters. Yep. So you're playing the Monday night events in Mankato. What do you think of those events? I think the uh, Mankato events are really fun. I'm really glad that Nate opened that up and created a fun environment over there. Um, it's it's really fun, and I'm really happy that I got uh, asked to play in that. Um, so it's a nice setup, too. I mean, uh, I think a lot of people are killing to want to go up there and play because... Good, good equipment. Uh, good equipment and good players. I mean... Yeah. There wasn't a lot of slouches. Actually, there were no slouches in that tournament that yeah. played just that last Monday. Yeah, a lot of players are from like the Showcase League in Mankato. Yep. Nice open atmosphere up there too. Oh yeah. Curious if he's gonna go for that twelve ball. Yeah, he might have it. Different camera angle here. Oh, yeah, he's got it. And goes by that seven, though, so I wonder if he's going to try to play around for the 10 and 13 to save that last. Does it go by the seven? Uh, uh, I yeah, believe so. Yeah, yeah, I might get underneath there. Can't question what Jesse Engel does. I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, he's a good shooter. I'm curious how he's going to, what ball he wants to use here to get around. Got to take 14 and then 12 and then get around for the 10, right? Right. What else are you going to do? Can't leave that 12 for the last ball. I don't know if he's just going to draw this back a little bit, leave that angle on the cut on the 12 in that corner, yep. and then it's natural shape to get on the 10. Or go forward. Yeah, there you go. That works. Eh, I don't know if I 
almost talked myself into my first option I was talking about. You know, just draw back, leave that cut on the tent. Well, right. but kind of hit that like he, yeah, he was playing for the three rail shape on the ten ball here. I think it's super difficult for him, but yeah, still got, a window. He's got a pretty good angle there. Perfect shot. A lot of amateurs will struggle with that shot. Yeah, I would probably run into all those balls on the way out. <laughs> then you'd make a miraculous backwards cut on the 10 and bank shot on the 10 and run out and laugh at me and <laughs> say good game. Yep. <laughs> Got a nice little window between that three two too, so he can play a little top left shape. Yeah, it's a little tricky leave on that eight, isn't it? These tables play pretty well though, and they're somewhat fast, so I, yeah, I could see him just put a nice decent stroke on there, top left, and just get into that window. Not sure what he's putting on it. Almost looks like he's putting straight on it. Ah, uh, he did end up putting some left on it. Good shot. Funny thing is, Kevin, I just talked to Kevin McGrath. He's like, you know what? I only play good when I'm pissed off. Well, I can't wait to play him. If he, if he's, <laughs> he's pissed off. Yeah, now. he's gonna be just fuming. <laughs> Randy's question on the chat room, what do you think of Ridgeback rails on these tables? I I actually like them a lot. Um, I would prefer those for with whatever is typically brought on. You know, when you buy one of these tables, I don't know what the standard rail is, but Ridgeback's much better. Keep you in check, too. Play closer to like what a diamond rail plays like. Yep. You can't really limp a lot of them in off that rail unless it's a good stroke on it. I mean, they're not super deep, like, you know, in the diamond tables, they have really deep pockets, especially if they're kind of pro cut. Right. The, sh the shelf in there is pretty deep. I still think you can probably limp them in a little bit. Still got to be cautious about going off that rail. Ryan, I did uh, think about putting the Fargo right behind players' names. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Haven't pulled the trigger on it. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to play uh, live here yet because, I mean, I'll be on the loser side. So, Well, sure. we are going to have some losers matches on here. Actually, our next match um, is going to be Sean Mitchell, who is waiting for the winner of Greg Fix and John Fields. And uh, it's I like lost. it's 4-3 Yeah, right it's 4-3. I don't, I lost track of who's feeds or who's, but uh, John Fields is at the table. Looks like John Fields has got four balls, four stripes left in the eight ball. Yep. And I'm not sure if he's on the hill or if Greg Fix is. Got a little out of shape, too, in this next shot. So. He did roll a little too much for him. He's now got a deep cut back. Nice back cut there for him. Yeah, he's got a tough back cut, it looks like. Ball's also frozen, looks like, to the other ball. Luda Broughton match. Somebody's up three to two. Who's Luda playing, you know? He's playing Taylor Broughton. Oh, okay. That's a winner side match. 
Oh, is it really? Yes, he does not like that shape. I don't think so, because I thought Junior beat Pluto. Uh, no, Pluto beat. Pluto beat Junior. Pluto beat Junior first round. Oh, wow. Five that's to a, one, that's actually. A big, that's a big win. Yeah. And uh, jun Junior's playing. Oh, well, that match is over. I wonder, yeah, it was a hill hill, too. Junior and uh, Tim Tunjum just got done. I, they're both putting their cues away. I can't tell which one's more angry. <laughs> Nobody's really... I don't know. Junior's talking to somebody on the side. He's waving his arms around like crazy. I wonder if he did he look, that one. He doesn't look angry, though. No, he doesn't. I don't know either of them well enough to know their... Uh, other mannerisms uh, determine if they're angry or not. Right. Did you, did you see that uh, TJ is out and he was second pick of the litter? He's out, out? Yeah, TJ He's is out, out. He lost to Jed Lampy. Oh, I thought that was on the winner side. So that was the yeah. loser side. Wow, he got knocked out. How the hell am I still in it? <laughs> yeah. Sell yourself short. You're in the same spot that he was. That yeah. Tyler was. TJ. Ah, it looks like uh, John Fields was on the hill there, so he got out on that table and he's he got the victory. So the next match on this table will be Sean Mitchell versus John Fields. Does that mean that um, Greg Fix is out of Greg the tournament? Fix is out. Wow. This is just a... Greg Fix used to be a professional pool player on the yeah. Pro Tour many years ago. I can't tell you how many times I got to the hill with that guy and I just couldn't finish it. Story of my life. Great shot, though. Very good pool player. Yeah, he's kind of awkward looking when he... He does have some awkward strokes. Yeah. That I've noticed. Tw a little twitchy. And yeah. Whoop. Sorry, guys. All right. Turn you back on. Thanks. Kevin. Sorry about that. I had to give a hug to one of my friends. Taylor Hansen. Yeah. Glad she's here. She should be playing in this thing. I know. I'm surprised she hasn't or isn't. I don't know how much she plays anymore. Taylor and Tristan, I don't know how much either of them play anymore. Yeah, um, you the still last... keep in touch with them, or yeah, with Tristan, the last one that I heard he play at was uh, either was that that Owatonna, the three man tournament it was him, Travis Schultz, and Mike Osmondson. Mm -hmm. They played a three man there. I don't know how well they did. Is that last year, a couple years ago? That was actually just this year. Oh, okay. Or twenty twenty one. Oh, was think, it? Okay. I don't remember. It's the one that. Um, it's not the I DNR think, star thing. Is no. It? Because I know that Taylor, it's either Taylor Broughton or someone who runs that tournament. Okay. And it runs really, really well. It's a, it's a very difficult tournament. We got Pluto and Broughton matches now tied three to three. Jamie just broke and made a ball. That was a good shot. I think that seven goes by. Oh, oh yeah. Wide open. Big pocket.
don't know if that's what he wanted. I, just, I think he yeah. wanted to roll a little forward on that. trying to drift forward for that, too? Yeah, I think that's probably his plan. Maybe, like, do a 2-6 pass to 10 ball, 5 in the side, and get the 8 in the corner. I think that was his, maybe his main goal. I don't know if this angle it almost looks like he still has the 2. Yeah, it does, actually. It's weird all the camera angles. Sometimes you just can't really see it. Right. I'll work on getting like 10 or 15 more camera guys out here. <laughs> 25 cameras <laughs> yeah. on one table. <laughs> it's almost like you got to do it like uh, ESPN where you put the mics on the players too as they're talking. Right. Because then you can hear the camaraderie. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good idea. No. <laughs> Yeah, he was trying to get over for the five on the side, and it looks like he might have got, wow, pretty good, I think. Good shot. <laughs> zigzag shot for the five. Six looks like it goes past the ten, but when you change it to that other angle, it doesn't really. Here it looks like it goes very clean in that corner past the ten. I doubt that that's what he's going for, but now it looks like it doesn't go at all. Yeah, I don't know. I, at first, I thought he could hit the five in the side and hold it, you know, for mm -hmm. the six. But then he's still kind of tricky on getting on that eight. But especially if he drifts too much, that's going to be a, a the way. It, with what he's lining up, it doesn't look like he can hold it with the five for the six in that right bottom right corner. He's trying to get around underneath it somehow. You gonna draw underneath it? Mm -hmm. That's a good um, shot. Yeah, he's got an angle now to fly into that eight. eight I don't even know if the eight needs to be. I don't even know. Well, know if he needs I don't to know if it goes up in that corner. Check it. I feel like it does. Well, in a valley, it might go in, but it still looks kind of tight. Right. Yeah, he just pointed where he wants to be. No, he's looking where he's going to go into him. Yeah, I think he's going to hit that end rail and come up and try and bump into the... Okay. We'll see. I guess the angle's a 7.53, Fargo. So, so, if, so if he loses and you beat him, you're going to go up to like a probably a 7.80 or something. <laughs> like that. If I get the chance at him, I'll try my best. That's all I can say. Uh, obviously he had too much draw there. Yep. Was trying to come off that end rail and bump into him. Still very makeable shot, and he has a window where he can cut that in, and he wouldn't scratch. At least I don't. Cut in where? On the corner puck. You don't think so? The, the right corner, you mean? Yeah. 
I'm crazy uh, like that, though. That I would, a, that's a crazy shot. That's a crazy shot, but I think it's possible. Uh, I don't know, man. He's covered in a lot of banks. He can't really. I don't think he can go once back in the back left corner pocket. I don't know about the cut, but. Yeah, look at it. he's looking to play a bank off the nine in the oh, yep. side, possibly. He doesn't have a lot. Doesn't, hardly has anything. No. Maybe, maybe that's why I lose so often, because I go for stupid crap like that. It's almost impossible to try and play safe here, but I think he's going off off the nine on the side. The nine's just sitting out a little funny, though. Yeah. You know, to where it's you almost gotta. It's hard to hit that nine fairly full and have it fall in the side yet. I think right. it, it might end up hitting the rail. Now he's looking at your shot. Oh, where's he looking at the three railer? Pointless to talk about. Let's just watch and see. <laughs> so, what would you classify as like a professional? Is that over eight hundred Fargo rate? No, actually, Fargo rate. Uh, I believe they say seven twenty-five and up is, a, is considered a pro player. Wow. Yeah. But it's just that choice of they want to play pro, right? I mean. Well, right. Because, I mean, I would say, what, there's so, six guys that are in that pro rate right now in this tournament, yeah. don't you think? Uh, I would say probably. Possibly more. And all Rich said is, says is he's not taking any top pros yeah. for this tournament. He was going for the three-railer. Good try. Rush to get out here. Yeah, he definitely needs to get out here. If not, then he'll just be more pissed when I play him. <laughs> <laughs> I was having that conversation about pro players, though, uh, just recently with somebody. And it's like, what... what what gives you a pro, uh, you know, that staple? Uh, is it the Fargo rate? Obviously, they set it at 725 or up. If you're not Fargo rated, what what determines that you're a pro player? Does that mean that you played against some pros in a pro, considered a pro event, even though there's amateurs in those events a lot? And if you cashed or made money, does that make you a pro? Right. I, I feel like it's some of the bigger tournaments that they play in, and if they cash in that, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's all based off of how many games, too, because, you know, I'm only, like, I think 380 games in. Right. So, I'm saying if you're not considering Fargo rate at all, oh, Fargo what, rate, yeah. what determines a pro player that way? Like, say Fargo rate's not even out there. Right. I would say then it would be based off of big tournaments, Vegas tournaments. If, if you made some money. Yeah, and you made money off In of a it. tournament that's considered, like, a pro event. Right. Which, you may call it a pro event, but there's always amateurs in it, you know? Yep. So do you say, okay, they're not they're not amateurs then? You're saying since they entered that tournament, they're a pro? Yeah, I, I never thought of that. It's kind of tricky. It is tricky. Because even though, you okay, you entered a pro event, does that just uh, take away your amateur status then? Or right. do, you, do you have to actually win some money and then there goes your amateur status? But there's nothing like stopping you from playing in other amateur events, though. Right. Today there isn't. Like with golf, you know, on the PGA Tour, there's obviously, there's rules. Mm -hmm. You cannot play an amateur golf event if you uh, have cashed. 
in a uh, pro event. Should be the same for pool. That was a good shot. Oh god, don't keep rolling. Yep, Michael Perrin Jr. did win five to four. Tim Tundrum is out of the tournament. Jeez. They, there's some. I mean, this reminds me of March Madness, where like it's just any games right. for anyone. You know, it's just almost just like a it's a random draw of who's gonna win or who's on at that. Right. Time. And I I personally believe this that when you're playing a good shooter, like a very good shooter, people's expectations go a little higher and they also play just as hard right i mean i i feel like a lot of players that i play against they you know don't miss or shoot really well and then they watch them play the next match and they miss a lot of times mm -hmm. not saying i'm a great shooter it's just, that's the expectation of any player Kevin's keeping the fight alive. Well, Branks, I appreciate everything. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to go ahead out and kind of right. prepare mentally for this. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for joining. Sure. Right. That was Kevin, a buddy of mine, Kevin Moriarty. Used to live in the Mankato area, but now lives in down in Fairmont. He's been putting a lot of time in the last, I don't know, two or three years. It's definitely gotten better. Got an opening to play in this event and took it. He uh, he wants to get better, and this is a good way to do it. You play uh, tougher events, it's tougher players. the full one that's better yeah All right, so update on the Pluto Broughton match. Um, somebody's up four to three. Jamie Pluto is at the table. Uh, yes. Junior did lose his first match to uh, Jamie Pluta, five to one, I believe. Jamie's uh, on the stripes. He's got three balls left in the eight ball, and they look from the distance here. They look like they're sitting pretty open for him. So if he is on the hill, he would be the winner, but we'll see.
All right, so Jamie ran out, uh, and he is racking. So now it's Hill Hill. It was definitely a tough save to uh, freeze up on the six. I don't way you hit it. Obviously, it was too hard, but not exactly sure with how full he hit the six. What what he was going for there? He might have been trying to lock up on the eleven with the two ball or something. I don't. I'm not not one hundred percent sure. Shook his head though. Obviously, it didn't work out the way he uh, hoped. Oh, I just got some bad news. Jerry Johnson's not going to make it down this weekend to join me in the booth. Bad news for all you uh, Jerry Johnson fans. See if I can get some more guys in the booth here with me this evening. So update, Jamie Pluto just broke and ran on Hill Hill match against Taylor Broughton. So Jamie Pluto gets the victory there. That is a winner side match. That puts Jamie fourth round on the winner side.
Danny Olson uh, uh, beat Nick Marsalek 5 4 on the winner's side. Well, it looks like he was frozen on that, the way they were talking. Uh, yeah, I'm going to shoot it. He's gonna... But, you know, I don't know if you want to touch it. I mean, it might. Uh, it's pretty obvious if that object ball moves. 13. He's going to get rich to watch this anyways. I don't know if he's got to spin this a little bit or what, but uh, we'll see. Obviously, a 13 wiggles a little bit. It's a foul, but looks like he's got to, he's going to spin it a little bit, hit it a little more full. Yeah, good, good shot. Rolled a little farther than he'd like, but better than being hooked on that last shot. So I got a match update. Uh, JD Prestigard beat Mark Weaver on the loser side, five to three. So he's gonna play Michael Parent Jr. That's in the thirteenth through sixteenth position. Got Jed Lampy versus Mario Pereno in the thirteenth through sixteenth position. That was a good shot by Kevin oh, for the sixth ball. Looks to me like he can put uh, 
some extreme right hand English on this and come around two rails in between the two and the one possibly uh, and take either option depending on where he floats into. Preferably the two before the one. Which would obviously set him up for the eight a little easier. The draw shot here is a little trickier because you got to hit it a little bit harder. Like just a smooth stroke with a bunch of right hand English on this. Uh, but we'll see. I could be completely wrong. Looks like he's going with the draw, low left. Yeah. He cut it way too much, which is why it uh, acted the way it did. Hits that a little more full and throws it down the rail more. It's going to act more like what he was hoping. I don't know why, but it seems like this camera shot kind of changed its color. It almost looks yellowish or like it's trying to match his shirt there. I don't remember it being that color earlier today. He's got that 11 uh, rail first off the 6 in the corner, possibly. Uh, later on, obviously. Not, not right now. Or he's looking at a safe. Tough to tell from this angle if you got him on that two ball. Can't tell from any of my angles really. McQuail, one ball right here. There you go. See if he's got his kick and shoes on. After this match, we're going to have John Fields from Wisconsin playing uh, Sean Mitchell from the Twin Cities, Minnesota metro area. Wow. Excellent shot by Kevin there. Great shot. Ended up pretty straight on the six. 
Got to try and create an angle somehow here. Which obviously on a valley table, you are able to uh, cheat pockets pretty good, but this one almost looks like it's a little awkward angle here. See what he can come up with. Or if that two goes right by there, I guess they... Uh, two ball. Yeah, I was thinking that the two didn't go by the six, but from this angle, it definitely looks like it goes. My bad. Ooh, a little love from the six, but came out all right. Whatever he feels comfortable with here, uh, coming back, uh, either just play for that bank the whole time. Don't worry about trying to get perfect on that eight on the side. Obviously, that's a little tricky, but just try and get back there for a decent bank. All right, he's coming all the way around, which is an excellent shot. I'm wrong again. Fire me. Got it up in the corner or the side. I guess my whole thought was it didn't go past that 11. But. And that's a tight window to play into like he did, but he did an excellent job of it. Excellent, excellent shot there. Kevin continues to fight back here. Kicked it inside. Excellent out there for Kevin, kicking that one in and then uh, getting back there for the eight like he did. Up to 205 viewers, thanks for tuning in. Go ahead and share the stream. We got some good uh, Midwest amateur players here. I guess you could call them amateur and semi-pro because many of them are uh, above uh, 700 cargo rate. I don't have them all written down, but it's got to be five or six of them that are above 725. Got the link to the bracket on the description of this video. Just gotta click back on that link. Eight ball today, one day event, nine ball tomorrow. Nice solid break there. Definitely has his choice here, whatever he's comfortable with. Everything's sitting there pretty good. update uh, Rory Hendrickson beat Jeff Van Sickle 5-1. I didn't catch that. You guys have seen that in the bracket. 
So Rory's on the winner's side in that uh, third bracket on the winner's side, third round. He's waiting for the winner of this match. Danny Olsen is uh, all the way through to the fourth round on the winner's side, and so is Jamie Pluto. Kevin's looking pretty good on this table to even it up. Just don't let anything get a little weird on him here, and he should be... Uh, I guess I'm not gonna say any more. Pretty good, pretty good table here. Good shot, kind of a force follow there. Punched it so hard, but just a little bit of a tip high on there, and it just uh, kind of forces it forward just a little bit. I think he was trying to get, I don't know if he was trying to get down there for the five, or uh, he had to punch it a little bit because he was worried about scratching in that side, I believe. Kind of popped it out. Might have been trying to get straight on that six, or not the six, I mean the three. I don't want to get that mixed up. Roy Rob updates. Uh, let's see here. Rob, let's see what table are they on? Nine. They are down there a ways. Uh, let's see. Uh oh. Eight balls. Not a friendly ball unless he can uh, pop this back. Four ball back for the five. Um. Troy and Rob, it looks like they are Hill Hill. If I uh, seeing the balls correctly, looks like four four. Troy is at the table with uh, a lot of balls on the table. Looks like it might have been right after the break. Rob looks upset, He's standing up, pacing behind the uh, spectators table. That's a good match. Rob sat back down. Looks like he's breathing okay now. Roy's still at the table. Ah. He was trying to, Kevin was trying to get back down there for that five. It's just kind of straight there, so he really had to force it. Overstroking it can sometimes throw your uh, aiming point off. Not that it was an easy shot at all, but uh, sometimes that, that's what happens. Overhitting something just to try and force it down there and throw your, uh, your stroke off a little bit. Miss your aiming point. Looks like the eight goes past the five, so uh, he def definitely has a pretty open table here. Uh, yeah, pick it, pick it apart the way he feels comfortable with, and get on that eight ball properly. Next match again will be John Fields versus Sean Mitchell. Any uh, Wisconsin people are out there watching, uh, they'll be happy to watch that one, I'm assuming. Uh, 
Yeah, it looks like he's going to try and come on the left side of the floor here and kind of thin this a little bit. Hit by that second diamond there that he was aiming at. Come out for the 15 in the corner and then the 12 in the opposite corner. Roll up for the 8. Stating the obvious, I know. And you got the third diamond. You still got the right angle, though, to get on that. Well, he should be okay. Camera definitely wants to match his shirt color for some reason. Don't know why the color is like that. Maybe it's been like that the whole day. It's all in my head. Apologize, I'm here talking to myself. Anybody in the chat room wants to have a conversation with me, it's, it's quite all right. Try and get some people to join me here. Uh, looks like he pulled that back quite a bit. I think he's okay though. There it is, Jesse Engel takes it down. AD and junior match. Uh, let's see here. Looks like, uh, I believe they started. Uh, looks like it's 1 1. Get the names changed here. The next match on the stream table. Thank you. All right. John Fields. This is uh, Midwest Q Sports started this page to stream this event. It was mainly the only reason we started this separate page. Didn't want to do it from a personal account. So I designed a little logo, streamed this a couple of years ago. And it's kind of turned into something more. Uh, a buddy of mine, Nate Zender, has purchased some tables in Mankato. I'm from Mankato, Minnesota. So I've been streaming some of his events, which has been pretty fun. Uh, this is obviously a great annual tournament that we have here in Minnesota. Let's see some of the uh, past winners here. Here's uh, some pictures of the uh, black champions black. You'll see some. Some uh, Wisconsin names on here. Minnesota. See South Dakota, North Dakota. Goes back from to 1982. Potentially the longest running singles tournament in Minnesota. A lot of big names on here. Guys that used to play in the pro level way back in the day, in the 80s. Jimmy Wetch. You can look up Jimmy Wetch on uh, YouTube or Google him. See some old matches he had. Especially uh, 
Big one against Efren Reyes on the Camel Tour. Definitely some good players in the Midwest. You guys all know it. They go out to uh, Vegas and play national events. You see Midwest teams do well. Minnesota teams kick some butt last year, that's for sure. They kick some butt in the VNEA, I guess I should uh, clarify. But uh, there's always teams, Wisconsin, teams from Colorado that do very well. Mike Piazza always seems to be on a good team. He's got a cool hall in Colorado. Piazza uh, does a lot of streaming. I watch some of his stuff. Not sure if he's out there watching, but probably busy working. Try and get Rob Matson up here. Um, looks like he's just turning into a score sheet. Uh, so that, that means he uh, he beat Troy Liebel. Yeah, a good match there on the winner's side. Uh, Rob Matson versus Jamie Pluta. See if we can get that one on the streaming table. Probably be a little bit yet. We got quite a few losers matches to go. Oh, you already called it. Called it on table seven already. I guess they're not waiting. That would have been a good one. I have to go talk to Rich. Surprised he called that one up right away. So I suggested earlier to uh, add the Fargo rate next to these people's names. Uh, I might give that a try. The longer names, I might not be able to fit it in there. I might have to shrink the names a little bit. I'll add them on this match and uh, see how it works out. Yeah, Mr. John Fields here is uh, 709. On Mitchell, as you can see, is a 657. I know a lot of people look at the Fargo rates these days, so might as well get with the times and put it on the screen. watch a lot of streams and uh, look at a lot of forums where people talk about the Fargo rates. Obviously, there's a lot of critics out there. Is it the best? Isn't it? Uh, who knows? And as everyone knows, the more games that are entered, the better it's going to get. But it's just, you know, if it started 100 years ago, it would be very accurate. But obviously, you got new players every day. Not sure how to feel about it, but it seems like a pretty good system to me. See what John does here. It looks like he, uh, I don't know if he's trying to go full into that six. Kind of 
this angle looks like he's got to go full into it kind of float forward after he hits it as long as he doesn't hit the right side of it oh he's just hitting it soft yeah it's a good shot I don't know if he was definitely doesn't look like that uh, 10 goes by the 12 no it doesn't I think he ended up about right where he wanted to I haven't seen John Fields shoot. Uh, I know he's a you know a top player, in Wisconsin. Uh, I think I might have seen him in a stream or two. I watch a lot of streams, even on the Wisconsin page. He's obviously a good player. It's good shape, perfect shape on that ten ball. far as uh, the top players in Wisconsin, I don't know where he uh, kind of ends up at. I know there's some that uh, probably are higher Fargo rate. But he's definitely a solid, solid player. So somebody's up three to one on the junior uh, Prestigard match, and I can't tell you who that is yet. Keep an eye out. See if I can see who moves the next ball over. Here, but it was pretty, pretty good break there by John. Just checking out that two ball, pretty tight pass F14. Yeah. yeah, we can all three get on. Yep. Oh, I got some people that want to join me. Hold on one second while I get them set up. All right, so I'm going to have some guests join us here. we got Taylor Hansen. How's it going, Taylor? Pretty good. How are you? Good. And i got Reeves Coster. How are you doing, Reeves? Good. We're doing all right. Some good pool going on here today. Yeah. Some decent players here, huh? A couple of them. I mean, Minnesota's a real good pool state. So I added the Fargo rates on this uh, the scoreboard here, you can see. Yeah, I see that. I hadn't been doing that. 709, John Fields. Wow. Yeah, he's from Wisconsin. What's, what's Taylor at? Can you pull that up? Yeah, I'll... Uh, can, we show, can we show everybody what Taylor's... <laughs> I don't even know what I'm at anymore. Six something. We won't uh, show it on screen, but I'll... Uh... <laughs> yeah, we can broadcast it, though. Yeah. She's probably like eight. No. 
661 from oh, Taylor. She's got 1,943 games in. That's a lot. Well, I can tell you this. Hey, Chris, looking look. at the screen, Sean Mitchell doesn't beat Taylor. On paper? I'll take yeah. that. <laughs> I'll take that. That's what I thought. I thought, Taylor, you should be playing in this. Have you ever played in this? No, I haven't. Oh. I haven't played in a while, so. Okay. Are you still, uh, what's the college you're going to? I'm currently at the University of Iowa going okay. to grad school for physical therapy. I see. He doesn't like, well. So, Reeves, I'm going to look up your number here. Uh, Do you even have any games on Fargo Ray? Maybe. I don't know. 616. Oh, I'm better than Taylor. No. But I bet you're right. No. Oh, what no. was she? Mine's 660. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And you well, got you got 346 games in, Reeves. That's not bad. Well, the guy hasn't picked up a Q in four years, and I got 616. I'm all right. <laughs> We'll take it. You could be playing in this, too. Uh, no, I couldn't. There's some guys that are under 600 in this, I'm sure. Yeah, but that doesn't make me better than them. <laughs> he, he happened to fall on a ball that he just kicked over there. Let's see if he can make this. That's good. Oh. That's a good Ooh. shot. Great shot. So this is that uh, John Fields. The guy went for... What was it? A thousand or more? Uh, where is he? Seven hundred. Seven hundred. Oh, I thought it was a thousand. Matt Benton got him. They said he was the best player in Wisconsin. So anybody from Wisconsin listening, you got some competition. Yeah, I, uh, I asked that question um, where he kind of ranks in the totem pole over in Wisconsin. Is he 709? I, I, I think there's some higher rated players as far as Fargo rate goes in Wisconsin, but... Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Whatever happened to Big Red or um, uh, Jamie Nichols, those guys used to play pretty uh, well. Who was uh, Big Red? Uh, Mike Davidson from lacrosse. Okay. I haven't heard that name. Well, he got out here, so apparently he pays pretty well. Yeah, that was a good shot. Good shot to get on that. Yeah, I believe. Well, one thing about it, when, you, when you're playing against this competition, it, you can hit a break pretty well, keep the cue ball in control, make a ball. Ask Taylor. She's a professional. <laughs> so, Taylor, how many uh, like professional events have you actually played in that are considered professional events? Um, I would say probably only three or four. Um, okay. I played one WPBA, um, and then I played some others that... It was kind of, I mean, there weren't a ton of, like, top pros that showed up, but there was a few, um, and I won one of those. But, yeah, that okay. was, I would say that was three years ago. Okay. Two, three years ago. Well, that's awesome to win that. Yeah. And you played the likes of Allison Fisher? No, you played. Did you play one of the top pros that were in the events? Um. So, in the WPBA, I played, um. Guy on Kim. Ooh. Um, okay. I lost. I might have watched that stream, maybe. Sixer. It was streamed, wasn't it? You got the six in the corner, I've but the, played... the cue ball is buried on the top rail here. Sorry. Anyways, yeah. Good. I've played Vivian quite a few times. Okay. In Vegas and um, on the WPBA as well. Okay. Vivian Vivi Real. Yep. And those tournaments are were the like nine foot events, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So Chris, you you basically or or Taylor, you basically have to take the fourteen here, right? Like, is there another shot? The eleven the side, maybe I don't know. What are you What are you shooting? You got to You got to take the fourteen or the eleven the side. There's no other shot, right? Yeah, I'd probably yeah. start with that fourteen. Yeah. Then maybe the eleven. And everybody understand that Taylor's out here like ninety. <laughs> I would put her up, above ninety percent. I think. Taylor, where's the ten go then? In, in one of the pockets. The ten's got to come. You got to shoot the nine before the yeah. ten. It's got to come um, down there, unless yeah. you move stuff around. You don't have to. He's got a little bit of work here, and that's why he's taking his time. So if you if you just move the three a little bit, you can. Open up that package for the 
Yeah, I don't know yeah, if he's going to be able to do that. Right. He's got a little angle here, so... Let's see what he does. He gets down at the other end of the table. He might be able to use that 15 in the side to get back down for that tempo. Outside of the 10, this is pretty elementary, though. Yeah. Well, that 8 isn't a uh, gimme spot, but... So I do have some answers here on uh, where he kind of stands. Somebody says John is number five in Wisconsin currently. John is a champion, a 20-time Wisconsin state champion, top five ever to come out of Wisconsin. Billy Lassie says best players, Steyer, Sergio, Larry, John. And he calls himself one of the best players, Billy which is fine. Dave Coles, <laughs> Jack McKenna, Duncan, Randy, and yeah, many more. A lot of good players in Wisconsin, Minnesota. Absolutely. I think we, could, we should get more of these Wisconsin guys over here for this tournament every year. Make it a little better. Yeah, abs I mean, if you can get people like what, what, what the guy is playing right now? Fields? Yep. Yeah, if, if you could get five more of him over here, play with some Minnesota boys. We would have had about four more. Uh, we would have had about four Canadians in this, yeah. but uh, the travel restrictions because of COVID yep. uh, put a stop to it. And those guys always come down here and compete pretty. Yeah, they're good players. Yeah. Looks like he's leaving that 11 for the corner to get back yeah. down that turn. So shoot, right. the ten, so shoot the 10 in the, the yeah. same pocket that he just shot the 9 yeah. in here. He's picking this apart really good. He's got to get that right angle on 11. He's, he's got a lot of wiggle room there. Like He doesn't have to get super straight on the 11 to get the 10 in the corner. Just a shot. And then the 8 goes in the side, Taylor. I'm From sure this it's angle, it looks... To tell. Where do you play that it, eight, then? It looks kind of tough in the side, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, you could go there if you slow roll it or take it in that corner down by the three. You know, it all depends on the shape on the ten ball. Where does he go here? He, he, he's going to shoot the, the 11, obviously. Is he, is he going top inside to come back down here? Because he's going to shoot the 10 up there. So he'll right end up there, the he's bottom like, row. Right there, he's almost aiming for the bank on the 10, you know, his, where his cue was. But he's got a little off angle on this 11, yeah, he, I think. He's got a little, little backwards here. So, oh, where, where does he play the 10, Taylor? I mean, it looks like he's going to go for that bank, but I would prefer to take it up in that corner and roll high, but he has kind of a tough angle. Because it doesn't go on the side, so he's going to have to play that ball all the way up. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I had to update the score. It was 2-0. Two, two yeah, no worries. I missed it. So he's, he's going to have to get by the 7 ball here, up in, and then he's going to have to play the 8 in the side. Or, am I wrong? Yeah. Or do you think he'll try and bank it? Um, I think he's going up in the corner. Yeah, but oh, the A ball. The right. Yeah, I think he's going to go high left maybe on this and try and go across and then get on that. Yeah, from that this corner. angle, it doesn't look like he can make it in the side here. So he'll probably try and bank the A ball? It, from where he was pointing, it looked like he was going to go high left uh, and try and get on that 8 still it looks in the like corner. He's, yeah. Right down here. It looks yeah. like he's queuing it with left. A tough that's, shot. Yeah, that's a that's a real tough shot with inside spin all the way up. I kind of like the bank. And the seven's, bank the seven's like not out of play here. Yeah. Personally, just to make this, this shot a little easier, I kind of like just hitting it with a less left on it, and then just come out for the eight with the bank shot. You yeah. know. Yeah. Just make the ball right. Give yourself a chance. Yeah. Oh, he was trying to. You got yeah. it. So now, you, now you yeah, just play the bank, right? Yeah, he was. Yeah. You're gonna try and cut this down the rail, Taylor. Yeah, he has to. I mean, I 
If I can cut it, I usually do. Yeah, I take a cut over a bank. Yeah. He kind of caught the tit there a little bit, which kind of killed the cue ball. Otherwise, it might have came down even better. You hit a good shot there, though. You can't say that word online. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> he nailed it, dude. Hey, that's, that's a, a great shot. shot. That's a great shot. It's a good out. Yep. Green rip. We don't want these Wisconsin guys to win very bad, though, do we? Ah, uh, it's all right. <laughs> Somebody's saying on here like, we should do like a border battle, like a Moscone Cup style event. Ta fun. Taylor can be on that team. <laughs> <laughs> or you're in Iowa now. You're not. Yeah, you're I'm no in longer Iowa. Minnesota. So three rip, gone. Get on the board, bud. So Taylor, just uh, school and life kind of got more busy, more important than pool, huh? Yeah, I have classes like 8 to 4 almost every day now. It's much different than undergrad. Uh, a lot more studying. I had nine classes this semester, so it's just tough to find time. Don't really have time to travel. Mm. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to put it off for a little bit yeah. and hopefully get back into it after school. So you are interested in playing a little bit? Yeah, I do still like going out with friends and playing here and there. I just haven't had time to do it competitively. Yeah. How many streamers we have around, Chris? Uh, we got 210 viewers. Ooh, that's a lot. Been ho hovering around that 200 mark all day. You got a ball. Ooh, the, the cue ball almost went this side. So what do we like here, Taylor? The 313 is the danger zone, right? Like Yeah, for sure. The, um, the nine's a good breakout yeah. if you did take stripes. Um, for solids at three and the six are tough. The, if you play the seven in the, the top side here, as people are watching, you, you can probably push that three over a little bit and play it either in the top side or the top left corner. But you're right. I, I I think the nine gives you the best chance. To, Rich and his text <laughs> I think the nine gives you the best chance to get out, right? Yeah, I'm also I'm not against right solids away. either. I mean, I believe yeah, that three goes right in the away. side pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you get rid of that five right away, then you can take that three and use that uh -huh. to get hopefully on the six in the same corner as the five. Yeah, it doesn't look like the six goes yeah. by the 14, no. so you're going to have yeah. to play the six in a different the pocket one. than the, the, the optimal, yeah. right? So so if you take solids here, where are you going to play the six ball, Taylor? Um, I mean, you'd pretty much have to play it in that same corner as the five. The five, yeah. yeah. After you get rid of the five. Yeah, it's it's tough either way with those three balls. Kind of clogged up. But I think he is going to use that nine as a little bit of a bumper. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to draw so, yeah. into that three ball. Yeah, now if he just moves the three the ball way. a little bit, it should be. Yep, yeah. that's a good shot. Yeah, so now every ball goes, and you don't touch anything, and you just kind of poke your way around the table. Yep. Although you have to play a little window here, right, to get on. The 14. Yeah. We don't have a teleprompter, but what I'm saying is, you have to play somewhere, what, to the, the diamond, diamond. Bottom to, row diamond to yeah. cut, cut that 14 in the yeah, to top get right underneath, corner. Underneath the six to get to the, yep. that 14 if you don't want to move anything, which I'm a, I'm a fan of yeah. not moving things, not disrupting if everything goes, right? Yeah, I think he might do that right now and get those two balls out of there so he doesn't have to worry about it later on. Let's see if he can get on the 14. Oh, Ooh, he's short. I think oh, it's tough to tell from there. Oh, hard to tell from there too. Sean just walked by and looked at me and gave me a nod, like maybe it does go, maybe or maybe he meant that he's hooked. Can you see it from this angle? No, he can't see it. I, I can see it from here. He can't see it. Okay. He so can, he, he has he either has to go over the might. edge of the six or he's gonna have to little mass a. Throw. Yeah, I think he could spin it in there, but it yeah, does get tougher. Yeah, throw. now that he's right. over that one ball a little bit. He's gonna have to move the cue ball here, though. 
But he wants to take that ball. We all know that. He might try to hit that window. Yep. Right so there. Now. Hit that window the 15th. To the 15th. Yeah. Because when else is he going to come back down here for this 14 ball, right? He's going to have to move it, though. Just spin. I just hit it square. Oh, it didn't look like he could make it from here. Yeah, it's tough to tell. Uh, ooh, from that see, angle, that's tight too. that camera angle doesn't. It looks like he doesn't have it, but right, exactly. Can you see it from there, Chris? I know this camera angle is actually better than the view I have actually on the table. But. He's not looking too happy about it. So. No, oh, yeah, he's, he's getting a short cue. That's jumping cue. <clears throat> Meanwhile, we're sitting over here like, this game's easy from yeah. 15 feet away, right? Right. I what? haven't missed from over here yet. I think you have, actually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Make fun of Reeves time. So we got an update. Jesse Engels playing Rory Hendrickson on the winner side. Uh, it's tied 1-1. One one. So the winner of that will play Danny Olsen. On the winner's side. For the chair? No. Or is there one more? Like There's another one. Um, uh, Rob Matson. Yeah, they're playing uh, down on. Jamie and Rob are playing right now? Yeah, and somebody's up. Somebody's up two to zero. I'm not sure who that is. They love both of those, those guys. They taught me how to play pool back So we just missed that jump shot. Did he? Uh, he I think he fouled. He, did fouled. he, foul? he took that three ball. Oh, okay. So, what's your pattern here, Taylor? Um, Cut the table in half? Yeah, that's what I usually try to do. Uh, I just run it out in so order to make it hard. Get, get, rid of the, <laughs> get rid of the three and four and then play on half a table here? Or no? Yeah. No, I would definitely do that. I mean, it's kind of tough because you left all those balls kind of a little, like, by each other. Um I might have started with the seven to get kind of one of those middle balls out of there and leave it a little more open. Sure, but yeah, I can agree no, with his, that. No, his uh, pattern's working out well, too. One thing, and I haven't played in a long time, but one thing I always, was, like, cut the table in half. Get rid of that half so you don't have to move the cue ball yep. so much, right? Yeah, for sure. Oh, he's over this one ball, which isn't going to cause him much problem, but you don't want to... That's not where he wanted the ball. Yeah, that was the hard part about leaving that one ball. Oh, oh. Uh oh he's, he might be behind this. Oh, boy. Yeah, see? I don't know if he's got the cut on the yeah. other. No, he doesn't. See, maybe being over that eight oh, ball. Oh, it, it definitely made a difference. Yeah, for sure. So I think it would have helped getting one of those three balls out in the middle um, before yeah. going down and clearing off that end of the table. Just because all those balls mainly went in the same pocket. And yeah. that one ball um, hogging that pocket. And, and for all you listening, this, this girl plays better than you. <laughs> <laughs> Even if Shane Van Boning's listening, <laughs> it's still true. Yeah, that was tough. When he, when he ended up over that ball, then you're limited as to what part of the cue ball you can hit. And you just basically have to, I mean, take the center ball and get what it gives you, and you're playing on speed. And he hit it just a little too hard and ended up behind the eight ball. Yeah, every time you're jacking up like that, it makes it harder to make the ball and controlling where it's going after. So what do you like here? I mean, the 11's obvious in the way for a kick to the bottom now. Closer, that way you don't have to talk as well. Okay. All right. Sorry, All right, so he obviously missed that, huh? But he made it. Must have made a good hit. He made a good hit. Left him a little tricky, huh? Yeah, I mean, can you make the ten on the side? Yeah, I think he's good. Just slow rolling. It's not it. the uh, easiest of shots, you know, but do you trust the or do you just run up the rail like he's? The yeah, side? no, yeah, that's tough, but. <laughs> This is kind of tough. I think he's going to end up with safe here. And, and Hitting that 11. And yeah, I think he's going up on the come up yeah. here. Leave Sean a kick oh. on the one. Sean's going to 
possibly kick it in the side. He doesn't like it. <laughs> No, it's a. That's not an easy shot. Might have given him a little sliver of it. Does he? Does he have an angle? Yeah, it but, looks like he might have a sliver of it to cut up in that corner. And and even he likes if, it. if not, the, the one's close enough to the rail. We it, it's not. I mean, every kick is a hard kick. It's flying into that eight ball a little bit here. Kick, right? Or he's, he's he left it all for him. Yeah. Uh oh. Now you got a funnel down here, Taylor, or no? to tell if you can make it between that rail and go off the 11 a little bit. It's pretty yeah. tight. Yeah, it's tough to tell. From that angle, it kind of doesn't really look like it does go. No, it looks like it's just short of a ball's width. Hard to tell from here, but if you can hit the like yeah, rail in the 11 at going the same the, time, it might go, maybe. Looking at the right. bank in the top right. Oh. a difficult shot so so this is the game right you guys if he misses it is oh yeah he, he hit it well look at this look at this look yeah, at okay. this that's a great shot nice shot by sean i don't make that what, what's your percentage on that but it can't be over 50. yeah no probably that's not. a great shot I've never been a great banker, to be honest. I mean, that one was much tougher than like a normal, pretty dead on bank. So. Yeah, that was that was a great shot, especially when you're down. Three zero. To have that one, and if you miss it, you know the game is over. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be doing four zero, or you make it and. You might climb yourself back into the match. Yeah, that was a tough situation, but I mean, he really didn't have much of a safe play with those two balls there. So, Taylor, I got a question for you. So, yeah. recently I've talked to some people about uh, like amateur pro status. You know how that changes. You know, like what is the, you know, what is the requirements that that uh, basically bumps you up to a pro status from amateur? Is it different? It's got to be the same as men's as it is for the women's tour, right? Like, I'm sure there's a lot of amateur players that play in those pro events that you've played yeah, in. Yeah, for sure. So what are you considered a pro player? What what determines if you made that next level, you know, that next step up? Um, so I believe I'm just more of, like, a self-declared pro, basically. I mean, my Fargo rating isn't as high as those top pros that are, like, okay. playing in pro tournaments all the time. Um, and I like chose to go to that pro tournament. And I did do well. And did you get in the money? I did get in the money. Um, I believe it was like ninth through twelfth place when I played in hey. the WPBA. Um, and so I know well, like over and over again. Um, then they do declare you as a pro, like if you continuously do well, which okay. I didn't play in enough tournaments to technically okay. um, consider me. So like they do rankings based on how you place there. So like WPBA will have like the top 32 women um, in their um, like league or whatever. And so I didn't make that because I didn't even play in enough tournaments and I didn't okay. place high enough. Um, so I wouldn't be technically like exempt from tournaments for being okay. professional, but I have played in professional tournaments. Right, and you've won money, but that isn't a stipulation that you feel is taking you out of that yeah. amateur status. So I've only played in one WPBA, and that's like the main um, pro league. Uh, so since I only got ninth through twelfth, and I've only played in that one, yeah. then it really doesn't do much. Okay. And there's not, well, I guess now there is kind of like a men's pro league. I mean, like there's like a predator tour that's been going mm -hmm. on. I don't know if you watch that at all, but yep. so it kind of is like there's a men's tour is kind of coming about now, which is good. I mean, the women have always seemed to be kind of the forefront of a, a tour. Yeah, It seems sure. like, which so is what, awesome. What do, you, what do you guys like here? Open to, oh, you played the 11 on the side, so we're playing Stripe. How do you get out? What's your pattern? Uh, you gotta take that 15 right now. I can't tell if that 14 goes, but you'd want to get it that out. It looks like the 14 goes. Yeah, by the it's one. close. Um, but I would definitely want to take that, and then you 
probably top the 12 on the way by um, and be able to take that 12 right after. So for our watchers, um, Taylor is 85% here. Chris, what are you, 90 from here? Uh, I'm like 2.25%. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you're saying the 15 the side right now? Yep. And then the 14 will go by the 1, it looks like. Yeah, that 10 and 13 so, are still kind of tough with that yeah, the, 2 and 5 there. Be, because the 7 blocks that 13 from up there. Yeah, I mean, if he is able to get hit one of those windows, um, maybe potentially using the 9 ball. Or he might take that 10 right now, it looks like. So, looking to the future, you're going to play the 13 in this pocket where he's playing the 10 right now? Probably I next. I think he's going to get, yeah, play that. Oh, right, oh no, he's not. not. Ozzy, so, I think you are correct. Sorry, guys. Go ahead. Ozzy's here? No, he's on, he was on the stream. He's watching. Well, I understand that. Yeah. But uh, is Ozzy talking to us? Uh, yeah. Michael? What do you have to say? It's Michael Reeves. <laughs> hey, Michael. Miss you, buddy. You should be here. <laughs> so I told him he should be playing. There was an opening. Okay, so Taylor, you gonna play? You gonna try and play this window between the five and four after the nine ball? Try and hit that to get the yeah, thirteen. Yeah, probably. Um, just so take the thirteen that. will be the last ball. Yeah, I mean, I would unless he goes for it now, which is very possible. I don't know. Oh, he missed just that ball. Ooh. Yeah, I think he was just trying too much to get in that window and lost concentration on that shot. So now flipping switches to solids. Where, where's your trouble here? Definitely that six ball. Yeah, can you can you play the six into the seven even if you have to go short rail there? Um, you could. I think it's he hard um, to tell. he bumps out the fourteen right now with the seven yeah. ball. And then take that four probably. Yeah. Because everything goes except for the six ball. Yep. So that's that's the ball we need to figure out, right? Yeah. Um, so he's probably, yeah, like Chris said, he's probably going to um, bump out that 14, take that 4, um, and then take that 6 later on. So what we always talk about as pool players is, is what's your last ball? What's the, what's the ball that gets you onto the 8 ball? Is it the three in this case, probably? Yeah, probably. I mean, that's the most ideal ball. Because it goes um, in basically this. every hole. Yeah. So like he's he going to... No, I think he might play the, the six a little short rail and move it up towards the top left. Right or no? Uh, yeah, but that I'm six not as might smart as that, you guys. I so. think that six might hit that 14. So it's going to go down by like the first diamond or so. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is the six getting yeah. in? Oh, he doesn't a, like that. That's the reason why I kind of like that seven first, you know, yeah, the bump I don't, to 14. Yeah, I don't like moving all those balls around. I didn't like that combo. You, oh, what do you do here? Taylor, do you, there's no way you can possibly try and play the window between the eight and nine. No, I mean, that is tough. He might be able to do that with the three ball. Yeah, um, as, as he's playing probably right now, right? Or no? But that's uh, a tough window yeah, to hit. It, it's hard to leave that for last, especially. Just, so do you try and come down here and... I feel like that would be the easiest way to hit it um, and hit that window kind of underneath that eight ball a little bit. Um, but since that three ball is there, he might be able to, but he is looking at that window. Or do you just, get do you, could you get aggressive here and and you're straight enough on the three? Can you draw into those balls because the two and one and five might bail you out here if you can draw into them? Yeah, but you could also get stuck underneath there and not have anything. He doesn't like he's like us. He doesn't like to move balls. Yeah, he is trying to hit that window for sure. I'm Did gonna take. It? A, it looks like he might have take hit a quick it. break, guys. I'll be back. I'll let you guys handle the reins okay. here. Looks like he might have hit. <laughs> he might have hit the window here. Yep, he did. Wow, that's a great shot. He makes it look easy. Yeah. 
sitting up. Sorry, everybody listening. Chris has been sitting up here for like eight hours by himself. Begging anybody to come up here. And he finally suckered Taylor and myself into <laughs> doing it. And I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All I know is bowling shoes and... Sean's just sent me this message if he's watching. Josh, are you watching? Yeah, see you guys are on the screen. Hey, Sean, say hi. Hey, Josh. Hello, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> that was a that was a pretty good shot to get in that window. Yeah, for sure. That definitely opened up that table for him and allowed him to have a pretty easy out. Makes it pretty easy when you uh, can put the cue ball exactly where you want it, huh? Yep. So it is 3-2 now. Not yep. Don't worry. We'll teach Taylor how to use a computer after all. <laughs> So, I don't know how many how many viewers we have, Taylor. Does, does it say over there? Hey, either way, we wish everybody was here. Chris is coming back to take the reins, yeah, but uh, this is this is uh, the best the best pool tournament. I already updated at it. At least yeah. in the state if not in the five state area. But we're missing a few people. Josh Jones gave up pool, you believe that? Did he really? No, well, apparently he's in love. Wow. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, he says he hasn't put his cues together since his last game at Seagulls in 2020. So what's uh what, once you get to your area, the most important shot in the game is the break, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you don't make anything, I mean, there's a lot of times where you won't even see that table again. So it is important to try and control that cue ball, uh, prevent any scratches from happening. Obviously, it's possible to still um, happen. Yep, ball just going something. off of other balls, uh, but to still have that control, at least you're trying to do something about it. And if you can put the, although he has the cue ball in the middle of the table, it happened to roll up on the two yep. ball here. But if you can leave it in the middle of the table, you have an even better opportunity. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes even like a diamond or two um, back behind those side pockets helps just because most of the clutter is down on the other end. So you're not as likely to hit, um, run yeah, into for, anything. For people who don't hit them as hard as you. That's why I have a heavy hitter. <laughs> so what do we got here? Uh, there's a he strike might, down. Yeah, I think he might try to take that 11, go off that rail and run into those and open them up a bit. You think um, he can get there? It's pretty straight. I think he has a little bit Does he have to go two angle. rails to get there, or do you think he can no, just I go one? No, I think just one if you overcut it a little to the pro side. Sure. Oh, here we go with post side. You guys, are you guys listening to this? How are we supposed to keep up with her? I mean, he so does you're have that you're, you're nine definitely, ball. You're definitely taking stripes here? Yeah, I would say, especially with that 12 the, ball. The one ball, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the 12 is closer to the pocket, so that one ball is a little tougher. Yeah, that, that one's in a difficult situation. He's looking at it now, like, can I make this anywhere? But I don't think it goes in any pocket. Unless you move it. I think he's looking more for like what angle he wants to break it out at. So um, you, so you're he right. Wants... He's going to shoot the 11 because you're always right. Is he going <laughs> two rails or just one? I think just one. Is she always right? She, she's right. It wasn't as steep as I thought, but now. So I think oh. he was trying to hit that one ball first before the 13 and kind of run into that 12 ball little um, instead of hitting that 13. Okay. 
He still does have the nine ball and potentially the 13 in the side. Yeah, it looks like the 13 might go in the side, which is a bonus ball because he definitely wasn't considering that yeah. coming in, right? Yeah, I think he wanted to leave the 13 ball there and not hit that at all. Go off that one and kind of push that more towards the six ball. Yeah. Um, and then bump that 12 closer to the pocket a little bit. So if he can get over this 12 ball and shoot the 13 in the side. Oh, he's going to play a nine, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, that was always a bailout ball in case he kind of got stuck down there. Yeah, but then you leave the 13 kind of in no man's land, right? Yeah. It's kind of a struggle from, I mean, if you're not going to play that 13 in the top corner, where are you going to play it? Yeah. I can't tell how straight that 13 is. If it was straight, I would definitely get that out of there so I wouldn't have to worry about it. Exactly. Because um, you're going to want to take... I'd play it now. You're going to want to take that 8 ball where the 12 is. Um, mm -hmm. And so you're going to want to get those two balls out of there as soon as possible. Yeah, I think I think if I had the opportunity to get rid of the 13, I'd probably take it. But mm -hmm. we'll see what he does. Is that good? That 13 doesn't go anywhere except for by the 12. Ooh. It jumped actually over the 15 ball. He didn't move much of anywhere. I mean, the 15 moved, what, five, six inches, and the four moved five, six inches. Can you tell from where you're sitting if that 13 goes um, past the 6? Yeah, it looks like it does from where I am. Okay. That is another option, too. But so it's still tough to get down there just from the balls that he Yeah, has. the 13 does go by the 6. So he, he's got a very good chance to get out here, right? I mean, they're not in a good pattern, but a, yeah. a guy that plays at his level should, I mean, not should, but could get out here. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, these next two or three shots are going to kind of determine that, uh, whether or not he can get down there. Do you, what was that? Do you think being where the, the 14 and the 10 are, would you ever shoot that 13-12 combination and leave it leave the 13 down in that corner because um, you can get on it from either one yeah i mean it is a small window and then if you hit that 13 12 it's the 13 is going to go by that end rail i agree never play um, a combination you don't have to right yeah so it would definitely be tougher but it's an option uh, i would never plan for it at the beginning but if i did get out of shape a little and that's what i had to do yeah, you could play the yeah. cue ball somewhere near the top side and never plan to play a combination, right? Yeah, although that might be what he's doing right now. I think Is he it, might be taking that 14, leaving himself almost and straight then, on that 10. Yeah, and then play play both of them in the same hole. He might. Be. We'll see. Yeah. See, but, I would have preferred not to, but I mean, he was pretty straight on that ball on this side, so it was getting tough to get and not that any combination is easy, but in combination world, it's not horrible, right? No. But this 13 could get weird, right? Yeah, he's, he's going to have to be in control of where that 13 goes. And yeah. it's kind of tough because it looks like he's pretty straight in here. Um, so he's going to be going off the rail potentially, so which is going to force him to put high on that ball. So he'll slide a little bit over towards the center of the table, towards the spot, and try and play this combination, you think? Or is he yeah, going to, he's not, so. he can't manipulate anything else here. Oh, he's going to try and manipulate something. That was a very good job. Ooh, does the 13 go by the 12 now? Because that worked out great then. He you can shoot the 12. Yeah, I couldn't tell if he had an angle on that top of the yard, so I just tried to see if he could That down looked there. too straight, but he must have spun a lot of that. Yeah, he definitely had a lot of right hand angle 
push on that. Um, but he did have a little bit of an angle. So which ball is he playing? Is he playing the 13 or 12 here? He's playing 13. And that'll probably play. So now where you, you're playing the eight, just beyond the six, you're gonna try and replace the five ball here? No, he's gonna play in the side. Uh oh, oh, no. oh boy. Is he on it? He is on it. He's on it, he, no, I can see by his reaction at the table. He did not hit that very well. He definitely picked up granted. You know, it was a pretty easy shot. Pretty easy to read. Um, you can kind of tell that he rushed that. So you got to kick it. You think he's, you think, he, where, do, where does it go? Are you kidding? This is incredible. He put himself right on the one ball. Yeah. You're going to try and kick it in the top side? Yeah, probably just the side. I mean, I think it does go in that bottom corner past the six, but that is tough. It's not a full pocket. This is... Chris needed some food. Now Chris is back. It's all right. Yeah. Jones. Hey, turn your computer off, Josh. Oh, boy. Okay, so, hey, there's a lot of balls in the middle of the table here. Yeah, that two and the four is tough. Um, I think once you take that three ball, though, you can easily take that four up in the corner, and then the two in the side or the other opposite corner. Taylor, is that where you would have left yourself in that situation? Definitely not. Down in the jaws, away from everything? Yeah, that, that was tough. You just wanted to make a ball and try and get on track, right? Yeah, I'm not really sure what he was thinking for that shot. Honestly. That's harsh. No, I'm not trying to be mean. I mean, everyone thinks differently, but... So, okay. Now you have a cross bank in the bottom left. Do you think you can thin it in the top center? Mm, that's tough. Played off the two real hard in the top center? I don't know. What do you do from here? I mean, it wasn't a great save, right? I mean, it definitely could have been better where he was kicking or something like that. Yeah, but two he, rails are better all the time. But he is in a tough spot. I mean, if he does leave it, maybe thins it on the left-hand side um, and tries to go off the rail and down by the bottom corner pocket where the chalk is, kind of.
and we're back. Chris got his bacon cheeseburger. Not done yet. So Taylor, where do you break from? You middle or, or side break? Um, Second ball? Usually the middle, about a half a diamond over from center. Okay. Um, and then if I'm not making anything, I usually move to the center rail, a lot of t or the side rail, sorry, um, and second ball break yep. to try and make something, even though usually there's more clutters. But and do you do you put your bridge on the rail or are you on the table when you're breaking? I always break from the rail. Really? Yeah. I feel That's like interesting. yeah. I know a lot of people break um, from, from the out, table. Yep, on the table. I just feel like my hand, like I can. Almost grab onto the rail and be more secure. Yeah, kind of and pull then, yourself into yeah, it. Yeah, when I break, I put a lot of my body into it. I stand up, um, twist my hips a little, so it's easier when I have that extra stability by holding onto the rail a little bit. So he just flat out missed there, and now we got fields with a, a makeable table here, right? I mean, solids are either one really. Every ball goes in. Yeah, I would definitely go solids here. Um, as long as you can make that four and not move much. He does have a tough opening shot. He might go for that 15. It's or do you, just, do you play stripes here? I think that's my, that might be what he does. He doesn't really have a good opening shot for those solids. Um, but that 11 and 13 looks a little tough. I can't really tell if it goes in the straight in that side. It looks, looks like, like it might hit the from corner. From our angle, it looks like the 11, 13 will go. But then where does the 11 end up? Does it end up right on the one ball? Or you can keep it in the middle of the table? Uh, the 11 ball? Yeah. Um, Once you I play that think, combination. Yeah, I don't think it would hit the one. I think it'd go off and pass that a little bit. So you can play the 11 ball in the bottom left here? Yeah, but he is going for the solid. Uh, like. No, he's playing the 10 ball. Looks like. Oh, he's oh, wow, that's an aggressive yeah. opening shot. No, now he's sitting really good because solids were definitely the better balls, um, but that opening shot was definitely risky. Yeah, that was aggressive. Who is this guy? And yeah. Why do we invite, invite people from Wisconsin here again? Because it's a good competition. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm back. Back again. Check your wreckage. Let's begin. <laughs> I just had a... No tag break. team. Uh, oh, yeah. All right. Well, there it is. Don't worry. I'm in right. I'm in the group. I'm stuck in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, if he clears off this four and seven um, and the five, clear off that end of the table, he has that three and then the one in the side. Yeah, and then he, they're easy, right? You good. just cut the table in yeah. half. Like, always cut the table in half, right? Yeah. And it doesn't possible. matter if he shoots the five or the four right now because he can get on either one. Right? I would definitely take the four. It's higher up on the table. Because that's what he yeah. did. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's just, it's higher up. Um, not as close to the pocket, so it's easier to get on that five versus if you take that so, five, which is further down, you're going to have to draw it more. And get so now you all, all you have to do is get to center table, yeah. clear the ten ball, you can shoot the three. As long as you can play the three. Yeah, he just has to hit that window between that ten and the one. Yep. As long as you can play the three, you're in good shape. Yep. So for anybody who watching who doesn't play pool, this is how it's done. And now you can choose to either control the cue ball or even nudge the 11 getting out. I think he'll just pull a low on it and avoid that. Not even. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Was that loud? That was almost Jimmy Wetch <laughs> scratching the side. Yeah, on Efren. So, anyways. Uh, oh, boy. Now now what do you got, Taylor? He's Just still, thinning he, in? He's yeah. still okay here. Is that how you wanted to hit it, though? No. I mean, he definitely got too much on that, but he's still fine. On the hill, 4-3. So, guys, updates on uh, Matt, Rob Matson beat Jamie Pluta. 
No, really? Those guys are good friends. Sure are. Rob's been playing really well. And, uh, let's see if I, uh, I gotta move that camera. Jesse Angle, Rory Henderson match. Somebody's up 4 3. Rob plays pretty good, right? Yeah, he's decent. Over 700 cargo <laughs> rate, I believe. Better than you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're better than me, and you're a girl. Oh, <laughs> that's not cool to say on the stream, buddy. It's not cool to say ever. I Let's see if I can zoom into that other table. Which one are you going after, Jesse? You got a bunch of balls. So what do we like here, guys? Even though he made two stripes, it looks like. Two stripes. I think I think I like solids better. I think you could I think you could make a better case for solids here. Especially with this opening shot, right? Yeah, I don't think yeah, I don't think you can make that twelve, so that's he doesn't, really like doesn't it. have an opening shot for strike. Right, so let's just play Yeah, play I don't solids. think he's got the twelve, so yeah. definitely let's just play solids, solids and get out. Yeah, I mean solids are pretty wide open still. Not let the other guy have a chance, right? Because you're not gonna play 11, 12 combination or the 14, 13 combination. You're gonna, yeah, you're gonna have to play the three ball. You're gonna play more balls, but it, it gives you a better chance to win the game, right? Yeah. And it, it honestly, once he gets rid of that two ball, the table's cut in half, and it's pretty easy from there. Am I right? Oh. Knock that chalk out. And and now you're only playing on four feet. Yeah, I think he's just gonna take this five, draw back, and then get rid of that one and four. Yeah, and you don't you don't have to move the cue ball very much. No. And, You can you can pretty much play around from here. I wanna cheat this just a little to get yep, off that rail for four. And that's how it's done. Makes it look pretty easy. Well it's real easy when you make a couple of balls in the break and control the cue ball. And Sean gives him the gives him the game. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks, Taylor. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Reeves already put his headset down. Otherwise, I would have said thanks to him. But that's all right. <laughs> Four two, Kevin. Okay. Taylor thinks that Kevin uh, Mor Moriarty is up four two on. Kevin McGrath? Which which Kevin? <laughs> okay. All right, guys. So I'm going to get a couple more people up here to help me out. Um,
John Fields moves on on the winner's uh, is it the winner's side? Uh, no, sorry, that was loser side. So John Fields is going to play Mark Cooklock in the 13th through 16th position. So like I said, Rob Matson and beat Jamie Pluta. Jamie moves down. To a fifth, sixth place position. He's gotta wait for quite a few matches here. I believe uh they're gonna call the next match on this table will be Danny Olson versus the winner of Jesse Engel and Rory Hendrickson, which I just changed this uh, shot too, and Rory just got the victory. So it looks like Rory versus Danny Olson. That'll be a great match. That will be the next one on the stream table. <clears throat> Get the names updated here. Good. Sorry, guys, I had to take a break, get a burger. That was uh, Taylor Hansen and Reeves Coster. Joined me for a while there. As Taylor uh, was mentioning, she's played in some women's WPBA events. Very strong player. Mr. Uh, Rory Hendrickson warming up here on the stream table. side match. Winner of this will take on Rob Matson.
Yes, I'm looking over here shooting the water now. Um, I have your numbers here. I'm not going to try to tell them what John Mayer was because I don't know what your numbers are and I don't know who you are. If you have a number, I'm fine. I'm going to give you money. You've got to give me something to work, but you've got to just come on in. Because I don't know who you are. I'm fine. Shoot the shit. I got some questions I was going to ask anyways. But you won't you won't be alive until I turn that knob over. And then kind of put that close to my mouth. You won't be live until I turn this. Yeah, I got the bracket up here. Yeah. You... Yeah. All right, I got uh, Rob Matson with me here. How's it going, Rob? Going well. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate the stream, man. Oh, no problem. It's like you're uh, you're in Fuego so far. Yeah, I uh, had a couple couple breaks and. Played decent, uh, made a few mistakes, but yeah, that uh, was quite the break right there by Rory. You keep making a ball on a break like that, this right? Be pretty simple. It's like a road map to be in a table run. Yeah, it's looking like probably three seven five four one two eight. So you're sitting uh, on the winner side, waiting for the winner of this, huh? Yes, sir. That was a big match, that last one, that uh, was yeah. in Calcutta was, as well. Okay. Yeah, top three. I was that, he, what was the score? Five to two. Five to two, okay. I think he should just draw this back and get above the seven. Yeah, three, for the right angle on the five? Yeah, three, seven, five, and it's kind of just it's all about getting the right angle. Here. Right. Kind of seems like he's got a little more angle than he likes yeah, to, to pull be, back for that seven. Might be a little steep, yeah. Kind of tough to... Oh, yeah, it is. Look at that. I got more camera angles here for you to help you out. That's pretty slick. Actually, this oh. is red. This is the reason a red circle cue ball. Yeah. It's really light, and you can manipulate yeah. it a lot. Like that pinch draw really... Oh, yeah. It really grabs. The ball just grabs. We got Tony right. Z here, too, man. I got Tony Z. I got you turned up now, Tony. All right, hey. Congratulations to Rob on his last match. Thank you. Uh, we're going to get to see a whole slow lot of Rory Hendrickson here. <laughs> it's not that bad. Come on. Well, you know, it, it, it's the key to his game is just being deliberate. He's got a little. Uh, making careless errors. Almost a little too yeah. much angle here, huh? Oh, he's up there. Yeah, just kind of. He comes inside. Well, he put a little inside there. And he think he's straight enough to do that? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. He was going to go, go across. He's all right. It's hard to see the angles up here. It, it is, yeah. I need like 20 more cameramen out there yeah. running around the table. I need them on zip lines and stuff. I'll, yeah. I'll uh, make an early prediction. I don't think you're going to see Rory be able to get out on an open table in this entire match. I really don't. Yeah. I think what you're going to see this whole time is anytime there's a wide open table, uh, Rory's going to get out. Uh, it's going to take balls tied up or it's going to take not taking a ball on the break or something along that line. So. He knows he has to play really well to beat Danny, and he probably will. This is one of the tables with a little newer felt as well, so the balls tend to yeah. tend to slide in on the break a little bit better. I was practicing on this one. Yeah. That second ball break was working pretty well. And if that's the case, that's really going to benefit Rory because he prefers that second he ball break. He likes that break. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I use it on the diamond tables, but I actually like breaking head ball in the valleys. Yeah, that's something I need to work on. Yeah, and I'm just the opposite. I like the head ball, hot break on the diamond. I'm surprised you're not playing, Tony. Uh, you know, I'm taking a little break. I'm not away. I'm not gone forever. I'm just gone long enough to, you know, my son, he's three years old now. And a couple more years he'll go to school, and I'll start sneaking into the pool hall while he's at school. You know, the, yeah, he's you know a pretty cute kid, man. Yeah, I know. Mine are 15 and 12 now. Yeah, I'm, i got a long road to hold. Where's life? So one nothing. Uh -huh. 
Oh, and if I Rory makes balls on the break and the balls are coming apart, it's me. You say the cloth's pretty fast. On this yeah, game. there's it's slick and they're spreading. I wasn't even hitting them hard. Yeah. And I was making balls. I think uh, Sean Mitchell and uh, uh, was his opponent. Uh, just the last match it was yeah. uh, um, John Fields. And I I think that I was told that John Fields ran two or three racks on this table right before in that match. I so, believe he did. Yeah. So uh, it tells me the balls are opening up pretty good. Or at least they did for John. A lot of movement. Wow. Nothing. A lot of movement. Live and die, right? That's that's the part I don't like. That's why I always head ball and smash them and yeah. try and stick the cue ball, but it's tough. But Danny just pretty much is constantly playing. Yes. Yeah, and uh, he's certainly good at it. So I see his re I see results for him all over the place. Uh, I don't get a lot of results other than social media, so that's where I, I see this stuff. But it seems like his name is a lot of parts of the country. Yeah, he travels and plays in some, I guess you would call, kind of pro events. Yeah, so. I was surprised he wasn't at the Turning Stone event that's going on. Right, yeah. yeah. Dem yeah. Demi's yeah. over there? I think so, yeah. So uh, what was the story with Shane? He missed, he couldn't get his flight, his flight got delayed. Something like that, yeah. That's got to be disappointing when you're a tournament favorite. I'd like to compliment Charlie on his pink shirt. Charlie, yeah. a real, real man's man to wear a pink shirt to a pool. Glad he left. <laughs> I love Charlie. Yeah, these are pretty wide open. He kind of got let off the hook, Danny. Uh, Nick Marsalek had him 4 2 stuck and a chance at the table. Wow. You guys seeing that the slate on this table isn't lined up with the side pockets there? Yeah. 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 I noticed that there. earlier. Yep. Uh, and it's a brand new. It's a new slate too. Well, you can just you just got to center when you put the rails back on. We, right. You can do it when it's together. Yep. We can still slide it. Yeah. Can you I, go out there and yank it and straighten it out? I'm gonna I wouldn't go do it during right. a match. Well, I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the the way that they have the shim set up, that those slates float a little bit in there and they around a little bit. Remember, uh, Rob, many decades ago doing those tables that John and I had. Those man, those slates would move around. We did thousands of our tables with. Yeah, that uh, that one no heat in that big old warehouse. Old warehouse yeah, yeah. yeah, we did like sixty four tables in a weekend. Yeah, wow, yeah, That's it, a lot. It was yeah. crazy. It was sick. We were sick afterwards because we didn't sleep. We just worked <laughs> the whole time. You know? Part of the gig, the, the luxurious life of a pool table mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> So both of these guys could be called deliberate. I would say Danny has probably got a little bit of a faster play um, than Rory, but when I, if I was going to try to describe the players, I would use that word in both of their deliberate. descriptions. Deliberate, yeah. Danny definitely. He's the same motion every time. He, yeah. he stands back, and then he steps into a shot every single time, which is... Which is a good thing for any amateur. Yeah, well, have he's a, he's probably more like a semi-pro. A pre-shot yeah. routine. Yeah, he plays a lot of pro events. I uh, when I was playing a, a lot of pool, or a lot for me anyway, um, I used to pay attention to a lot of the stuff like that, little things. And interesting tidbit about Rory: uh, he might have the dirtiest backhand in all of pool. Uh, every time you shake his hand and you reach out with that hand to shake your hand, all chalk. It's covered in chalk. <laughs> I mean purple like dark blue purple hand so i i just noticed like everything in it's just a savage with his chalking huh apparently <laughs> you know so but uh yeah there's guys have their routines or their, their pre-shot routines or executions but they stick to it must work both these guys win more than i ever did is there a way they oh they can chat down here yeah there is a chat room so anybody have any questions for uh, Rob Matson or Tony Z? Here's your chance. A shout out to my sister and my brother-in-law. I think they're watching right now. You can go on the chat. 
say what's up. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick's laughing at me. I still got an extension for you, man. Extension. He's a good guy. No matter where you're at or what match you're playing, the first time you play him, he plays the first rack for 100 against him. Doesn't matter who it is. What's Pat his, Patrick what, does? Patrick what's his does. name and address? <laughs> How do you... Patrick Hilton? Yep. Yep. First game. Every time. 100 bucks. What used to be... There used to be a lot of action. I love that stuff. There was a guy from... Was it Bismarck? Bismarck or not? Maybe up uh, northern North Dakota. Why not? Maybe who you? Um, the guy who used to just love to gamble. Um, Rob, Rob. Uh, oh gosh. Sayas? <laughs> no, no, no. He's an amateur player like us, but he was uh, just loved to gamble, and he was from North Dakota. Why not? It does sound. Yeah, a lot of guys love back in the day. They love. I remember that guy Jeez, would buy man. people that's, in Calcutta. That's the headball break that you need to do. Just stick, that stick the cue ball. Yeah, if you can do the headball break like that, definitely do that. <laughs> However, right. Chris does not gonna, many. Well, that's pretty, the one you need it's to do. pretty simple. Well, you know, those, you, if you're going to buy a lottery ticket, make sure you buy the winning <laughs> number. I mean, um, that's like an inch from the dead center of the table. Yeah, right that's there. pretty perfect. Well, with the slate moved over, it is kind of center. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, my sister. Thanks for the shout out. There you go. It's interesting, too, because they you know what? All these good players in this tournament, and there's a couple guys laying in the weeds here, too. So I see Dan Nierenhausen over there with his beers, sneaking from match to match. Very capable gambler. He could easily have finished in the money in this tournament. He's a pretty solid pool player. One pocket specialist. But What's his name? Dan Nierenhausen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Never heard he of him. He's sneaking around. Great guy, heck of a one popular. Rob Chad DeBruker says you don't sound the same. That's because I'm old, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I probably haven't seen you since I'm sure we were partying and drinking. It's been a while. Kind of brings me to the questions I was going to ask you. I even yeah. wrote them down. Sweet. Yeah. What do you got? So, you obviously played many, many years ago, a lot, right? Yeah. You played even in events like that Tony Z ran at the casino stops. Absolutely. I remember watching you back then. This is probably what in your twenties or low twenties? Yeah. yeah. So I would say mid twenties, mid to late twenties when I moved to the cities and played a lot of those okay. events. So you played at a high level back then. I mean, you did well in a lot of those events, right? Yeah. Um, so you took you took a long break, you kind, right? You almost, kind of took a, a good solid 11 years almost. Okay. Years off. So then you came back, and I don't know how recent that was that you kind of consider yourself coming back. So I started playing again in September two years ago. Okay. So personally, like your level of play, like compared to what you did, say, 11 years before that, do you feel like you've gotten better, the same? To be honest with you, I, I feel like I make more mistakes now, but, I mean, I'm doing it with a clear head. I've been sober for 12 years now, so kind of learning how to, how to do it all over again, I guess you could say. Yeah. But I honestly think it's probably better for my game because I stay even keel. Right. You know, and Before you had more ups and downs. Lots of ups and downs. And, but I'm, I'm learning to deal with nerves because I haven't really... Yeah, I mean, yeah. before I didn't really didn't feel nervous. I mean, yeah. you know, have another drink, right? So you're probably you were very confident with everything you did before, right? Now right. you're more probably de more deliberate now with all your positions right. and everything. I'm just, you know, just a better person all the way around. Yeah. Well, congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah, it was it was a long time coming. You know, it was fun while it lasted. Yeah, we all grow up eventually, right? Yeah, it just took me a little longer than some others. So then the other part is uh, I wanted to ask, so say back when you played that strong, um, like the level of play now just in general, like all the pool playing community in your area, the metro yeah. and everything, do you think that's changed at all? Like it, has it gotten better? Or? It's definitely better. Okay. Yeah, everybody runs out now. I mean, there's, 
Yeah. It's Back definitely. in the day, they didn't quite get out on you, you as could, much. You could kind of pick pick a handful of guys that are gonna win most events, but now there's there's a lot more that can do it, and yeah. they keep coming up. I mean, there's some kids right yeah. now that are 12, 13, 15 years old. Yeah. Running racks. So you think they're just uh, they're just practicing a lot more than yeah. people used to back in the day? Yeah. So I missed uh, out there. What? Uh, who's Thank that? Who's that two? Dan. I got my mom on. Danny's that two? too. See, yeah, yeah. I got See, it. and I kind of feel differently than Rob. Um, I think that the it's more challenging to beat more of the field. I agree with that, but I think the formats have changed a little bit. Probably a lot more handicapping the, the involved. Conditions yeah. have changed a little bit, but I remember when interesting the timing lines up when Rob was the most dominant bar table eight ball player in Minnesota. I remember those tournaments that he was winning being more tough to win because the guys that were the top, say, twenty five percent of the field, were running out. They weren't just winning game by game; they were running packages, and they were they were. It was. When you, when you missed a ball, a lot of times it didn't cost you one game. It cost you two or three. And um, I remember, you know, having some soft matches, which, you know, so that part I think has changed. Yeah. There's, there's less of those. But when you got to the tougher players, you really had to step up your pool game, I felt like, you know. So, um, but, uh, yeah. I. But, yeah, back then there was only probably, what, two divisions? Now there's... Five or six yeah. different handicap situations going on. Open and Masters, and some of the tournaments were still winter breaks, and now there are more multiple divisions. There's handicaps by rating, there, you know, and there's, you know, I mean, it's alternate the breaks, and yeah, it's, you know, I agree with that. Yeah. So, I, I personally think that Rob, when Rob was dominant, was the toughest time to be dominant. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, so, that's yeah. a good compliment. Yeah, yeah I appreciate that. Yeah. And you were a front row seat to that, right? Oh, yeah. In your casino stops? Uh, so, and not just at the casino stops. I can't tell you how many nights I wanted to go home. Sunday nights I wanted to yeah. go home and could sit, had to sit there and wait because we rode in the same car. <laughs> you know, so Rob was kind of brutal to have travel with. He, he went more often than me, so I was the one that had to watch him win. <laughs> so, but, you know, I'm not the only one that had to go through that. <laughs> Those casino stops were kind of the, those were the things to do back then, right, for Man. top players? Yeah, yeah, there was two, three a week, uh, month. Yeah. Yeah. And you're talking like five state area top players and Canada, right? I know one year, just my tournaments alone, I had uh, my most proud year, I had 95000 in added money. Yeah, that's pretty good. Year. That's solid. And there was still other guys doing it. There was, you know, a, a couple guys out of Wisconsin that were doing tournaments, and there was a, another guy in Minnesota that did a couple. There was really, I mean, we had it pretty good one. The early 2000s was a pretty good time to be a bar table player. Yeah, I had no kids and go to every pool yeah. tournament. Yeah, I got a three-year-old now, and I don't have the energy to go play in the Monday night tournament at Shooters. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I was kind of surprised he did that. Didn't he have an, a decent you know, angle on that nine to kind of straighten it into the eight? I honestly thought the ball before he was going yeah, to go, go under it. Go under the nine and hit, run into rails those. And bump it out, make it. And then, I mean, he had an insurance ball down there. Yeah. He shoots so well, I figured for sure. Oh, I thought it was a given too. And or maybe that's why we're up here, right? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> the I think camera it, angle's different. It I think is. You guys are on the right track, actually. I, I Maybe he, for whatever reason, he wasn't comfortable. He didn't want to. Sometimes guys, when they play eight ball, they really don't want to risk boiling everything down to one shot. Yeah. And you have to try to remember that this is a run-out table, playing a run-out game. Some guys forget that, and they think they can slow things down. The problem is, I always assume that everything I know my opponent knows, everything I can do, my opponent can too. So if I play a safety and I know there's a solution there, I would just choose not to play the safety and try to run out. Sure. Yeah. So I mean, Rory's got a chance to get out here, you know? Yeah. Everything goes. He's he got does. the five ball to start. He's just got to get an yeah. angle to try to bust the one out. The three is a great ball to bust that out, right? The three and the five are really good lead-ins to get yeah. in to go into that three ball. Yeah. You might have to start with the five here, though. Right. But Chad DeBrooker, he's on the stream here a little bit. Uh, you probably could have made a phone call and played him if he had. Yeah, should have came over, Chad. They don't let you. Yeah, they wouldn't kick him out. 
Chad's got some of the same thing that some of the rest of the guys have got going on. He's got a family and Busy business. And, yep. Yeah. Sometimes I don't know which one wears me out more, the, the kids or the business. Working or yeah. the kids, yeah. Owning your own business. When uh, John Fields was on the stream table earlier, I threw the question out to the minute, or the Wisconsin people, what, who are the top Wisconsin players, you know? Yeah. And some of them responded, and you guys probably have different names, too, if just from back in the day. Well, they're definitely different now than they were then. Right. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. You guys so, would probably list off some older guys, like yeah, maybe Randy yeah. Lamar. and Rondo Bozinski. Lamar, and Lamar, Lamar and Kaufman. And Dean Albright lived in Chippewa Falls at that time. Now he lives here in the city. But uh, no, now they have uh, a whole different group. Did they, did they send you a list? Uh. One guy did, uh, probably back in the chat here a ways. Uh, I can't, I can't scroll back far enough. So I, uh, and, and you'll have to forgive me. I've been away from school for a while. Uh, I went to Vegas last year during the BNA, and I got to watch some of that tournament. Watch, watch Rob's team win, and they, they actually played a group of my friends from Chicago at some point in there. So that was pretty cool. I had two groups of friends that played each other, but there was a team from Wisconsin there, and there was, a, I think there was a guy named Kurt, Kurt or Kirk Elliott. That was on one of those teams, and he, uh, he, his name comes up a lot. I think that's the name. Um, Jeff Potts uh, knows yeah. him pretty well, and uh, um, he's a he's a, he's apparently a very good bar table eight ball player. He would fit in eight ball and nine ball pretty well with this tournament. I, think. I was just looking up Chad DeBrucker's uh, Fargo rates at six eighty two. Yeah, that's he's saying that. Yeah. So well, that means that it, if I ever start playing pool again, me and Chad get to play even. Because that's about where I'm at. Like six, seven, You're six, Sam Bacon, too. No, I don't think so. I don't think John so. Fields was, <laughs> I think John Fields was just over 700. It was like 700. Oh, there's a sandbagger right there. That, yeah. kid, that kid's always been. He always played good. Yeah. yeah. People said he's probably in the top five of Wisconsin right now. I John Fields. I completely agree with that. Well, that, that did not go Rory's way. No. Nope. Uh, he's gonna pick one out. Yeah. It's... There goes Rory's fiance walking by. Oh, she's a nice girl. Yeah, I like her a lot, Lindy. She won't pick a date. But... Well, if Rory happens to win this match and gets to play for the Winter Sadness tournament, I'm gonna take some of the credit for selling him my nine foot diamond pool there you table. Go. You're welcome, Rory. I give you all my juju. So he uh, he bought that table for me last summer. And uh, I hadn't played on it in two years. I had to actually roll balls on it to make sure the rails weren't hard or anything. You know, and still played just fine. But two I, years, huh? Yeah, it, it sat for two years without me hitting the ball. Are you in the same house time. still? Yeah, I live in Shakopee, same house. My parents owned that house before I did, so I bought that house, and I've been working on it. You've been uh, running the Bobcats there lately? <laughs> no, and we don't need to tell that story. <laughs> that was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. All right, you go ahead and tell it. I don't, Man, know. I don't know what <laughs> kind of landscaping we were doing, but me and Richie Cunningham were helping helping Tony with some landscaping and uh, he took a scoop of dirt and uh, proceeded to lift it up and tip it back and he dumped the entire scoop of dirt all over the top of his head. <laughs> so the, the back story was that we were lands, we brought in uh, 15 truckloads of dirt and rock to re-landscape the yard at my parents' house, which is now my house. And uh, um, there was a, a pipe for the septic system that I had to steer around and then there was a tree with a branch <laughs> that I had to had to lift the buckets up part way and then go through this little opening with the bucket to get through. And, and uh, you're not a professional. Uh, um, well, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, uh, my brother's better than I am. <laughs> but uh, so I was in there because I had some experience. But yeah, I, I, I don't remember what my excuse was. But yeah, I dumped the bucket. Of yeah, it was, pre- it was pretty good. Tom, it's yeah. one of those things you'll never forget. Yeah. Should have had it on, uh, oh, on film. Then yeah, you it was wear embarrassing. Them. I'll tell you that. Win the America's Funniest Home Videos. It's not. So, the only time I embarrass myself. It's one of them. So Brian asked if I remember the Chapter 2 team from lacrosse. Who was on that team? The name doesn't ring a bell, but I'm sure I remember the players. Chapter 2 team? What does the Chapter 2 mean? I'm not sure. Is that the team name? Or? I'm sure it was a bar name? called Chapter 2 or oh. something like that. You know, the funny thing is you could give it any name. If you name the players, that's what probably it would. You know. All I know is I had a lot of fun with our Lamar and couple of those guys back in the day. Oh, yeah. Man, did we party. Oh, yeah. 
Were you, right were you originally from Wisconsin? I grew up in Grand Fork, North Dakota. Oh, okay. You know, I just told a story over there to Dan. Dan Urenhausen and I were chatting, and someone brought up Vegas, and I told the story about the year after the flood when you lost everything. You lost all your cues and everything. <laughs> yeah. And, and I said, uh, I was telling them about the challenge table they used to have at the v right out in the middle of the playing area, and guys would play 10 and 20 a game. Yeah, with bleachers around it. Yeah, and, yeah. and uh, it, w- it would winter stay on all night long. And that would go on, and there'd be all these great players, Alex Paglian and Corey Duell. And and the, the one year I walked up there to see how that table was going, already the, all the top players were over there, and Rob was just destroying everyone. And Alex Paglian threw a fit because he quit. Rob was <laughs> Rob kept running out on him, and Rob was playing with a sneaky PQ that had a cracked butt cap, so he duct taped the butt cap to hold oh it Oh, my God. So he was beating him with a sneaky Pete with a duct tape butt cap, right? And Pe- and Alex come over and asked him, what the hell? What's with this Q? And what he didn't know is Rob lost everything in the flood that the, in Grand Forks. He lost his cues. He lost everything in the flood, so he was really dialed in with that Q. That was the Q he played with, but it looked like Rob was trying to hustle people or something right. like that you know i didn't have like a case that. for it i just threw it in my bag should have had a duct tape case too this, man whoa you know and i spoke too soon that's a surprising I, I put, there i put these guys on a pedestal and look what happens commentators curse i do me. the same thing dating by the way folks <laughs> put them on a pedestal and they disappoint that's what everyone does it's all right yeah well the so it, yeah there's there's a lot of different um types of of fun that happened out there uh, in Vegas, and that was that was one that I oh, still weapon. So they're saying who the top five are Sergio, currently: Sergio yeah. Rivas, Dave Coles, Tyler Steyer. All those names make sense. I don't yeah. really know about Billy Lassie and John Fields. I don't. I guess I don't know. Well, John's uh, Fargo rate's like seven oh nine, so that would definitely put him up, up there. there. Yeah. Yeah. So That's a good shot. That was a great shot. Yes, sir. Yeah, I know some of those names. I'm pretty bad with names, Brian, but uh, a couple of those names definitely ring a bell. Oh, yeah. He's giving you the names yeah, for that. Of that team. What was the, them. what was, could somebody comment and tell me, am I right about that name? Is it Kurt Elliott or Kurt Elliott? That sounds like a race car driver. Right? Um, yeah, it is a race car driver, but it's also a heck of an eight <laughs> a cool player, player right? too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so his name came up on Facebook a few times, and then when I was out there, I got to watch him play a match in in, the, in one of the tournaments, and that guy can run out. He's pretty good. So, so, so Rob, I tried to get uh, Jerry Johnson down here to do some commentating, but said the weather wasn't good enough for him to fly down here. You're right. Yeah, hop in his plane. Hate to drive down. the whole one hour down here. He's got to fly his freaking plane. Yeah. That he's got some parties tonight at CRs to do. So uh, my my nephew just got finished his uh, fifteen hundred hours, so he's able to apply to the airlines as a pilot. He got hired on to Delta, so he's gonna he's in his twenties and he's gonna be a pilot for Delta. He's got to go through three months of the certifications that you get with the airline in order to, for them to put you. I'm really frustrated with Delta right now. Uh, I've been frustrated with Delta for many, many years. There, I personally think they're a terrible, air, terrible airline. But clearly, they've turned themselves around and making good judgment calls now. Hiring my nephew, <laughs> but uh, it's it's kind of fun to hear the stories about some of the stuff. It is Kurt Elliott. Kurt yeah, Elliott. Okay. Together, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he that guy can play. He's a player. That one. So, I'm gonna step away, boys. I got to get a bite to eat. Okay. But, Feel uh, free to come back I'll if jump you want. Back in. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate we'll tell some it. more Rob stories while he's gone. Your next, uh, I'll get it. Your next right. match, I think, will be on the stream table. So okay, sounds good. After that, stop in. All right, thanks, guys. And so I, I had a pretty good time out there. Uh, <clears throat> that was one of the first times I'd ever gone to Vegas and just been able to just relax and watch people play and have drinks and have these social. Last stuff. last year. And you get to see kind of an it's kind of interesting how much you get to see in that little tournament area that BNEA sets up the matches and stuff. And uh, the team pool was particularly good last year. It was interesting. Yeah. Was there eight eight teams in the Masters? 
Yeah, it was a, it was a small division, but they did triple elimination, right. which I don't care for. They've been and doing that for a while, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, they used to do it when they when they went to um, when they added that advanced, so that they had what do they have three or four divisions? Like now. an intermediate. They have like intermediate. eleven divisions for the men now. It's ridiculous. But anyway, um, they could add more. I think it'd be better. Holy God. <laughs> So uh, I really don't care for the whole idea of triple elimination, but it was interesting because Rob and Jamie's team lost the first two matches they played and then went through the tournament yep. you know, from there. And, and I really didn't think much of being able to do that and win, but what I did find interesting was the level of play in the last like four matches. It got really good. Yeah, it got pretty high. You could see there were some players that were playing in those in that event that were a little bit struggling. They looked like they were struggling, but the reality is, you get five guys together, you're always going to have one guy that's struggling. You know? Yeah. And uh, so, but but there was an awful lot of runouts in those matches. It was it was fun yeah, to watch. I don't remember who they ended up playing in the championship. Probably uh, uh, was it a Colorado team or no? It, I, that sounds right. Yeah. That sounds right. But uh, to be honest with you, um. I th- it was a little bit earlier a match was the best one for me to watch, and that's because it was uh, Illinois guys. It was uh, Dan Taylor and Dan Hayes and Pat McMullen and uh, Kenny Brisbane and, and okay. that group of guys. And, Heard uh, of Kenny before. Yeah, that, so they, they played them, and they handed them their butts pretty good there. And uh, um, Yeah, it was fun to watch. So, but, yeah. That, that, uh, that environment, that tournament, it can be pretty tough. Yeah. yeah. You know, when I watch uh, some of the streams on Facebook of the APA Nationals, like yeah. that seems crazy. Yeah. Like, is that one of the biggest, is it, that the biggest tournament the biggest. they have out there? It is. So the APA is the largest national pool association in the United States. They have a great setup for they like have, their stream and everything. It looks, I mean, yeah. it's Well, they have a lot of money. Notch. So it's a, it's an entrepreneurial league organization. The league operators buy franchises. So if you have an APA league, you own that franchise for that area. So that's the first thing. So there's and there's money that processes from the bottom level all the way up to that level. So they're able to finance a lot of improvements in national stuff um, because the money goes upwards, you know. And it and actually, um, you know, I don't know who the who the uh, we'll call them officers or the executives with the APA are anymore. But I think Renee Pullman at one time was the the president or CEO and. And I think she did a lot of good stuff for that APA. And then there was, you know, so there's there's been a series of people that have come along and they've really created a, yeah. a, a good atmosphere, actually a better atmosphere for pool players than the league, the associations like the VNA and BCA who clearly have a higher playing skill level. Yeah, uh, the APA is obviously more geared towards it, social play. Some of the, yeah, that's yeah. what it seemed like what yeah. I watched. I see, like, uh, I think I saw Jimmy's has uh, got an APA league. Is there other other places in the sure, cities that have it? Yeah, absolutely. They've got two franchise owners, I believe, in the Twin Cities. They've got a northern and a southern. And I think the southern guy is a little newer to the area poor, at least he was when I was playing. But he's worked really hard to build up his league, so he's got some teams. And then that north side, um, you know, there's been a few franchise owners on the north side. I, I don't know who the current one is now, but at one time it was the Blansky that had that. Okay. But, um, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, to be honest with you, um, no, don't get me wrong. There's a few guys that have won. You know, Jeff Sargent was notorious for winning the top division of the APA men's yeah. singles, um, and he's an unbelievable, great eight ball player from the Chicago area. I mean, you know, there is an exception to what I'm saying. But uh, yeah, if you were to watch the finals of every division, you'd probably be a little bit surprised at. Yeah. Um, but it's good because you go through that experience and it makes you want to graduate, I think. You get an opportunity to play in front of hundreds of people for thousands of dollars. So, oh. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, if you heard what I had to say earlier yeah, about this match, you can clearly see that I don't know what I'm talking about. Stand corrected. <laughs> yeah. So. Wasn't a gimme, but he's definitely going to, you figure he's going to make that. I, uh, what I, what I thought I would see here is I thought I would see Rory very clean and um, give himself the best chance he, he can to uh, beat Rur, to, to beat Danny. But he, he doesn't happen to kick any more balls to lose this match. Really. So I got a question for you from uh, Jeff Maurer. Yes. Texted me. He I said, uh, 
Um, what do you think is the best team as far as like Vegas team out there? Masters, I'm assuming the where does last year's team rank with the best team that you think that ever went out there and played uh, over your? I don't know if that's a trap question or not, but I'll <laughs> I'll fall in because the truth is I believe that my RIP team is the best team that ever went there. Uh, Ty Wilson would probably tell you he thinks his team was the best one that ever went out there. Who uh, was Dan Tarango and Edwin Montel would probably tell you the machine was the best team that ever went out there. There was a, the four house team that was from Chicago that had uh, John Abruzzo and Randy Lamar and those guys on it. Claudio Peroni, when I, I love that guy, he's awesome. So your answer is your team. I who was I who was on that team? It was uh, Scott Tollefson, um, Jamie Pluta, Derek McMasters, me, and uh, um, how, how many and years Ron, did you win Ron that? Matson. And we won two years in a row, and then we didn't play together a third year. And did you ever uh, play BCA? Yes, we played BCA. Um, we had a, a player go down out of commission on the first time we played there. The second time we played there, we got, I want to say third place, but we won the VNA both years we played in it, and we won pretty much every state championship that we played in. I think we lost one in Wisconsin one time. Hmm. So, and, uh, and if you, people knew how much drinking went on on that team, <laughs> they would really be impressed. Uh, I never saw a team that had the better end of playing us that whole time, and that was back when pool was a pretty tough sport. But there's some other great teams. Uh, Ty Wilson had Ty, um, Gene Albright, uh, Rob, Derek, you know, that group of guys. And they were they won, went out there and won, and they were awfully tough. Um, but, you know, some of the some of the things that people don't talk about when it comes to team pool is – you know, you can have a group of guys that play really great team pool together, but it, it doesn't tend to last. So it's hard to keep that group of guys together for a long period of time. Yep. Um, so sometimes you never know. I mean, I saw I saw pool teams go out there that were definitely on the lower skill level, but finished in the money all the time because they just had good chemistry. They just had a rhythm that they played together. Oh, yeah. That's a big part of it. Yeah. So... Our, our particular driver for our team, for our IP, was that nobody wanted to be the low man. Yeah. Nobody wanted to be the guy that blew it for the team, and nobody wanted to get the lowest score, and we talked about it actively, so it was there was some... A little bit of pressure. Yeah, there was pressure when we played. Even when we were winning, we still felt pressure to execute. So, but we had guys at that time that were dominating pool. Derek McMasters was one of the best players in the state. Rob was clearly the best eight-ball player in the state at that time. Jamie Pluto was just a few years off of the Camel Pro Tour. Well, and was that back when Scott was? Scott had, was, was just one of the, rearing his head as he could one be. of the best amateurs. Yeah, he. he uh, funny story about Scott is he, he, his big struggle was that he he had, he would openly talk about how he really had to get his nerves under control uh, because he wanted to do more gambling, and so that was a big issue for him. And, and uh, the wind up on it was he moved. Uh, I believe it was to Colorado was the first place he moved from the Twin Cities, and he blossomed when he left the Twin Cities. He, you know, I know he lived in Colorado. I know he lived in uh, in uh, Washington area. I know he lived in Texas. I know he's he's been a lot of places, and um, he blossomed from leaving the Twin Cities. That's really where he exploded. Yeah. I mean, he already was one of the better players in the right. state on a ball table, but when he left the Twin Cities, his game. Really started going on. Look at that break! Oh, wow. So, Hit him good, but that's still a that's a tough table. <laughs> there's so yeah. I mean, uh, there's there's some trouble balls down here on the end rail where the five and the nine are. Um, he's gonna have to make a decision on how aggressive he wants to be here. Right. I'll be honest with you. I'm not. I mean, I would like to say, well, he's gonna play safe here. He played safe in that situation earlier in the match. Looking at that side there, that yeah. does not look doable. But yeah. personally, I would, I would, uh, I take a flyer here. I would shoot this ball up in the corner. This what is that eleven ball? See what happens. I'd change my angle. I'd stop the cue ball right there. This isn't where I would take my flyer. I'd stop the right. cue ball there. Yeah. And I would shoot that. I want to say it's the ten ball. Yeah. He's ball. gonna go for that combo. Okay. Fourteen nine, but he kind of got. I don't know. I don't agree with this at all. Yeah. So I would have liked to shoot that on the Stop. side and shoot that, uh, we'll call it the 10 ball that's yeah, over on top of the 8 ball, and shoot that ball in the corner, and I would have tried to, I would have liked to go and 
go down into the, the between the six and the nine with the cue yeah ball, come up and try to pop that 15 out if, if i did that then i would have finished trying to run out and it might have came off the right side of that 15 where it clips the 14 exactly. a little you bit go into the six and push it out you can go to yeah. the, you know you can miss the six go into the bottom rail and out and pop that 15 out i agree well, yeah this must be makeable huh uh, uh, it looks uh, very tight he's playing it off the six or he's playing Seven. safe oh yeah he's playing safe i uh, came out it. Oh, he gave it to him, I think. Nah, From that right. name. Oh, no. But see that see that camera angle there? It almost looks... Uh, I like no, it's, co angle. it's covered. Yeah, what I... what I mean, I... He did pretty good there. I don't feel like he did anything to improve the situation. Right. You can roll into the 5 and put the cue ball in the back of that 14 what, ball. Once he didn't get the shape he wanted on that 14, he kind of was punting from there. Yeah, you know what, Jason Blanski, I'm going to tell you right now that Rob, hey, hey, you know, and I, I obviously I'm a Rob fan. He's a, been a good friend of mine for a lot of years, and I've always been a fan of his cool game and his, his ability to win. I would say that from 1998 to 2010, Rob was the most dominant DNEA eight ball player, period. I don't think there was anybody that won more than Rob in that singles and team and everything combined. He was, um, you know, there was only a couple guys that won at the rate that he did. Um, Stan Tarango is, is somebody that won at a pretty pretty rapid rate, but that was started a little earlier than Rob. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. He, he won so many. He's got so many team and singles titles uh, in both the BNA and BCA. He's, you know, yeah, we're going to be saying his name for a long time. Tony, I would say there's at least seven matches or more to go yet. Six, maybe seven or eight, maybe. I don't know. I think you got plenty of time to head down. So we got uh, what's, uh, some other matches going on here. It's uh, Kevin McGrath. Who's Kevin playing? Kevin is. Uh, is he playing Aaron Dudas, or is that who Khan is? Kevin McGrath, yeah, he's playing Aaron Dudas. Okay, so Somebody's up 4-1. Yeah. Uh, or no, not 4-1, sorry, just 1-0. So, you know, here's, here's a good example of what I was talking about. He, uh -huh. I mean, Danny just had to shoot that shot to get back at the table. This is the situation he's in, and this all started with that safety. I really, I liked my path better. I felt like that was that was a better way to go. But, you know, easy to fix here. Yeah, I think if he would have executed the way he wanted, he probably still had an opportunity, but it's all in all comfortable here. Yeah. I wouldn't, uh, if this goes to 3-3, three, three, I wouldn't want to bet a lot of money on either one of them. It's hard to tell. Yeah, right. Rory hasn't made balls on the break so far, so that's hurt him a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that's one thing I didn't do is put up their Fargo rate. I can tell you that um, Kevin McGrath is in a, a beginning of a match over there, one to nothing, and he's taking a couple balls awfully seriously. So he's he did, uh, got an object ball left on the table in the eight ball. Uh, his opponent has four object balls on the table. Hundred percent of that one, so we'll see how that turns out. John Fields is over playing Mark uh, Kukla from the St. Cloud area, cool. and uh, the score is two to one there. Um, so that's uh, that's where that situation is. Kevin Moriarty is over playing him on a table, but I don't know. Is that in the bracket? No, they're done. They're, they're just, they're just messing around. around. Yeah, okay. he's out of the tournament. I will say this. I'm looking at the bracket right now. And, you know, Taylor Brown, central player. Don't count Junior out. Uh, I would say the winner of, let's go back down to that bottom of that bracket. Yeah. I, I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, the winner of Mario, Jesse Engel, and 
John Fields are um, a good chance to get out the bottom side of the loser's bracket. And then uh, I, I really kind of, I'm going to go ahead and call uh, Michael Perrin Jr. a loser's bracket dark horse over there. I know it's, calling him a dark horse is ridiculous, but obviously he's having a tough turn when he's on the loser's bracket. Um, there, this still, we could wind up, it seems like every year there's always one, you know, the final four players is always three guys that you knew were going to be there and one surprise. And uh, we'll see who that surprise is. players that clearly understand how important this game is. <laughs> right. Uh, Danny has a look on his face like he's really disappointed with uh, what happened there. But he just looks like he's got some pretty good concentration. And Rory is uh, swinging for the fence here. He might have turned out absolutely perfect. Wow, yeah. what a shot. <laughs> got a roll there. Uh, you know, luck is a dividend of skill. Rory is definitely uh, a guy that knows exactly where to do what and when, and that was excellent. I added their Fargo rates, as you can see, they're fairly close. Danny's a 738, Rory's 725. Which is considered pro level. I would be concerned if I'm Danny and Rory just pulled off that little magic there. And... Whoa, 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 Danny, whoa, whoa. All right. That's interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't want a confident Rory breaking the ball. So if he breaks and makes the ball, you're just going to assume he's going to get out after a shot like that. So, uh, do we know who bought who in the Calcutta? I see that you have a Calcutta sheet here. Do we know who bought? I wrote some of the names on there. Okay. Um, so, I have to compliment Ross Crumpitch on his purchase of Rob Manson. I would have probably flinched at a thousand, but Ross has got money to burn. So. <laughs> and uh, Rory's, you know, Rory going for a thousand is no surprise. He's a bar table warrior, eight ball warrior. You know. Jesse Engel, went for 1200. That's expected. Danny Olson went for 1200. That's expected. Eddie, is this you, Eddie? Okay. You ready to come in? Oh, boy. Well, scale of scale of one to ten, where are you at? Uh, right ten. <laughs> I don't see anything, but I want to listen. Okay. You can listen. I don't have you turned up yet. You can hear us. Charlie Arntz is in the booth. He doesn't want to talk, though. Did I turn his mic up? What do you think, guys? DJ Steinhaus uh, was uh, uh, went for twelve hundred. He went two and out. That has to be painful. Thanks for the drink, Eddie. Um, if I was uh, nice Dustin chat. Burke and I bought TJ Steinhaus, I'd be at the bar right now, which is probably the case either way. Oh, I'm sure he is over there. <laughs> if Dustin likes his have his good time. Oh, uh, we got about 198 watching. <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn Charlie up. Brace yourselves. On a trial basis. He's had a few bowls of loudmouth soup. Hey, Blower, what's up, my guy? <laughs> so, but I will promise you guys I will not say anything about the rack because I'm not going to tell a master shooter how he should run the racks. 
So <laughs> I won't say, oh, he should stop this ball and play the next ball, but we can have fun saying whatever we want. So Kevin McGrath is one to one over there, which means that uh, obviously yeah, Aaron won the first game because Kevin got out the second game. And he's at the table again with an opportunity to run out. Aaron hasn't been to the table yet. He's got some balls that are they're all in the open, but they're a small challenge. But he could potentially pick up two more. We'll see how that turns out. Uh, John Fields has been at the table an awful lot in his match over there with Mark. He's up three to one. And he's wearing headphones. He's I'm, not supposed to. I'm going to say that. Is that against the rules? Yep. Serious? It is. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and well, say who's that. The, who's the bouncer here then? Mark, I go get him. Don't know. Yeah, Mark is in trouble over there. He's, you know, uh, Looks John. like he's meditating over there. Troy. Troy says no mic for Charlie. Uh oh. Troy I won't be here all night. I like the party. Troy is a wise man. Troy was too scared to come here. He let his wife and daughter come here to show out for him. Okay. <laughs> So, you know, and I, I, I'm coming here, and I, I think that this Legion, the space for the tournament is, is actually it's better. Yeah, I think it is. KC. Yep. But I, I get a little nostalgic when I come down here, whether I'm playing or not playing, and I had a, some flashbacks of memory of Seiko's wife, June, making breakfast for everyone, the fried potatoes and stuff, back when her and the girls used to run the kitchen at the KC Hall. Um, you know, this is a good tournament, and the money is even better now than it's ever been between the Calcutta and the increased entry fee. Uh, if you're a pool player and you live within five hours of here and you're not here, you're a fool. But uh, um, yeah, I sure do. I sure do miss those days. So there's some there's some nostalgic reasons why I, I miss the the KC Hall. But it's nice to have more space for the tables and more tables. I feel like the tournament runs more efficiently in this space than it did at the KC. So I would agree. Yeah, it's nice that Seiko's still here. Yeah. Um, you know, I hope I, I hope I'm Seiko when I'm his age. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's a better venue for sure. It's yeah, a lot more room. You know the nostalgia of the other place, but yeah. I don't know why the Calcutta is better now. Well, I mean, maybe it's the guy that's running it. I don't know. Probably not. It's probably more people are bored. Uh, they're uh, they're looking for something to do, and they got a little of that stimulus money to burn in a hole in their pocket. I thought Johnny Myers just came in with uh, his wife Nancy, uh, all smiles. They must have been uh, went got some dinner or something. But uh, if you don't know who Johnny Myers is, he's uh, been for decades. He's been one of the better uh, pool players in the state of Minnesota. He's won this tournament a couple times. Been a second place finisher a few times too. He's, he's been up there quite a bit. I don't want to interrupt you, Z, but Troy Hansen said time for some seven four twenty one or whatever it is. Get on down here, brother. We can do it. So Tony, here's uh, some pictures I put up earlier today of the, yeah. the the plaques that are up over there, champions plaques. Kind of gives an idea of the viewers. You know, and uh, uh, you know. I'm not trying to single you out, Troy, but, uh, you know, I see Troy Liebel on there in 2020. To me, I was here when he was playing that. That's a heck of an accomplishment. Cause this was the final part of that tournament. Uh, was it's real heck, tough. Heck of a tough tournament. That's That name jumps out at me right away. And when you look at those four names on the far right side, and you see Jason Klatt, Jesse Engel, Troy Liebel, and Jesse Engel, Damn. one of these kids is doing his own thing. I mean, you're talking about, <laughs> you know, three guys that are – or two two guys that are professional pool players in Troy Lee, he should be proud of that one. That's a it's not an easy one to get. And if you go backwards even farther, you really got to go all the way back to to uh, 2015 when Johnny won the eight ball to find somebody that's that isn't bulletproof. I mean, yeah. If, after Johnny wins it in 2015, it goes Demi Gelatis, Jesse Engel, Jesse Bowman, Dimitri, Demi Gelatis, Jesse Engel, T.J. Steinhaus. I mean, that's. What, what about 2007? I mean, I don't know how good that Brian Brecky plays, but. <laughs> yeah, I would say that uh, um, this tournament, winning this tournament, has got, the winners have gotten awfully tough. Okay, so that's. That's a great break. There's the break that I was talking about yep. from the beginning. That second ball break, making a ball on the break. If he can pop those balls and make a ball on the break like that, Danny's in trouble. 
So and he, that's the first time. And I believe he switched sides. Great break. Am I wrong? I'm not sure what side he was on uh, before. I feel like he broke from he broke from this side of the table, our side, which is the, the coin mech side of the table. He broke from the right side of the table, and I feel like I, I missed where he broke from. I was watching the balls, but did he move to the left side? He was on the left side there. Yeah, I feel like he switched sides of the tables, and he got better result from the other side of the table, so maybe that was what it took. Going back to Troy Liebel winning it that year, he played Taylor Bronton in the championship, yeah, which is my teammate. Good player. Uh, not a favorite to win it, but he did beat guys like Gene, Rory. I mean... I remember the final six players being particularly tough. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, and Taylor is clearly showing us he's, he's going to be a guy in the future. You know, he's, yeah. I mean, he's obviously competitive now. He's got potential. Yeah. He's definitely playing a lot. Yeah, he, he's got a nice diamond in his, in his basement. He's my, he's my teammate down in Rochester, obviously. Well, we're not gonna we're not gonna hold that no, against him. Don't, I think he, you can, better he, not. Can, he can achieve great things right. in spite of being your teammate. I think. <laughs> yeah. that's, he. Uh, that's I don't not, know. Believe it or not, <laughs> though, he's not a good league player. He when he's playing lower competition, he, he slacks. He don't. Yeah, you know, don't we all? Yeah. That's a lot yeah. of people's story. Oh, well, he had a he had a rough go at it today. Oh, no. I think. No, I think Taylor's still in it, ain't he? All right, so is he still in it? Rory's trying to. Yeah, he's right there. Oh, yeah, there you go. I think he yeah, my bad. Be about ninth uh, place, ninth, ninth through twelfth spot. I, don't I like who he's got to play against balls. to get the money. So I, I'm going to go ahead and say that he's going to be fine. He's going to be able to recover here. But yeah, I think he's all right. Yep. He lost his cue ball there. But plain and simple, he lost his cue ball there, and he's probably not happy about it. So he, now he's going to have to shoot that ball in the corner, the two or four. That, I can't see what that is. Oh. But, uh, the one that's underneath. He'll shoot that in the corner and he'll two come ball. out and he'll try to land in the window between the 8 and 14 so that he can play the 6 3 combo and then he'll get it back in line from there. But, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and guess he doesn't want to do too much more of that. Rob mentioned that this table plays a little bit slick and there's a good example of maybe that it is easy to lose the key ball on this one. Yeah, this is one that was refelted. Uh, Rob is wise beyond his years. Got a lot of pool knowledge. Um, he's got a lot more pool knowledge than hair. <laughs> <laughs> There's Robbie Matson right there. Yep. Waiting. Just waiting for the winner. Wish I would have bought him in the Calcutta, but you can say that about every everybody. Yep. So when John they get for twelve hundred. John Fields had uh, missed a ball to go up 4-1 to one against Mark Kuklak. And now Mark has uh, got his his final shot on the eight ball to make it 3-2 to two in his break. So John had a big close up, you know, big, big chance to get on the hill and really put him in a bad spot. Now it's 3-2 to two in Mark's break over there. Um, and uh, Kevin appears to be in slow but complete control of his match. He's up 3-1. to one and, he really hasn't you know, faced anything too challenging over there. So, so uh, Mickey Rowland just texted me. He pushed out and didn't want to play. So he told me to quit talking about myself, but I'm calling him out on because he's obviously watching. So yeah. if you guys see Mickey, tell him he got scared. <laughs> There's another guy that's self-employed that uh, I'm betting that stuff gets in the way. Yeah, it's uh, the construction industry is really interesting uh, these days. I know he ain't nailing a freaking, he ain't hammering no nails in his place. No, but, that's uh, for sure. It's uh, the, this last two years have been the busiest two years of my life. I don't. Uh, I'm assuming it's the same for everyone in construction. It's been pretty crazy. But back to pool. Rory, Rory still has the combo in the side that we assumed he would play 10 minutes ago. Uh, oh, so he did something interesting there. He, and he, it played worked that, out. he played that six ball off the one and into the three so he could hold that six in front of the pocket and he could move some balls around. And I'll tell you, I, I don't understand 100% why he did that, and here's why. The five ball is the trouble ball, right? And... I, I mean, I'm assuming what he's going to do is he's going to shoot the six in and he's going to go to that end rail and he's going to try to go around those balls and shoot the five in the corner. Um, he's going to draw around them. 
I don't know. Yeah, I, I might I, be able to drift over. I, See that angle? Yeah, I feel like he's gonna. Might be able to drift past that twelve. The five in that corner. I feel like he's gonna go. He's. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I think he's gonna go to the end rail and all. Uh, okay, I wouldn't so, have done that, but it. Well, yeah. I don't think he meant to go anywhere near it. I don't think he wanted to go around it, like I was saying, and he just ran into it. Yeah, that was not a. So let's go back know. to that combo on the side. You know, the, so he plays that ball off the ball in there. I really feel like if you're gonna if you're gonna shoot that combo on the side, that's the time that you go after. Um, you try to go around it, and yeah. So I, my personal opinion, I feel like he played that shot one too late. Twenty-eight, twenty-one Chiefs. Maybe, maybe Mickey would rather be with his babe. Maybe Possibly. Mickey would rather be with his, his babe? Possibly. What are you saying, Rotten Roger? What are you saying, Rotten Roger? You know something we don't know? Rotten yeah, Roger? it's Rotten Roger. Oh, well, don't even read what Roger says. Yeah. Um, he's, yeah. He's just a troublemaker. I will Roger. tell you guys this. I will not um, comment on here how these guys should shoot their racks. Because this, yeah, this is not my style. Well, I will. You will? Yeah, well, you're a, you're a freaking stud. Nah, I, I, I don't know I, why you're not playing. You know, I think there's nothing wrong with evaluating your own opinion. On well, yeah, I'll give my opinion, but my opinion is mute. Have you seen her, <laughs> Roger said? I think you mean mute. Well, it's not his girlfriend, Roger, so <laughs> I don't know. What up, T? TZ? Right. I still think where he gets out here, he's going to come down to this rail right here. So he's in a pickle, and that's the fact. He's in a pickle. He, if he, it, I personally think that uh, you know he, can, it's hard to go between the 15 and 11 there because you, you're potentially yeah, scratching like, a side. Well, no, he's going to go in the where he was just aiming. Uh, I, I, so possibility in between the 13 and 15. Right. I'm not a master player, but can he put? There's top on that. I don't, tough, I don't believe shot. he can go anywhere near the 13, 15. I think he's got to go on top of the 11, the side pocket side of the 11. Uh, he was just looking at that too. Yeah, I don't think he has the. Option. He first was looking, then he think I, he was probably going to run into the 15. Is what he was first was looking at. Ah, right, we'll see. See what he comes up with here. I think that you got to flirt with disaster here and go at the top of the go at the 11. Yeah. You know. Doing a draw. Yeah, I don't. Okay, I'm lost. I'm gonna learn something here, I guess. Yeah. Maybe he's gonna try to go off the 14. Oh, he's oh. jumping. Oh, look oh at we this, all, guys. yeah. Set, oh set, set, no, set, he's set, gonna set, hook set, himself set. for that. Either way, we all saw a very good effort there. I. Uh, Whoa. That was amazing, huh? That's way over my head. Just a simple guy from Shakopee, Minnesota. Whoa. He came pretty close to being spot yeah. on there. Yeah. That's pretty hard to judge the energy on that shot. I right. He just kind of, at the point, you're yeah, he was just, on your best he was just winging at it. It's a shot that Charlie knows, right? Yeah, you know, <laughs> I probably would have already been out by now. Would have been on to my next match. I would have uh, floated over towards that 11 ball, probably went off of it, scratched the side. However, my goal would have been to... <laughs> Just tap that 11 ball and leave myself the long cut on the five. Roger uh, Swartz said, wow. Hey, if Roger's listening, I don't know how the match went last night, but did you win, Roger? I was too busy getting third place in this tournament. How'd you do? Uh, you know, being a good jumper, it is, uh, it's, it's going to show here. You're either, you either are or you aren't. I'm a very average jumper myself. Um, some guys that are just amazing at those cues, and with these valley pockets, that's a pretty big pocket. If you hit the anywhere near the right part of that ball, it's probably going. So I'm trying to jump over this ball and shoot that five in the corner. You're either gonna make it or you're not, I guess, right? Whoa. Roger says he lost eleven to seven. Oh. Roger Sword did. I don't even know who he played. Neither do I. 
You're talking about the 507? Yeah, 507. Oh, Chad Knuthan. Yeah, he, he's a good player. Yeah. 11 7. Is so, that, are there no jump cues allowed in this tournament? They play to 11, yeah. No, he can. He can jump. Okay, so this is interesting because he is queuing up to jump that ball with this full cue. And I don't see a jump cue, but his break cue may, uh, it, it may break down to be, it might be a break jump cue. But the, his initial approach to the table when he queued up for jumping, he did it with a full cue. That's um, interesting. All right, so. Yeah, I don't like the full cue for jumping here. Uh, he's, what kick, he's kicking and calling it on the side here. He's not kicking, though. Yes, he is. That's what he felt. Okay, I'm wrong. You, you could see enough of that ball. And that was Hill. Yeah. Hill. Wow. Oh, no, That's 3-3. Three, yeah. Three. Yeah. yeah, he hit it too full. He actually had enough to I, make it. It's hard to tell from our camera. Yeah, angle. I, I was convinced he couldn't even see that much of the ball. So I'm very wrong. I, w I don't like... Um, yeah. Uh, yes, Nick Marsalek is still in it. He's a uh, ninth through 12th place match. He's waiting for the winner of John Fields and Mark Kukluk. I see Jesse Ingles playing Mario on table one. But that's not right. No, it's not. That's probably the next match on table one. Yeah. You might be right. I don't see them playing. Yeah, I think that's the next match that they're going to call up here. Mario Perino and Jesse Engel after this one on table one. It's kind of fun sitting here with Tony Z, man. I used to, when I was a kid, oh, I met boy. this guy. There we go. Knew he was a great player. Looked up to him. You were pretty young when you started coming around, especially oh, wow. this tournament. You were really young. Oh, do you know how old you were when the first time you came? Well, I don't know how. I mean, I started playing pool when I was 10, so 26 years ago. It seems like you were younger than that the first time. So I don't know how many years Dad has been running it or been doing what he's doing, but we used to give each other a lot of crap. Oh, yeah. Yep. I've only gotten better at pool, though. I just can't win the local tournament. Yeah. It's not good enough. It's never a good sign when your opponent shows up to the table drinking a can of dry. You've had about 20 beers. <laughs> Roger Johnson said Tony Z is an I awesome guy. I observed that you did not have a jump cue put together. You do have one. Okay. Rory's so Rory does have table, a jump guys. cue. I was but he didn't, he, he didn't need to jump it, though. Well, the funny thing is, I'm a. I, I'm not a candidate for that shot just because I don't have the skill for it. I'm not that great. Of, I'm not a pretty average jumper. But Rory just walked up and chatted with Tony for a little bit. No, he's been around. He's, been around. Nope. he's fine. He's bulletproof. Danny Olson. He kid plays pool every day. Some Nate Mike guy said hi, Tony Z. Uh, that's that's my home dog there. He's, uh, um, he's a Jailer. great guy. He's yeah, a he's a ran, ran well, I don't know if I'm supposed to say. I better not say. Oh, no. He's a brother in blue. Yeah, he is a brother in blue, and he's a heck of a guy. He's a daddy. He's got uh, a couple girls, so he uh, doesn't have the freedom to be a naughty boy like I do. So I got my son, but... Um, so we got Danny O on the hill. I'm going to play a uh, short video here, guys. No, I've been by myself for most of the day, but I mean, so. Well, uh, I got, uh, you know, I'm just like all the business owners out there. We got the 1099s are due by the 15th, guys. Don't forget. So uh, I got some paperwork I got to do tomorrow. I was thinking about spending the night down here and stuff, but uh, 
Yeah, I might be back tomorrow. I honestly, oh boy. Great break. Holy moly, Rory, he hit those balls with a stick of dynamite. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say that he's gonna he's gonna shoot that. Uh, what is that? The 14 ball and go forward, try to get on the 10 ball in the other corner pocket. And if he does both of those things, this game's over. Oh, he could shoot that 10 in the corner from. He's looking at it now to see if he can spin it in or you know. Yeah, camera angle is kind of tough to tell. Yeah, yeah. You can shoot it right now because. Uh, he doesn't. He's not. No, gonna, he's not gonna do it now. But no. so, he could. He could go around it if he wanted to. But. He's doing it right now. I mean, that's, that's a Charlie might, player Charlie might be you. right. If he, that's I a didn't double think A player in a match. So he, he, he's let me explain to you. Why wouldn't he? Because that is no ditch. So I, I thought he was hooked on the 15. That's when yeah. I'm looking at this. From this talking. angle, it does not look. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah. if you can do that, yes. You know, Charlie's he, right again. Yeah. What's new? Uh, it almost seemed like he hit the two ball a little before the. Yeah, when you got an open table, that's a great shot. But it looked to me, from my angle, it looked like he was hooked. The 15 had him hooked, so he couldn't shoot that ball. So that's, you know, that's the funny thing. It's, pool is a tough sport to predict runouts for well, a lot of different reasons. Especially the camera angles we got. It's almost impossible. I watched the Moscone Cup and that stuff and the quality of the production that they do. The only thing that I think that they do well is the camera work. Oh, I am. I absolutely have nothing but negative things to say about the Moscone Cup other oh. than the camera work. I think the camera work so is So you don't like, like the commentary? I think the commentary is bad. I, I think, I think the that could be better. is bad. I you think know, the format they, is bad. I they think. added uh, Niels Fayan this year, and I actually thought he was okay. Um, he kind of sounds like the Terminator, but, you know, I Arnold think Schwarzenegger. But I think that there's a, a particular commentator that does that that intends to demean uh, one particular side. Um, yeah, and I I thought Niels did a decent job though. But I, I, I honestly I I listened to one day of commentary and went no nope, I'm not listening to that this year and I turned the volume down and I let my son run around and shoot me with his Nerf gun. So <laughs> I, I watched the matches physically watched but the matches, but I didn't you, listen to the commentary. I mean that production though is really nice. Yeah, the, I mean it's like top top of the line for sure. I I I, I think that. Um, Tony, back. Is he gonna play this combo, Tony? Is he gonna play this combo? I think that. I think he has to. Yeah. Honestly, um, I'm not convinced he is. Well, I th he. I, I'll be curious to see. Personally, I I could see him shooting that ball on the side and going down, going back up again. But the truth is, you get to stay in control of the cue ball by shooting the combo and spinning around and out. So, I think that's what he'll do. If he spins around and gets anywhere anywhere reasonable on this ball, this 10 ball, he's out. Nice. That's a great shot. shot. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Yep. yep. Perfect. Perfect. I think Rory's going to be thinking about that. Yeah. The pattern he chose. That, yeah. The pattern he chose in that last rack and what, you know, right. the direction that went. He's not going to be happy about that. Right. And we've got uh, two big firepower runout players playing each other for the winter side now. Um, I don't know who, who to call the favorite, Rob or Danny. All right. Well, the next match on this table is going to be Mario Perino and Jesse Engel. Uh, I know who to call the favorite in that one. I don't. I'm not gonna. I'm not betting on it. Not so on I'm that. impartial, but I'm definitely gonna uh, call Jesse Angle the favorite on that. The announcer should be impartial. Yeah, should be correct. Not, uh, <laughs> I do have yeah. a third of Jesse in the Calcutta for 300, 400. So yeah, I want him to win. But I think that. Uh, I don't like that he's see, playing You see what we're already doing here now? He's got his jump cue out. He's thinking about whether or not he should jump that. Pipe. I don't think he should have. He didn't have to. If you're going to bank that, no matter what, why jump and bank well, it? Well, so here's the problem. Watch what the cue ball does while he's jumping it now. He had to move the cue ball an awful lot to get position on the eight ball. Oh, he's looking to jump in that corner. Yes. He, yeah, okay. Yes, and, and I, I personally think that he, was, he had a lot of things that could go wrong. If he banked that ball in, he might have been hooked on the eight because there was balls between that ball and the eight ball. So, yeah. yeah I don't know. Hindsight's 20. 
I kind of like his option of banking. But I'll tell you what, I don't like playing uh, Mario on the loser side. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I I think that those are two guys that have won a lot of tournaments in their lives. Mario's been doing it for longer. Jesse's been doing it a lot more recently. Uh, Jeff I bought him a drink right away. He's drinking them off. Yeah. Told <laughs> so, you. I think, uh, I, I don't know. I never want to bet against Junior in an eight ball match. He's, uh, man, he plays the game well. And he plays it creative, and he has a good break, and he pockets balls well, and he's got good cue ball control. He doesn't really have a weakness in his game other than maybe concentration. I would say he might lose a little concentration now and then. That'd be about my only knock on Junior. And he knows that. We've talked about that. So, but, uh, yeah. Jesse Angle, Mario Perino. Do they got, you got a commenting going on uh, on the Facebook? Yeah, just Roger, Rod and Roger talking. The only uh -huh. buddy talking. I like it. So, Jeremy Peck asked for one last night. Uh, Scott Morardi won. He double dip jet toured a lot. Um, played very well. Both the guys who got first and second last night, neither one of them had a drop of alcohol. The guy who got third, which was me, yeah, we won't talk about that, but I did buy uh, Scott Morardi in the Calcutta for $40. And won, so. Junior solid. Hoping to see him on the table soon. Yeah, Scott Marotti won last night. Right. I'm going to see if I can move this camera 55 over to a different table. We got Aaron Dudas is playing. Uh, you know, uh, who's Dudas playing? Something kind of interesting is happening over there with that John Fields match. You know, let's go back to yeah. John yeah. was up three to one, and he had a had a wide open shot to go up four to one, and he missed a. I'm going to call it an uncharacteristic miss he had. Uh, I don't. I'm not, I can't see from here. Mark has got a little bit of a challenging rack, but he's only got a couple balls left in the eight ball, and that would tie it up at three to three. So Mark is uh, he's making a run at it. This could get interesting. All right. For you people you that go. are... Uh, There's a decent shot of that table. For you guys that are interested in action, um, Jamie Puda and Mike Pankoff are over there probably playing a little game of pool. That's most certainly an action match. Uh, I have no details oh, yeah. regarding it, but those two would be playing each other for fun. Yeah, so, Pankoff was playing O'Keefe for a little bit earlier. Yeah. So there's a little little stuff going on here. There's reasons to walk the room and see what's going on. I see Mark Steinhaus over there. I do not see TJ. I don't know if he's still here and um, hanging out or if he took advantage of his early exit and decided to go home and rev up for tomorrow. I'm not sure which one. The number was two for the Chiefs Broncos game for whoever had the board. Two, two. Wasn't me. Okay, so you uh, could see a resurgence of um, of Mark here getting getting this uh, match all tied up. Probably a small amount frustrating for John because John was oh in a position to close it out. And now all of a sudden, um, he's not. Dean Lamthrop, if you're watching, you won another board. Oh, Lucky I bastard. I guess I'm signing up for a board here. What is this? Gordon. Okay. Hmm? Ian Lamb, of course he won. Erlacher, I won. 
I won a hundred dollars. <laughs> probably don't. I didn't know I had a. I didn't know I had. I didn't know I had a. Probably I didn't don't. know I had two. Well, that's weird. The guy that's running the board won. Yeah, I take that's the last strange. number. Dan Schleen. Oh boy. I didn't even know I had. I didn't even know I had it. I'm happy. Jim Coffee. Johnny, you did win. You won a $20 board. Johnny Meyer. Um, by the way, guys, Johnny Meyer uh, passed the board this year to me. Um, I'm, I'm running around, taking numbers. I didn't realize how much work it was. Tell you what, the guy, I'll tell you what, the guy, you know, he's playing matches and everyone's coming up to him asking, asking for uh, hit their numbers when he's playing a match, and I was one of them growing up. So I apologize for that, buddy. Uh, I chose the, the number directly on top of Rory Hendrickson in both boards on purpose. I didn't even realize that I had the number two, my friend. I want you to pay me first for whatever you're doing. And uh, for the right record now. on the live stream, this is mythical money that these guys are playing for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. The knucklehead in the pink shirt here advertising his. These are all donations. Mythical, <laughs> mythical football boards that are uh, charitable donation boards. I'm buying Johnny Meyer a drink for this board. I'll take a, uh, I'll take a uh, true driver. I was telling everybody they had to buy me one. I didn't realize that. I can shut him off. There you go. Charlie, shut there off. Good. How are you doing? Yeah, uh, clearly there's a concentration issue. By the way, folks, uh, just to be clear, um, John Fields, Mark Kukluck, the score is 3-3. Three to three. Mark is uh, at the table. And it's a little bit difficult to see from here whether or not he can get out there. But... Uh, that's a big turnaround. That was going to be four to one, and now it's uh, three to three, and Mark is at the table. And it, I mean, it looks like it's possible, but I, you know, I can't tell if the five balls tied up there. That's a little bit difficult for me to see. Um, so I'm going to say that if the balls are out in the wide open, Mark's got a good chance to get out here. Kind of got a, a reprieve, we'll call it. Uh, Jesse Engel and Mario Prater are lagging for the first break uh, for their match. Looks like Jesse's going to win that lag. Wow, he almost froze the five on the rail. Right, that's a pretty good lag. I'm going to call. Uh, I'm going to call Jesse Engel the favorite. Although if someone argues with me, I wouldn't be. I would passionately defend him. Said Mario. I like Mario. He's a good, good guy. He's a talented player. Tough to beat, but uh, he's got some shots in his bag. A little bit more consistency and younger. Definitely younger. That matters. So, Jesse's going with the head ball break on this table. We're going to get to see. We just saw uh, Rory's side break. He finally, from the same side of the table, he got good results from that second ball break, but now we get to see the head ball. Good cue ball control, not a particularly large amount of power, and a bad result. So.
So Mario's gonna shoot this ball on the side and he's gonna Alright, well I didn't see that coming. Uh he might be thinking about that seven six combo in the corner. It's pretty close to stiff. And he might be able to draw in on that. I don't know if it's a two I think it's a two ball that's underneath the fourteen ball. That's definitely the trouble ball. If he can shoot that combination and fall in on that ball, it's definitely the right shot. If not, he can get straight in on the four ball and, and shoot between uh, fourteen and eleven to shoot the two ball in the other corner. So he's got to. All right. Well, he's doing the completely opposite thing of what I just said on the first shot. And it, there's nothing wrong with this pattern at all. And the ways to run out. That's the thing about barn table. I was always amazed at how I would be convinced that my pattern was the only good pattern. And somebody would run out on me and show me that there was a <laughs> there was a, a good uh, another good option and maybe better option. Our tables are such an equalizer. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to run out. So, uh, Tony Johnson, we will not be live streaming from our area for uh, for ethical reasons. <laughs> this is a group of characters. I don't think that would, that would go over like a poo and a punch bowl there. But, uh, yeah. All right, so I missed what happened with Mark Kukluk, but uh, he missed the ball. And John Fields is at the table with his final object ball and the eight ball. Only two balls left. John will be going up four to three and breaking uh, for the win. All right, four three, John. Huh? He's got to feel like uh, you know. So he got to the table, didn't get out. Mark got to the table, didn't get out, and John got back to the table. That's rare. In this yeah. Situation. In the tournament. I got tons of might join us here shortly. He's won this a few times. <laughs> he settled the debate about which tons of better. Definitely. Who settled the, the debate? Tim. You know, the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, yeah. The debate was always whether or not Rick or Tim was it's the better no player. no longer the... There's no question yeah. anymore. Uh, Tim is far and above the better player of those two. As, uh, I think he's won it. Like, he hasn't he won this tournament like three, four times, five times? He's won quite a few events over the... Well, he's played since forever. I mean, I remember being barely 21 years old and he was already playing in this tournament. So. Mm. We're, we're very close in age. Dan the man. Are you still? Way, whoa, whoa. What are you trying to do to me here? All right. I'm, at some point, I'm probably going to hop off the stream for, for a. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Mario. Um, he was gambling there. I really don't understand the, the pattern choice here. He's having to flirt with danger more than once to get out. And I felt like. What I had mentioned in the beginning, allowing him to stay in control of the cue ball a little more. He's a heck of a player. If there's a will, there's a way. Here's another good example. He's got to shoot the seven ball in the corner, and he's got to find a way to get it on that eight ball. He may have to go three rails and around to right. try to shoot the eight in the side. Yeah, that's a big question mark there. The nice thing is, is if you come up short, you might be able to shoot the eight in the corner. Uh, if you go too far, you, the only way you can really get in trouble is if you hook yourself on the 11. So I kind of like the idea of just pocket this ball and give it a little bit of energy and plan on shooting the eight in the side pocket. That's exactly what he did. But holy moly, he hammered it. Came out good. Oh, the stars are aligning now. That doesn't happen, ever. <laughs> uh, if I was Mario, I wouldn't go to the well like that too many times. It's not likely to turn out. Yeah, he was. He forced himself to. Yeah, I like. Uh, I I like choosing a pattern that allows you to move the cue ball less. And as we can see, it's easy to lose the cue ball. This is slick paper. Uh. So Junior and Troy Liebel are just setting up to start their match. 
um, on the table that's um, on the end of the table where Mario's racking right now. It's a, you know, so it's it's close, but it's uh, they are lagging for the break now. That match hasn't started. I'm not sure what we got going on as far as what they're saying on the stream. Um, Kevin McGrath has gotten himself in a pickle. He's in a safety game with Aaron Dudas, and the score has evened up at 3-3. So they've had a lot of balls tied up in the last couple of games, and that's factored into the score. All right, Mario broke from the same side of the table that Rory did with the second ball break, and he made a ball immediately. This is a runnable rack, especially if he chooses stripes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb here and say Mario gets out again. I like Mario to run out. Of course, the last time I said that, the guys made like three mistakes. Here's the beginning, and I think that, uh, yeah, I just really don't see Mario getting in trouble here. He's got key, good cue ball control. These balls are out in the open pretty good. He doesn't have to break anything out. Um, you know, I mean, he's got to foul in on the, the, what is that, the 10 or the 12? That's, I think it's the 10 ball over by the chalk there. Um, he's got to foul in on that one to shoot that one last, and then the 8 ball. Um, I don't think that's going to be a big issue for Mario. I really think, I like him. Yeah, I think that's a 12 ball over there by the chalk. Uh, just a question out there. Is the our microphones sounding okay? I got a text from a buddy that says they're cutting in and out. I don't know if it's just on his end or everybody. Just uh, let me know if our mics are cutting in and out or if it sounds good yet. I have mine positioned a little bit away from my mouth. Yeah, you can move it closer. I, I always remember John Stitch doing casino tournaments with me, and he used to put the microphone right up to his lips, and it sounded like, yeah. oh, clean up an aisle five. Right, not like terrible. that, but... Yeah. And I can, even with you having it away, I can turn it up a little, you know, okay. so you don't have to. But I'll try to enunciate. Maybe that'll help. So, I, I mean, I, here I am disagreeing with Mario's patterning. And I'm not saying he's a bad player. I'm not, I don't have anything bad to say about Mario. Don't get the wrong idea. But I really don't like the, his, his ball choice. But, you know, he ran out the last track. So he, maybe he's just running the balls in a way that he's comfortable. Maybe that's what this is all about. I would have tried to fall in on this ball last. It's clear that what he's trying to do is shoot the 11 and then fall in on that ball that's you know yeah. close to the three ball last. Right, just personal so, preference. He yeah. feels comfortable this way. Yeah. I, uh, but, you know. Yeah. And now he's just yeah, fine. I think he's still it. all right. Yeah, he's on top of it. He can go to the side, all the way over to the side rail and out. Make sure he's got a nice window there, whatever he wants. Kind of see where he where he finishes here. Yep. yep, he's got a good shot at it. So now, if these balls are close enough together, you can even use that rub on the three to fall in position right. on eight. Which I think might be a natural. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nothing wrong with this pattern. A lot of ways to run out these bar tables, yeah. as you know. Mario and I just uh, have different styles of choice, shot selection choice. We. Uh, over the last 20 years, I would say that Mario and I have a very competitive record. Um, for a lot of years, he got the better of me on the, on the uh, nine-foot tables, and I got the better of him on the bar tables. And then from, he's just really tough to beat. He's super competitive. He he's plays solid almost every time you play him. I, I in particular, I remember you know a few years ago we played in the uh, later stages of a tournament at CRs and. It, Right before the match, I told a couple guys, hey, watch this, it'll probably go hill-hill. Sure enough, it was a 10-ball tournament, one of the big ones that Jerry had, and sure enough, we went hill-hill, and Mario missed a 10-ball. He tried to shoot it up the rail for the win, and he rattled it, and he left me a long cut shot, and I was shooting off the end rail. It was a really difficult shot, and I, I made it, but it kind of wobbled when it went in, so there was like a dramatic effect. It, that was really kind of descriptive of how our matches typically go, Mario and I. 
What's uh? So I had a short break away from us here. Uh, what? What is the score? Is it two to? It's two to zero, Mario. And, okay. And uh, the first time that he broke. Got it updated um, now. He so Jesse broke, didn't make a ball. Mario got to the table, ran out. Then Mario broke and gave him a little pop from the same spot he broke that time, and the, and the corner ball went in. This time he let up. He shook. He broke with less power, and that corner ball didn't go in. He almost still made a ball, but the balls are a little bit more tied up this time. Um, this is a tough run off. Roger, the cutting in and out uh, that should be on your end. Cause I'm actually watching the stream here, too, and it seems pretty smooth. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff. So Kevin McGrath just made a nice little cut shot and fell in on the eight ball to go up four to three. I'm assuming he's going to roll this eight ball in. Rob Manson had a big miss deal, almost cost him his last match. Uh, okay, so Kevin just shot the eight ball in. He went up. Um, four, he's up four to three in breaking uh, against uh, Aaron Dudas. Um, Troy Liebel and uh, Junior are still in the first game of their match. Troy's at the table. Junior is seated. Um, and it looks like Nick Marcellic is setting up for a match a couple tables away. So there's there's some there's a there will be soon there will be four matches going five matches going. Um, we can't see what's going on with Khan's match down there. That's a long ways away. I turned uh, Tony Z's mic up a little bit. It shouldn't be cutting in and out. I know some of you guys are saying it's cutting in and out, but I'm not seeing it on the stream here. That the audio is not getting picked up, so it might be on your end. Sometimes it's the uh, download uh, speed that you have on your end. So Jesse goes with solids to start, and uh, um, I agree with that. And I like the way the table's positioned, sort of. I really would be uncomfortable with that group of four balls in the middle of the table in the rack area. The 6-3 combo isn't stiff, but it's doable. Um, so maybe that's what he's counting on. So John Fields is going to play Nick Marsalek. I don't think they've started over there on table eight. So that's pretty interesting because, you know, John had a chance to be up 4-1 to one and break in that match, and next thing you know it was 3-3, three to three, and Mark had a chance to run out, and he missed a ball. And that's how... That turned into John four to three, and John must have broken ran off the very next wow. round. So I know that's that one's probably got to sting. And it, it, everybody that's watching the stream and has played pool for any reasonable amount of time has let, had one get away from him like that. So, uh, so John Fields is in the ninth through twelfth place match against Nick Marsalek. Uh, you guys can find the bracket. There's a link to it on the description of this uh, video post. So you just got to click off of the, if you're doing full screen on the video, you can click off it and look at the description to click on the link, which takes you to CompuSport to the bracket. You got to select the uh, Seek Over on the 8-Ball Invitational Bracket. Yeah, CompuSport has kind of a different format now. I, I got lost in it a little bit. It, it started showing me results from tournaments like two years ago based on the name of the event. Uh, I don't know if anyone else has had that issue, but uh, I had to play with it a little bit and find the current, the 2022 version of that tournament. Oh, okay. Yeah, it had me locked in on, I don't know if that's because I haven't played for a while, but it, the first question it asked me is, did you play in this event? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I didn't know. I don't look on there enough to know if yeah. it's doing that. But. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a little bit different. So if you haven't been on CompuSport for a while, you definitely want to take a little extra time and take a look at the way that that format's laid out now. So there was my question. Oh, Can you shoot the shot. combo and open up the two? And obviously the answer is yes. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, so now he's just going to decide you know, where he wants to keep off of that six ball and so he can float in on it. That's interesting. Uh, looking at the monitors here, that the uh, it looks significantly darker it, on that monitor than it I, is in the room. And I swear it didn't. In the room. 
I swear it wasn't like this earlier today. Something happened where it kind of auto-focused itself incorrectly, I think. I don't know. Got to fire that camera, man. I think you're doing a great job. I wasn't worried about it. The price is right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the beauty of bar tables is you can lay up pretty easily. I guess you can shoot this eight ball in and you're going to be pretty good. Um, I'll tell you. Chess is pretty solid. I think Mario's, uh, you know, I don't know how a, how good a memory Mario has for things, but I one thing that I like to focus on a lot in the past is I like to pay attention to maybe the energy that I use in the break, whether I hit the one ball full or not, stuff like that, because it really has a big effect on what happens with those balls and what balls go in no-go. Yeah. And when I started switching to the second ball break on the diamond tables, especially at CRs, I felt like I made that corner ball a lot when I broke second ball. I found that there was a certain amount of pop that I really needed to give those balls to get that result. And anything short of that was going to result in kind of a messy table and no balls. It was significant. The energy mattered. And I got all that information from playing with Chad Billman out of the Quad Cities. Oh, yeah. Chad, I personally would like to dub Chad as the very best breaker of eight ball, second ball breaker of eight ball in the country. A amateur for sure, he's the best I've ever seen. He hit him so hard that sometimes people thought he hit him head ball. He absolutely pummeled him, and he just managed to hit that second ball perfect. Let's see. Well, there's a lot of ball action there. Yeah. And he made the he made a ball in the up table part of the table. Tony, I think uh, what I'm going to do is switch your headset. So I'm going to shut you off here a second. Switch to that one. I'll have Tony switch to the second headset. Just see if that one uh, works better. Huh? Uh, okay, I got you turned up now. All right, I hope nobody heard the question. I just asked Chris if you did. No, I didn't even hear it. Okay, good. But anyways, I switched it to the other headset. Let's see if that one's not. Because other people are saying it's cutting in and out. Okay. So we'll see if, see if that works better. It's the first time anyone's heard what I had to say. Thanks, guys, for making me feel important. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, a lot of ball action. Jesse made a ball because of ball action. He did not make the corner ball in on uh, the downside of the table, the rack end of the table. He made a ball based on ball action. That's great. That's fantastic. Here is a situation where he chose stripes. I do agree uh, with that choice. However, eight ball is a problem. He's got a the one ball and the seven ball are taking away his natural ability to shoot the eight in the corner. He needs to move one of those balls. Right now, he's about to shoot that combination and move away from that. So he needs to get. I'm going to guess that he's going to. He needs to get that one ball moved with one of those balls down. Or now he can use the 11 ball and go into the 8 ball. It's, you know, that's a potential solution as well. Well, somebody says it sounds better, thanks. So maybe that did it. Okay, For some cool. reason that uh, headset was okay. struggling or something. I don't know. I like shooting a 13 in the corner, draw the cue ball just a few inches. Yeah, and set now, you up for that. And now shoot that 11 ball. He moved that 11 ball there. Shoot that 11 ball and go into the 8. And you got to, you know, here's a spot where I used to be critical of other people quite a bit. Shoot the 11 ball, and you, you can't just blindly go into that 8 ball. You need to go across the top of the 8 ball. If right. You, if you go into that 8 ball and you just push it into the 7 and the 2 sit together, you really just created a new problem. Some guys would just shoot this 11 really hard, go into the 8-ball really right. hard. Hopefully everything really separates like there. I like to call that going up in the air because you could you could wind up tying up the 15-ball. You could push the 8-ball. Yeah. Um, you could miss the 8 wrong, and then you're yeah. flying the cue ball. I like trying to go into the top of that 8-ball here. Top half. Oh, he tried. And you but know he what? freed he's, up that pocket. Yeah, if he can make this 15-ball, he's just fine. Yeah. He can go down table. He can go between the 
six ball and the two ball to the end rail. And then he'll get himself straight in on that nine ball. Which will... Yeah, it looks yeah. kind of like a tricky cut, though, doesn't it? Uh, from, the cam from the camera angle? I'm having a little bit of a tough time telling. But the good yeah. news is if he can make it, he will naturally get there. He cannot make oh, it, otherwise he's... he would be considering it. He's going to pinch bank this. Yeah, he is. He's going to shoot with draw, and he's going to use inside English, which in this case is right, right. English. And he's going to try to pinch this ball, which on valleys you can do a pretty good job. Diamonds you can pinch it even more. Right. So he's going to shoot with speed. He's going to shoot with draw, and a little bit of inside English. He's going to try to bank this. Um, All right. So, and, and and here's a here is the situation. Why did he choose? To, why did he need to pinch that ball? Well, because it was a double kiss and he shoot it naturally. So what was going to happen was if he naturally shot that bank in to hold the key ball, he would have double kissed. Now he's going to go rail first. He's going to go to the side rail on the left. He's going to shoot that 15 ball and he's going to yeah. float the key ball over to the side rail by the three and the one. By like the second diamond there. There you go. Key there is just speed. And how thick you hit that object ball. Right. That's the big mistake a lot of amateurs make. Right. Hit, hit that, that too full. Too, you're, yeah, you yeah. hit it too full and you wind up shorter. If you hit it too thin and you go flying, lose your lose your ability to pocket the ball. He hit it absolutely perfect. Tied her up. So that was a skillful run out there. Yeah. Not a lot of guys can hit that bank shot that well. Guys in this tournament can, but. Well, you know, the nice thing about banking that ball is you really don't have to, it, you don't have a choice. If you can't make that 15, well, the corner, right. you don't have to think. You, your mind is free to just focus on swing and make it or don't. I don't know about a, other pool players, but a, a lot little of times, higher level player needs to know how to hit that shot, though. Yeah, right. absolutely. I will, I will say this: if I'm banking that ball and I have any part of me is uncertain, my odds go down. But when I have no choice and that's the only shot I really see as being a good solution, I have a habit of making it more often. So I, I don't know if other people are that way, but definitely for me, if I just know that's the only shot I have, I'm better off. My mind is yeah. my own worst enemy. I'm going to run a commercial here. All right, so quick update. Um, Aaron Dudas and um, Kevin McGrath are hill hill, and Aaron Dudas is at the table. And I missed what happened to lead that to that situation, but uh, they got a they got a knockdown drag out going over there. A lot of time at the table for both of them. They're in a safety battle right now. Aaron just played safe, um, so it should be interesting. Nick, Mar Nick Marsalek is up one to nothing in his match against John Fields and broke and made a ball. And Troy Liebel is at the table right now against Junior. He just pocketed the eight ball. And hang on, I'll give you a score here. I'm waiting for him to move his score B so I can tell who's who. All right, so there we're seeing that Jesse is making balls because he's getting a lot of action. He's not making the corner ball. Mario made the corner ball that one time, and then he broke a little softer, and that didn't turn out so hot. So we'll see what happens if Mario gets to break balls again. But, yeah. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and say that if Jesse keeps making action balls, you know, balls based on breaking the balls well and stuff, I'm going to say that Mario's in trouble. Oh, thank you very much. Um, Mario is uh, is going to be in trouble in this match if that's the case because, you know, Jesse's a pretty good little shooter. Yeah, he's all right. He good. Triple fisted there. Yeah. I, Should we get Nick Hansen up here? I haven't been around up here. For, I haven't been around pool a lot lately, and I'm getting a lot of thing, a lot of uh, <laughs> hellos and how are you and, and, and free drinks. Cocktails. Yeah. yeah. They don't want to stick around and talk to you. They just want to give no, you a beer. I don't wait. drink. I get yeah. sick of my own. Place. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, Jesse really has a great opportunity to run out here. He's going to move that five ball, but that's really about getting an angle on the 11 so he can float over and finish those three. He's got to get that 15 ball out of there so that he's got to figure out a way to get. The nine ball is trickier than it looks. Yeah, just because there's some traffic there to yeah, get back to it. He needs to, uh, obviously, that's going to be the final ball he shoots. He's going to shoot the 11, and then he's going to shoot the 15 and the 10, and he's going to try to go around and get on the nine. Needs to needs to be accurate about how he moves the ball around the table. Fifteen does uh, the uh, nine does go past. It looks like. So here's the thing. Uh, he, he's got, he plans to shoot the nine last. What he would have liked to do there is float over farther and shoot the fifteen ball next, so he could shoot the ten. Do, and go around the table to fall yeah, in on the nine. Now, up there. Yeah, so uh, now he has to shoot the ten. He may try to listen. This is aggressive, but he could draw off this ten and rub the. Okay. So mm -hmm. now he's just recreated what he wanted out of those balls initially. He wanted to shoot the fifteen and then have a less steep of an angle on this shot on the ten. He's recreated it, but he's made it. Someone's got to go little, on. like down here. No, I. I think he's going to back cut the 15. You thinking back cut that? Yeah, I think he's going to back cut the 15 and he's looking right Oh, yeah, he can. Yep. Gonna go. yeah. yeah. So he's got such a large area for position down there if he doesn't run into any balls. You know, if he puts a, some insight on this, it might cut down here, get past that four. What I was thinking about when he was lining up to shoot that 10 is maybe he would draw off the 10 and go into the nine. That was that was right. my thought. Bump it down a little. Yeah. Now he has to find a way to accurately move the cue ball yeah, without touching left, the ball. He's, yeah, he's trying him. to pinch it so he can go between the two and the five. Yeah, oh, he, no, is. he isn't. He's going underneath. Now, I don't agree with this because and this is why. Well, he hits that harder. He's probably pretty good. He has no shot. I, I completely disagree with that. Absolutely, 100%. I feel like that had a really large margin for error. That's a nine-foot table position. You shot know, I thought he, table. I thought he could have got on the other side of that four ball and came down. You know, out. He could have came out here. I thought. I, you don't have replay here, do you? No, I tr I tried it last night. It didn't work. I would have. I would work on it. If anybody's watching this, and they have the ability to go backwards, go back to when he had that ten ball and look at the angle that he could have shot the ten ball in. I, I would have liked to have drawn the cue ball off the ten ball. And go back in the, the nine ball, and if I can get in into that area where the rail and the nine ball, and bump that nine ball just a little bit, now it goes in the side pocket, and I still have the fifteen ball underneath, so I, you can shoot that ball to fall in on the nine. You preserve your opportunity to shoot that shot, and at the same time, you give yourself a, a, the ability to change your pattern a little bit. Uh, maybe somebody will go back and look at it and tell me whether I'm crazy or not. Yeah, I don't know if they can on a live feed. Got to wait till it's off. Okay. I think that's that was the best way to go about this from that position. He is uh, he's in a pickle here. He's going off that ball on the oh, side, man. and he almost did it. Jeez. Almost did it. A heck of an effort. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Might have heard me say it already. He doesn't have to do that too many more times. Mario's not going to need too many more unforced errors to win this match. So,
Kevin McGrath win one against Aaron Dudas. He actually played a safety um, in that match with Aaron Dudas, and uh, Aaron actually played a safety um, on an open table, and Kevin got up there and ran out. So probably regrets that safety. But uh, um, yeah, yeah. So Kevin is uh, now going to play Taylor Brock. Um and they'll be playing pretty swift, quicker. They've already announced the match. So. Their stuff and get set up and ready to go. Here's a situation that is a good example for a lot of people. If you watch the way that Mario moves his cue ball around the table, it's very normal for Mario to have complete control. He doesn't let the cue ball fly in unknown places very often. It, and it's obviously worked for him over the 30 years that I know he's been playing. I think he's been playing longer. So, did you ever see anybody break with a bridge? I gotta, I've, I've seen just about everything, but I don't re recall seeing that. I'm going to show you a picture here, which okay. some of the pool world might remember this, but Corey Duell, just recently in a tournament, did this here. You see him grabbing the bridge there in the left picture? Yeah. On the right, he puts it down. Wow. Yeah, okay. it's 10 ball. I'm not sure why that would be an advantage, to be honest with you. I think he just tries a lot of different weird stuff. It's definitely goofy. Um, if I remember right, the reasoning was uh, the location that he had to break. They couldn't break from the side. Yeah. So he break. couldn't get the the lift on his cue oh, like he wanted. Oh, he was Right. Yeah, yeah. So then he used the bridge because he was, well, I, yeah, I, I, he ended up getting, I think, second in that tournament. But. Wow. <laughs> so Corey has been around for a long time, and he's always been quirky. He's always looked for different things and angles and stuff. And uh, you know, it's worked for him. I mean, he he was there was a time when he was the best player in, in the world. So you know, right, I can't knock him for being that way. But he's anytime I see something like that, my first thought is, what a goofball. Exactly. Yeah. That was my thought. Yeah. And then later, you know, you find out why he did it, and it's like, oh, okay. okay. As much as he is goofy, he's also discovered things about in the game of pool that not everybody knew. Mm -hmm. So he's, there's a there's a evil genius at work there. Yeah, he's so, always implemented weird break breaking, you know, yeah. soft breaks, and no doubt they've changed the rules because of him. So Mario broke again. He broke from the same spot he's been breaking from. He broke with more power this time than last time. However, he did not hit the, the two ball um, as full as I think he wanted to. And he made a ball, but it was an action ball. It wasn't a corner ball. Um, so, so far, these guys have pretty good stats in regards to breaking and making a ball. I think there's only been one dry break so far. Maybe two. It would be the most. Um, I think that... Uh, if this continues, that helps Mario a lot because I think the break advantage was significantly towards Jesse from when it was 0 0. I would call the break advantage to Jesse. So, yeah, I, uh, I think that's going to help Mario. If Mario continue to make balls on the break or they make them the equal amount of times, I would say that levels the match closer to Mario then. So it looks like two to one, John Fields uh, Marsalek match. That's what the that's what the coins say, but it seems like that's happened fast. Nick's up two to one, I believe. Yeah, that's it's, they're they're having quick games then, which isn't surprising for those two guys. Nick shoots awfully fast. John yeah. used to be a very fast player, very fast. He used to he was a heck of a bar table nine ball player about fifteen years ago. Um, I think like a lot of guys, you know, he got married, had kids, slowed him down a little bit, but he's still a heck of a player my understanding i haven't seen him for years so this is i see him on social media but i, I haven't seen him play physically for years yeah i haven't never seen him in person but i've seen him on some streams 
I was telling a story when I walked in and I saw him. He was playing on the first table when I walked in and I was talking to a couple guys and I, I told him a story. I, me and John Stitch were doing a tournament at uh, uh, Menominee Casino in Kashina, Wisconsin, and John was chirping away. And uh, so I said, okay, I'll, I'll play this kid. You know, I played him a couple hundred dollar sets. And we played for about, it was about six or seven hours and we were even. And John says, hey, you know, uh, kid gets a lot of rolls, but I think you're, you're getting there now. You should, we should, maybe we should raise a bet. And I laugh. I said, John, I'm playing pretty good, and we're we're even. <laughs> uh, maybe we just want to leave the bet right where it is. And uh, Field, John Fields proceeded to beat me two sets in a row. And John Stitch looked at me and kind of laughed and went, "Okay, yeah, we're good." And we quit. And uh, honestly, that put us at about the 10, 10 hour mark. And he looked like he was getting better at ten hours. Oh. Then yeah, and I was like, "Hey, I'm tired. We just did, you know, we set up the tables, we did all this stuff, and I'm tired. Let's, you know, I'm done." He looked like he was getting fresher and fresher at the ten hour mark. He was a heck of a bar table nine ball player, and I was playing pretty good pool at the time. So to be two sets loser, um, I was a little surprised. But uh, I got a pretty good education at John John Fields firepower there. So, but, Mario uh, could have got that. Could have turned out a little better. Yeah, he's in trouble on this one. He's he's gonna have to come up with a solution. I I feel like he's shooting this combination. It's a little bit of a hail mary, but it's a makeable shot. He made it. That's a nice shot. Here's why I call it a hail mary. This situation exactly. Right. You, I, I personally would have fired it. I would have shot it with a lot more power. That's not Mario style. Yeah, he was trying to leave himself for that four ball. Yep. The way he hit it. Yeah, and I, I feel like I was going to, I would have hooked myself for sure like he did. So I, I would have put some pace on that ball. Now he's got to back cut the four in a corner and he's got to wing the cue ball around the table. He really is in a pickle now. Kind of got natural shape if he makes, if he drills this. So <laughs> Possibly. <you> know, the, <laughs> I really feel like this cue ball is going to go ripping around the table. I, mm -hmm. More than likely, it'll be too hard to hold it for the three. I can't even tell if he's going to wind up going, if he's going to be above that. I can't, it really, it looks like he's hitting it awfully. Yeah, down. at that angle, it almost looks like he might run into that. Uh, 13. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can't tell. Uh, he's not happy. He doesn't like it. No, no of course not. He's a six. Uh, he's looking at the carom. I like think. Probably, this is his best shot right here. Cutting it, yeah. Back, I think it. so, too. Yeah, back cut it, shoot it, just let her buck. You're already in trouble. This is one of those shots where I'm, personally, I, I, I'm very likely to just focus on pocketing the ball. Um, you, I mean, he's on the rail. He, he doesn't really have the ability to even control the cue ball a whole lot. So just try to pocket the ball and see where you're at once that's over. One down, two to go. Yeah. Not, my, not my idea of a party, but. Okay, well, he missed the ball, and we got a good chance to see the path. Well, I, feel, I feel like it's Mario's second nature to try to control that cue ball. He clearly was trying to hold up that cue ball, and didn't. he did, uh, really didn't want to run into that 13 or whatever. Yeah. That's how he kind of manipulated it. When you're in such an overwhelmingly difficult position like that, I feel like you just need to focus on the task at hand. Yeah, I mean, obviously, give yourself a chance to, but you know, speed it's control needs to be a secondary thought. And again, we got uh, Kevin McGrath at the table with Broughton. Is that Hill Hill? 
No, it is not. They, okay, they didn't move the balls yet? Because they just started, right? Yeah, they just started their match, and the balls were a little funny, and I think that yeah. that's still 0-0 zero, zero right now. Okay. Looks like John Fields even it up 2-2. Two two. I like John Fields in that match against Nick. I think Nick is young. He's fast. He's likely to make careless errors, and that's just not going to help him against John. I think that Nick has to play awfully well to win that match. I'm not saying that Nick can't win. He's got some firepower. He's one of them bulletproof young and bulletproof kind of kids. Oh, yeah, he can play. Yep. So, But uh, he needs to play solid pool to win that match. So for that reason, I, I think I like uh, John to win. Of course, I will gladly point out that not only am I not betting on any of these matches, but I don't own anyone in the Calcutta. I'm just kind of observing and throwing my opinions around. That's about what they're worth. <laughs> Jesse is uh, making quick and clean work of this. Let's talk about your sponsors here. Looks like you got some sponsors last year. You didn't have anywhere near this many, did you? Um, yeah, there might be a couple less uh, last year. What this this year, yeah, I picked up some. And we, uh, I'm doing, Nate Zender purchased some tables in Mankato. I don't know if you noticed that. We're doing some tournaments there. Oh, okay. He's got, a, at Star Cycle, his business, he's got a oh, warehouse space up upstairs. Okay. And over the winter, he's got inventory. Uh, is a little lower, so he's got space up there. He's got five seven-foot diamond tables. One, uh, he's got Tim Tunjum's old nine-foot diamond. Okay. So we've been running some tournaments there, and I have uh, been doing streaming there. We set up. I got a five camera set up there. Nice. So I picked up some more sponsors and uh, okay. just kind of doing a yearly fee. If anyone's interested in doing sponsors, I try and run more streams. If you scroll down on the Midwest Q Sports page, you'll see more uh, streams and stuff from Mankato. And yeah. So I, uh, I, I mean, I obviously noticed the, the perennials, the pool table guys, and the right. Service Plus or whatever it is. I forget the pool tables plus or whatever he calls himself couple guys out there doing pool tables, really, if you're yep. looking for a pool knowledgeable table mechanic, and Tim Tundrum and Jamie Booter are doing an awful lot of the tables. Yeah. Um, I'd say they're both excellent at it. I, I think that uh, um, it appears that way, that's for sure. They do a lot of tables. I, yeah. I can't uh, say anything about Tim. Truth be told, I, you know, I'm very, I very have a lot of knowledge about uh, Jamie's work, obviously. He started with me when I had quality table service and went out on his own. But So here's all of them here. Okay. Yeah. So I saw that. And Star Cycle. So now I, I know a little bit about Nate Zender and Star Cycle. So I, I knew he was in that business. And uh, yep. And then uh, Jay Zender, State Farm, He's out. he's got his office in St. Peter. I worked on some houses uh, not far from there. And he's also got the office in Lee Sewer. So he's got two, okay. two offices now. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Michael Osmondson for Oz Landscaping. Oh, okay. Roger Sward is a local pool player, makes custom cues, and uh, he's making carbon fiber shafts now. I see a couple cute guys, and i got to be honest with you. I, it, kudos to the Jacobis. Uh, you know, there's a company that has just put back a lot into pool, running their own tournaments, selling cues. They're always, like, receptive to helping the top amateur players uh, move forward uh, with cues and sponsorships and stuff like that. They really, uh, those that's a great family. What a great group people they are um, i love it when i see that they're sponsoring events that are nowhere near wow what a break hang on holy cow uh whatever i was talking about let uh, i'll be honest with you that's a lot of balls on the break what is that one yeah that's that's four balls on the break and the wide open table no two balls uh, touching each other that's it's almost a duck out yeah um mario is in a pickle here He's Gonna yeah, to, it's gonna be down four three after this one. It's gonna be down four to three, and if Jesse breaks and makes balls like that again, <laughs> yeah, it's over. Right. That's the break advantage that I was kind of referring to earlier. So Je Jesse clearly has a better break than Mario. He has a better break than most players in the Yeah. And I've seen a lot of events that Jesse wins where he has a very explosive reaction from the break. That's really helped him. Um, so, yeah. That was the key shot. I think yeah. he's. I think he's all right. That's the money right there. So now he just has to get straight in on this 14, so he can draw the cue ball back and yep. you know, shoot the 10-8. And be done. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that. Uh, 
Mario needs a hope for a dry break. Because if Jesse's agree. dialed in like that, he's getting that kind of separation. Mario might not get back to the table. Might not just be this wreck. It might be the end of the match. A little more angle than I think he wanted, but it's fine. He'll go forward to the side rail and out. Eight. Yeah, Rock I think he was he was probably playing for that off the rail the whole time. I think that e either way it was fine or whatever. Yeah. I think that uh Jesse is always on the you know, when he is playing winning pool, he's always on the correct side the correct side of the ball. He rarely gets on the wrong side of the ball. That shows up a lot. There are some guys that win tournaments out there that don't even know what the right side of the ball is sometimes. It's amazing. They just they can see it, they can make it, and they know how they're getting to the next ball, and that's all they think about. Jesse is next level of uh, right. thought process when he plays his pattern. So what was that uh, that weird game that they came out with uh, years ago, that him uh, and Thorsten Holman, yeah. that team, he was on. He was a part uh, of it, and they won? So, so Scott Frost's just had a post on his Facebook recently about that. That was a uh, bonus ball. A bonus ball, and yeah. Scott was talking about it. And they showed some videos and some, some footage from that, some production footage and stuff from that. And that was kind of interesting to watch because, to me, I never even really had a handle on that game all the way. I ahead. didn't. I, I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't really watch it. I tried to. I think, it, you, you know, obviously other people know more about it. My now look at that. He's got. He's getting a nice ball action, and he's he's out. That's this that's, is over. That's a duck. I'm gonna call this. A, this match is over with. It's maybe just slightly harder than the last table. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. Um, my impression of that was, it was there. It seemed more. My first thought was cozy. Uh, not as professional, not as Moscone Cuppy bright lights production and all that. It seemed more cozy, the atmosphere. But uh, it seemed like something they wanted to try to get homeowners to buy and play you know, and, and all that stuff. It, it's something that maybe had a better chance at getting more participation. Uh, yeah. And it was it was interesting. But the game itself was a, it was a little bit confusing for a non-pool player. Right. And um, it was kind of boring, in my opinion. It was yeah, I watched it. I found myself looking on social media on my phone. Right, right. it lost my interest right away. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, Jesse was. Uh, you know, they, they, they. It seemed like every team had one top amateur, and they had a. And wasn't their team name like it was a Minnesota? Yeah. So they that, called them Minnesota something. <laughs> that was kind of one of the things that I thought was weird. Was they, you know, so. I understand that the promotional aspect of the game was you get a city involved and you know, each each team maybe could yeah. get participants involved. But when you're going to do that, I think the key to that is to get people from that city involved. And they had people right. playing for cities that had never even been to those cities. Yeah. So that was a little weird. you know. But uh, I like the concept. I like the marketing structure that was attempted to be developed there. I think that if you, you know, there's a lot of Minnesota companies that might have gotten on board if it was a pool is not an easy sport to sponsor. It's not a, a sport that you're going to want to put a quarter million dollars into. Right. Um, so a lot of corporations aren't going to look at it like that. If you make it an affordable sponsorship, you have a better chance at doing that. And I had some a lot of discussions with um, Brunswick um, when they owned Di uh, Valley, and I owned Valley Tables and was running around the country. I had conversations with Brunswick, Aramith, Hank Hayes from Simonis, um, a lot of guys like that about how can I get those people involved in my casino tournaments when I was running them. My idea was to develop a, what started out as a regional tour and then grow it from there with national sponsorships. And uh, you have to bring more to the table than what pool does. They were, they were looking for more from you. They needed more. They, the, the money wasn't the issue. It was the what exposure do they get for their money. And, uh, and, and a lot of the sponsors didn't feel like they got enough emotional value for their money. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is, is you can tell them $50,000 for a year sponsorship. And the, 
and, it, and they look at it and they're the, the promotional value the, the exposure they got for that 50,000 wasn't enough but if you can propose something that got them enough exposure they'd be willing to spend a million it wasn't about the, the, the total of the money it was about the, the exposure and the value per dollar and uh, pool is still a little bit smaller a little bit more limited a sport than some of the other ones but um, that being said I think uh, that bonus ball had a good formula that might have generated more of that. Um, it just didn't catch. It, you know, there's some chinks in that. In that. But, um, yeah, I never played it. No. So, did you try it? No. No, I never did. You know what I did try? Uh, Kim Davenport, many, many moons ago, when I was playing at Crown Billiards with, um, you know, with Jimmy Wetch and Andy. Andy Morris and Roger Larson and all the guys that played there, Mark Boss and that Crown Billiards. Uh, that was Jimmy's pool hall with John Alexis. Ooh. I did try Target Pool, and that was actually pretty good for oh, my pool game. Target? Yeah, Target Pool was something that Kim Davenport came up yeah, with. I've never heard of that. Target Pool was actually an excellent. There's probably still some guys out there with a Target Pool set sitting on a shelf somewhere by their, in their pool table room. Hmm. Target Pool was really actually good for your pool game. Uh, there was... Uh, certain it would set you know you'd set up different shots and they turned out to be key shots in typical game of pool and you would get a score for shooting the shot in and putting the cue ball on this belt target that you put on the table okay um, and uh, yeah I felt like that was it wasn't something that you were going to see on TV but it was a really good product for up and coming pool players so that was uh, hmm. that was something that I felt like was uh, it was interesting shot here is pretty key. Right. I don't feel like he can go too wrong here. He maybe could sneak by the nine and go in the side pocket, but I don't see that happening. Oh. Oh, oh my oh. God. And I, you know what? You've got to be I'm kidding the tournament me. Jinx. I, I'm the tournament jinx here. I can't believe that. Yeah, so, hey, I'm going to be honest with you. The odds of that happening were oh. very small. Yeah. But he had to shoot it similar. He got a little funny on it. Yeah, he had to shoot it similar. He made the ball. Uh, yeah. The difference between catching that point and not catching that point is very, very small. Or even hitting that point and running straight into the nine instead of the, yeah, the, exactly. the 12. Runs it in the nine, he's fine. He had enough room that he could have actually scratched on that side. It was possible, but it was very small. Very small target. That was surprising. Uh, it was a pretty open table. Yeah. Uh, who is that, Ryan Kingbird? You're 100% correct. I thought of it right away. I'm the commentator jinx. <laughs> Did it? Jesse can blame me. I put it on. Well, it looks like Mario's gonna get back. He's gonna have a chance. And you know, I always in these types of tournaments, I always say that if you're the seeded player and you get a chance you shouldn't have gotten, I believe you instantly become the favorite. That's uh, it's been my experience that that's what happens. I don't believe Jesse's gonna kick this ball in. It's possible, but I don't believe it. So you got some people that want you to. Uh, yeah, I've got some some bad influence friends. Yeah, they want you to get away from yeah. the stream. Yeah, I'm going to uh, probably take a little break in a little yeah, while. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, well, my mouth doesn't get tired. Honey. <laughs> so ball in hand for Mario. I, I I'm gonna call Mario the favorite from here, and oh. it's not because of skill level. It's because of momentum. Okay. We'll see what his break does. Yeah, he's got ball in hand. He's going to get out here. If he breaks and makes a ball, I like him to, I like him to win the match. That's just always been my experience. That's what happens when you make an unforced error that costs you such a significant game, is that that unforced error changes the whole match. You know? So I think, uh, I think Jesse's going to probably wish he wouldn't have done that. That's for sure. So I, I like Mario to win this match for 